Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Clear Pigeon. We are in the south of England, very, very deep south of England, in Dorset, beautiful rural Dorset here in the UK, and it's a beaut and bright, a full sunny morning here, and it's going to remain that all day long. We've got consistent weather conditions with highs of 14 degrees and bright and sunny temperature with a 0% chance of any rain. Storm Babbitt has swept across the British Isles and we can see Storm Babbitt well and truly on its way somewhere else. It's not going to be here at Clear Pigeon. We're here for the final round of the 2023 Junction 6 NKC Championship and oh my goodness, what a season it has been. It's not over yet though, we've got a full day of karting and some fantastic racing ahead of us. If you think the previous five rounds have been intense, well, the intensity is about to go on to the rev limiter going towards the finals this afternoon. With all of our championships to play for, there's only one of our championships, the Junior Rotax, which we'll talk about in a moment. That is kind of going to be tough for anyone to take from the chap who's at the front of the field. My name is Joe Bradley. I'm with you all day. And next to me, where's he gone? Oh, he's oh, down man. there. Oh, <laughs> he's down there. You're on a very small stool today. Ooh. Uh, Nick is Nick Damon. Nick, um, you, you know, you know what? We are so blessed with this weather, considering yeah. how bad it was yesterday. And it's and for me, I like it when it's consistent. No faffing around, changing tires. No faffing around, choosing what setup. It's going to be pure, pure racing today. Yeah, it's a, it's a lovely, lovely day. And given the fact that um, we, as you look at the breeze, you can see in the NKC flags. But yesterday, it was like driving through fog, driving through mist. And you kind of walked out there and you came out and you're like a damp sponge immediately. Began to brighten up in the afternoon, but most of the practice was down in the wet. And today, we've been, we've been greeted, Gret, greeted uh, by bright sunshine here in uh, no, halfway between Dorchester and Yeovil. And it's been a lovely, lovely day, and hopefully some lovely, lovely racing. Well, we've been racing here at Clear Pigeon since the 1950s. It was part of a, 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 a Second World War military hospital site, and the, the, the roadways and the concrete runways were, were used as a car track way back in the 1950s. It became uh, Clear Pigeon Car Club was formed in the early 70s, and we've been racing here, 815 metres. It's one of the shortest tracks, if not the shortest track that we race on, with lap times. Uh, in about 35, 36 seconds for the faster of the classes. And uh, we, we are here, like every other big national UK championship, all of them come here to Clear Pigeon. It's got a very, very rich history. Uh, the tracks, like I said, the track is a 35-second lap time, but it's got a, quite a mix and quite a challenge. And when you consider that yesterday was completely and utterly saturation and, and soaking wet, that practice session was only really to get the drivers honed in. There will be none of our setup work that we kind of have a job list to do and get the cart tuned in to the track conditions. It's completely different. So local knowledge is going to be that all very much more important. Here we go, the Nick. We're out on the track for the first of our heats and it's Junior Rotax. The championship is very much in the hands of Mason Perrin. And by our calculations, Mason, because of the dropped score rule, Mason... Really doesn't have to compete today. Really? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. He's he's pretty much clinched it because he's done so, such a good job in the previous five rounds. If this is his worst heat, uh, his worst day, then he's pretty much clinched the championship. And we worked it out. He doesn't really have to compete. Um, pole position: Freddie Theobald alongside Alex Timmons. Row two: Finley Underwood and Daniel Haynes. Joshua Della Carter and Lee Viola on row three. Callum Scrivens and Jasmine Taylor on row four. Presley Walker and Jay Levitt in the next, then Jaden Hewitt, Mason Perrin, Lucy Lovell, Taylor Dixon, Billy Vogt, George Kay, Daniel Davies, Alfie Bushel, Archie Butler and Joshua Withercombe. We're away for the day. And we are away for the day, the first. Are we getting, are we getting the wave round? We are. That's because I wasn't finished. The, it's 35 oh, seconds, Nick. It's right, going to be very yeah. tricky to get these large grids in. We've got uh, 28 carts on this grid, but we did have a few stragglers, so thankfully Ooh, we're sending them back round. The straggler almost went off. Row 10, Archie Butler, Joshua Withcombe, uh, Jimmy Salter and Alex Dole, Billy Edgecombe, Louis Reese are on row 12, row 13, Frank Ward and Vlad Tomanchuk, and then Alex Fraser and Freddie Whirlock round off the 28th card field. Mixed grids, so we get each of our competitors start one heat at the front, one heat in the middle and one heat at the back, so that gives us absolute fantastic racing and entertainment. It means that the faster drivers make their way through as best they can. And the slow drivers, well, the slower, less experienced drivers, hang on for all they're worth. <laughs> Here we come then, back towards the lights. We're about to go racing for this, the final round of the 2023 Junction 6 NKC Championship. And this time, this time we are away to Billy's Blind, into that very tricky right-hander. 
and it looks like the field have made it through. Three wide towards three mm. wide towards the S's already. Yeah, and away they've gone, and they're going to sprint back up this short straight, the Sturmy straight, into uh, Hans Hairpin? Is that right? Hans Hairpin, yeah. Mm. Didn't be writing that earlier. Um, <laughs> just so you know, there's this, the timing is not running because it's not running on Alpha either at the moment, so I might have to go and talk to the timing people about why that's not happening. Right, that's a, a little glitch. So that ignore the cool. timing. That's every, no one in the world knows who's leading what, so you're gonna have to, we're going to have to do identification of numbers and cards. It's that sort of way. Yeah, absolutely. Here so we it's go. The, uh, it's the number four, 64. 64 of the number 64 of Freddie Theobald started on the pole position. We'll get our timing screen. We've got no timing, as Nick says. We'll get that sorted out very, very soon. But right now, Freddie Theobald leading. And that looks like the number 10 of Levi Earl, who slotted in behind. Beautiful, beautiful shot there. Cart silhouetted against the morning sunshine. The 133 goes a little bit wide. That's Callum Scrivens just hanging onto it and keeping the cart on the track there. He's on the Lando Norris cart. White nose cone and a black fairing. That's because, to keep the weight down, some of these drivers having to take a bit of weight off for all, a whole one kilogram in the sticker kit liveries. And into the lead has gone Levi Earl. Into Billy's blind there. And Levi Earl takes the lead. Levi Earl and Callum... Sorry, Mason Perrin it was that uh, fought really hard at fullback. And it's Mason Perrin who has come through there to challenge and if not he's gone through and is in second place like i say we are still devoid of any kind of timing screens but it's the two protagonists who fought it absolute fist fight metaphorically at fullback and here we find levi earl and mason perrin pulling away from 30 freddie theobald through the s's and perrin right on the rear bumper of levi earl and down the inside into hans hairpin and mason perrin with a beautiful move there and now he goes on his way. This is our provisional champion for 2023, Mason Perrin, at the front of the field in the re on the red and white cart. And he really has been a force to reckon with. We've had challenges all season long, but Mason Perrin here at Clear Pigeon is going to be a very, very hard driver to beat. He doesn't have to compete in this, this round, but he's chosen to and to go out in style and showing why he's leading the championship and almost clinching the championship i mean it, you might be thinking well what, what how do you not know he's, he's won the championship well because of the dropped scores out of six rounds you're allowed to drop or you have to drop it's mandatory you drop a round so you invariably pick the worst round so if you've had a, a disc wall or a, a, a mechanical issue you're going to drop that round and really you can't really tell what the worst round is until you've completed all six rounds. So that's why we speculate. It's what we do. It's what we're going to be doing all day. And this is the easiest class to work out because Mason Perrin, with dropped scores, this could be his worst. This could be his worst round, for instance, and he would still be leading the championship. Freddie Theobald, the 64 there. The yellow and blue livery cart down the inside of... Him has gone the number 25. That's Jaden Hewitt making his way through the field, just coming underneath us. And I haven't even got any information as regards to how far through this heat we are. We are... Heat duration all day is eight minutes and one lap. So that's pretty much the generic length of heats that we see here in British karting. Eight minutes and one lap. We then move on later on to a 12-minute duration and one lap for our finals coming up later this afternoon. Right now, though, we're in the heat phase of this final round, the Junction 6 NKC for 2023, already coming to its conclusion. A little bit of a mixed emotion there. It's been a fabulous season. We've got to wait, get Christmas over, and then wait for the winter to blow by before we reconvene in 2024. We'll talk about the new calendar later on in the show. But right now, it's all about Mason Perrin, who is going to go out in this first heat. He's still leading, just coming across the start-finish line with quite a gap. I'm going to get the stopwatch on that. He's got about a three-second gap there to the second-place card of Levi Earl. 
And Mason Perrin already on his way to Hans Hairpin. Turning right. It's kind of got a bit of a downhill feel to it. And then you pop back up the slight incline towards the, the horseshoe. The double apex left-hander. And then from there through the right hundred buttons. And it's the final bend that you're watching him in now. That's called top bend. Very, very fast. Onto the curving start finish. And then into Billy's blind. Into the right hander. Out of there you very quickly. It's kind of keep one lock on the steering. Takes you into the S's. And then on that short burst to Hans Hairpin. Very, very quick lap here. At Clear Pigeon extremely quick lap so before you know it that was us talking Mason Perrin round on this first heat here he comes already around to complete another lap so Mason Perrin leads on the number 30 and then we've got the second place cart there in a right old ding dong of a battle that looks like I'm trying to get a handle on the that looks like Jasmine Taylor on the number 84. As we see the carts through and on towards the final stages of the lap into top bend now through the sweeping right-hander. Lead has already gone through. Is that right now? Mm -hmm. So we've got timing. I can tell you now it is Jasmine Taylor confirmed. It was the number 84 that I saw on the side of that card. And Jasmine Taylor finds herself in that second spot. Mason Perrin leads. Jaden Hewitt now down to third. What, I'm asking, has happened to Levi Earl, who's dropped to 25th. We've lost Levi Earl on lap three. That's where we lost Levi Earl. We've also lost Billy Vogt, Alfie Bushel and Lucy Lovell went out on lap two. So that tells me there was a bit of an incident there. But the top six, Mason Perrin, Jasmine Taylor, Jaden Hewitt, Finley Underwood, Joshua Withcomb and Freddie Whirlock. There's your top six. And with only 30 seconds or so remaining on the clock, there can be 35 seconds if Mason Perrin can get round. And it looks like he will. So there'll be another two laps after this one. Here he comes, 20 seconds on the clock, just coming through top end now. That's the battle we are looking at with Jaden Hewitt, Finley Underwood and Joshua Withcombe and Freddie Whirlock involved in that there. Four card battle for that fourth place downwards. Third, third, fourth, fifth and sixth actually. And it's still all to play for. Two laps remaining. Not quite on zero time. There it is. Zero time on the clock. So one lap after this one. Mason Perrin who is just coming through the hands hairpin and into the horseshoe now he will get the one lap to go board next time by now behind him for third fourth fifth and sixth we've got billy edgecombe coming through as well and slotting onto the back of that four car train giving us what is a five car train for that battle for third one lap to go board side by side through billy's blind and there's the move joshua withcombe i think's made that move stick on jasmine taylor and all sorts of movement there Ooh. as they come through. Slide, slid wide into the S's, left the door open. And, and I, think that was, uh, I think that was Freddie Whirlock, maybe, Move, or uh, even Jaden Hewitt. By the, sorry, the 20 carts gone for. That's Billy Edgecombe. Yeah. He's, he's took two places since we last spoke of him. The 25 of Jaden Hewitt is now behind him. The number 12 of Finley Underwood sits behind him. As Mason Perrin has already taken the checkered flag then. So Mason Perrin takes the win. Jasmine Taylor hangs on to second. And it was Joshua Withcombe finishing third. Freddie Orlock fourth. Billy Edgecombe fifth. Jane Hewitt sixth. And then we've got Finley Underwood finishing in seventh. Freddie Theobald eighth. Ninth is Vlad Tominchuk, which is a great, great result for Vlad. He started in 26th place. So he'll be happy with that. Archie Bull tenth. And then we've got Prezi Walker, Daniel Haynes, Josh Della Carter, Alex Timmins, Louis Reese. Who will be joining us in the booth to do some commentary with us, Nick? No, I'm Louis fired Reece. again. Am I? You're fired. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's going to he's going to uh, look at the mini max race with us. Cool. Uh, Alex Dull was 16th, Jay Levitt and 17th, Taylor Dixon, Frank Ward, Jamie Salter, Daniel Davies, Alex Fraser was 22nd. Callum Scrivens finishes uh, in 23rd, but uh, went out on lap 10 as did George K. Levi Earl we lost from second place on that third lap and then we had Billy Vogt, Alfie Bush and Lucy Lovell we lost on lap number two 
Yeah, apologies for the slight delay on the timing, but the, all this internet at uh, Clay Pigeon failed. Is that what it was? It's still yes. down. It's all down. Ah, so, right, okay. um, the timer is now hot spotting. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and we obviously have other methods to the broadcast, but yeah, we, we do take the timing directly from the. the the, um, from the overall timekeepers. The timekeepers, and yes. they can't get it up to the ether. Uh, we can't pull it back down again. Yes, always best to, to be honest. But I'm sure, but I, even though I left to sort it out, I'm sure you were magnificent. I, d- I have no idea what I was, <laughs> um, but it was very, very tricky there without timing and scoring. Okay, I was having to, I was having to look at uh, cart numbers as they came underneath us. It's the old-fashioned way. Well, they were do- they're doing about 65, 70 miles an hour underneath oh, us, and they're flashing by. You, it? It's always a problem with you. Yes. Yeah. It's getting warm so, in here, isn't it? It's getting. It's a beautiful day. I can't. I can't tell you how delighted I am that the weather has blown through. Storm Babbitt, or whatever they call it. Well, can remember, can remember when we just had October and November weather, and we didn't call it anything. Yeah, but that was boring. Now it's now it's got to be on the, on the internet. Yes, we've got a storm. Sensa- red warning. It. Yeah, we're all going to In die. fairness, this, that was fair because it, it caused a lot of problems. A lot of me. Oh, I've got an amber warning. What's going to happen? Well, a leaf might fall off a tree. Who we got now? Senior Rotax Heat One. Yeah, Senior Rotax out for the first time. This is the 162 category, the kilo, 162 kilograms uh, minimum uh, weight for driver and cart. So it's the lighter boys. James Becker starts on the pole with Ethan White alongside. Scott Russell and Ashton French are on the second row. Oli Varney and Ben Harper forget these away in 30 seconds of warm-up lap. We're never going to get through these large grids. No, they're, they're waving to slow down, but no one can slow down that much. It's impossible. They are having a, giving a go now. They're up round. Um uh, the top bend and the chances of them getting anywhere close to being aligned oh they're giving it a go they're giving it a go yeah they, they are no, no they're not formed they're not no. formed they're going to be sent not again. even close we can get away with another lap though with it's very short, short this track yeah. so row three olivani ben harbour alex wannabe and matt lewin on row four row five is jake davis and levi goodyear then we've got james burgess and bobby rosier paul Azan and ari barker on row seven dan andrews and ryan mills are on row eight then we've got Philip Howarth, the current 177 champion, alongside Louis Ball on row 9. Jensen Watts on row 10 with Liam Deedman. Alex Jackson, Matthew Lambert, row 11. Then we've got Reese Pope, Charlie Walsh from ST Racing. Uh, Aidan Pomeroy, Rob Statham, Jody Fox, Marcus King, Finley Watson, Adam Rogers, James Wood and Henry Stratton, Stratton are on the back row. Um, Paul Ozan, by the way, into his final race weekend of his driving career. And what a career that's been. We have a full 10-minute interview with him in the, in the paddock show, which comes up in the lunch break. It's well worth a listen to because Paul Ozan really is the master of karting. He's in the master's category in this subclass of 162 karting. We get them underway. We are Clean through up. Billy's oh, blind. Oh, and the man in seconds dropped down to third. And possibly even fourth to go. I say the 65 took the lead from, I think, Ashton French is second. James Becker's ended up third and may have now been squeezed down to fourth. It is the 62 cart that's in first. Ben Harper up to third. We had an incident across the line as well, Nick. Ooh. We had a cart sideways uh, before he even got to the start line. He got nibbled in his nose. <laughs> Ethan Wyatt leads the number 53 of Ashton French. They're both on the same livery of cart. I think they're on the KR Sport, if I, my in eyes fairness, don't deceive. In the same livery of cart. It's the same overalls and <laughs> a white is. helmet. So they're not really helping. Uh, 63, uh, 53 goes outside uh, around the bottom of the Billy's blind. No, it's still Ethan still White. It is through, yeah. the, through the switchback. It's not really a chicane. It's more of a switchback, isn't it? It's a, well, it's an S. It comes. You come it out comes of that bottom up bend. the inside. You come out of that bottom bend and then go into the distinctive right-left S's. They're now being joined by the 62 of Ben Harper. So a three-card battle for the lead. Through buttons. And then into the final turn of top bend. And if anything, the 53 of Ashton French having now gotten by Ethan Wyatt and pulls away a little. Yeah, made that gap, powering it on, and the bottom corner, and then into the S's in the second, and they'll come down to the hands hairpin overtaking procedure, but no one close enough to nip out the slipstream and dive up the inside of the right-hand side there. So these three pacing out pretty equidistantly, but yeah, certainly a little bit of advantage to Ashton French here. I think he's gained himself a cart length over the course of this lap, around the top bend. Yeah, we've lost Philip Howarth and James Burgess on lap one. They haven't come through to complete two laps yet. So that's going to be a bit of a, a stinker for Howarth, who was wanting to improve his championship position for sure. He's currently it, a little bit out of contention for the championship, but he's having came from the 177 class, won the championship last year. He's been very competitive in 162s, understandably. Why, why is there a yellow flag at the hairpin? 
Uh, we've got a car oh, being just recovered there, just, just behind being, it, just yeah. the Marshall's post. Yeah, so, yeah. So, so, so the best overtaking point, which is Hans Herpin, currently is out of action. It's a yellow flag in. That's Philip Howard. That's uh, where Philip Howard is. The green is. flag yeah. isn't out. Yeah, the green the green flag is out. The is that yeah, is out isn't out yeah. as they're going in there? So isn't out until the out the exit of that yes. hairpin. Yeah. So no overtaking into the Hans hairpin. We are five and a half minutes to go, so plenty of time. And if anything, Nick, like you said, they're beginning to space out at the front, aren't they? Yeah. Philip Howard finally gives up the ghost of trying to get that cart recovered or back in the race, I should say. He's given up. He's now in the safe confines of the marshal's post we can take we that yellow flag in I think. Yeah, I think they're waiting for the rest of the field to go through before they withdraw the yellow field yellow field yellow flag yellow they flag. have yellow flag the right. whole, whole track is green again battle now for third and that's the big one on the track it's third and fourth and in fact going through was the 93 of jensen watts just over the line watts now not done all the rounds but every round he's done he's done really well into third place 93 with the uh, red and white helmet coming into the hands hairpin and now he has to try and chase down Ethan White. So let's see what uh, what I was about to say button can do. What Watts can do round buttons rather than what button can do round Watts. It's a bit uh, complex that when you talk when you say Jensen Watts through buttons. Mm. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure. We we actually get a great interview with Jensen Watts. He's been here at the, with the NKC twice. This is only his third round, and each time he's gone on and he's won the final. So he's won two rounds. Next year, his plans for 2024 is to do the complete season. And you've got to say that that number 93 of Jensen Watts is going to be a massive contender for overall honours. Yeah. If the pace that he's showing in the in the times that he's uh, shown up in 2023, he's been very, very quick indeed. Got massive, massive pace. And here we are, closing rapidly on Ethan Wyatt, who's yeah. proved to be no slouch. Our current... Ethan White, of course, our current junior Rotax champion, moved up into seniors for the 2023 season. Uh, he would have been carrying the number one if he'd been young enough to stay in juniors, but alas, no. <laughs> right on the tail. So, Jensen. Let me have a good look at Ethan now, going around the outside of the horseshoe, but there's no real way of getting around there without a bit of help. So, as Jensen goes through buttons... It's kind of defensive from Ethan Wyatt there, wasn't it? It was a little bit sort of inside line. Here they come then. This is the drag. Gets into the slipstream. Jensen Watts will look towards pulling out, but it's tricky because you go through a sweeping left hand and then down the inside into Billy's blind. And that was a bit of a textbook move there from Jensen Watts here. Got the slipstream out of the final turn and then as they come through the left hander, it kind of puts you in position to slingshot down the inside. And Ethan Wyatt is sensible enough not to try and make that as hard or even harder. Jensen Watts had the pace to catch him, and now Jensen Watts pulls away slightly. So Watts, I think the chances of 2 minutes 44 catching up to Ashton French, low I would say, because um, French is a little bit quicker than, than, uh, than Wyatt was, and Watts has got to gain about half a second a lap. He started 19th though, Nick. He started 19th. Chances he's are quite yeah, high, actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's made his way through the traffic. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's a... He, Every, he, is this his third round he's done? It's only, he's yeah, been he's an absolute three, star three in all of them. Um, I assume he'll be chuffed as a Southern Cup and a Northern Cup next year because he could do the Southern Cup. <laughs> he's obviously, it was Mansell he first turned up and started That's right, laying yeah. down some, some real speed. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just checking now what... Uh, so he doesn't feature at all in the championship because he's only done three rounds. But um, let me find him. There he is. He came out at round three and round four which was, of course, uh, Mansell Raceway and then Wilton Mill. And he took, he took two, he came third, first and first in the three heats. And he took the, took the win at his, I think it's his home track, Mansell Raceway. And then he had a first and a second at Wilton Mill and he took the final. So, you know, massive pace from the 93. He's got to be... Just um, needs to get a van that goes more, more miles and gets up to north. He, he gives... I mean, he's, he's, run, he's run by his father, um, Carl, who we, like I say, check out the, uh, the paddock show. What's happened? Uh, da Daniel Hammett's watching at home. He was concerned he'd missed some. So oh, he, right. he, he messaged us at Carting, <laughs> Carting Live TV. He was worried he'd missed some of it. You haven't missed anything of it, Daniel. We had a bit of a late start. Uh, because it was a, it was basically a late start with I everything. I think that's the uh, earliest that they're allowed the, to yeah, open the track. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, noise issues and stuff. Oh, so I, I got very confused because someone else in the same sticker kit as the guys at the front has just pulled off. I think it was the eighty-five. I think it was Rob Statham. No, I thought I couldn't work out what was going on. There was an extra car that wasn't supposed to be there. 
as Watts goes around the bottom of the circuit again through the S's we're inside the final minute which means absolutely nothing here at Clear Pigeon with a 36 second lap it could be three more laps with inside the final minute Ashton French continues to lead the gap to the second place cart of Jensen Watts is now under two seconds and Jensen Watts not quite as quick as Ashton French so they're lapping in roughly the same sort of lap time so whether there's an element of tyre management coming in remember some of these drivers into their sixth and final round on only two sets of tyres we've had very little wet running on race days so those tyres will be getting towards the end of their life cycles so French leads Watts second Ethan Wyatt still in third Ben Harper fourth Bobby Rosier fifth and it's James Becker Oli Varney Paul Ozan first in the Masters eighth overall Matthew Lambert and Jake Davis is the driver that rounds off that top ten two more laps to go and as we have got the leader Ashton French just crossing the line into the final lap now that's Jensen Watts he's come into this round having competed in only two this year winning both he's got to come in as a favorite and after coming from 19th start the start position and he is the quickest man on the track there the cart ahead of him though is Ashton French who is just ahead of him certainly coming into view the pink and purple cart just going underneath us there we'll take the check and flag we we'll take the first heat for the senior road tax 162 category i missed the oh there's the flag <laughs> i see it's weird because i'm standing about two yards back to your left but you can see the flag and i, I can't can see, yes I can't yeah, see yeah, the flag yeah, that yeah. yeah. It, 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 the 35 second lap nick i've got to say it is is sort of catching us out we're having to calibrate our minds to a 36 second lap uh, let's have a rundown then of the at least the top 10 if we can squeeze it in ashton french takes the win jensen watts uh finishes second then we've got ethan wyatt Ben Harper, Bobby Rosier, Ollie Varney, 7th is Paul Ozan, Matthew Lambert, 8th, ninth is James Becker, Jake Davis rounds off the top 10. Then in 11th, Alex Warnaby, Lewis Ball, Matt Lewin, Harry Barker, Marcus King. Marcus King, that's, a, that's not a bad uh, effort comp uh, at all. 28th uh, start on the grid, up to 15th. The LRG driver will be happy with that. Scott Russell in 16th. Then we've got Adam Rogers, currently the championship leader, Adam Rogers. Uh, yes, yeah, so a fantastic day here at the moment. It's all looking lovely. Um, sun is out. A bit behind a cloud just a second ago. And um, just looking at the, uh, the breeze, it's dropped right down as well. Thanks indeed to uh, Joe. That was a lovely readout of the results. Yeah, um, I was just mentioning Adam Rogers there who finished. Um, where has he gone? There he's gone. 17th. So Adam Rogers is currently our uh, 162 championship leader. Um, still all, all to play for, certainly in that class. Uh, sorry, the Adam Rogers is our championship, Masters championship leader. Uh, he's got a 41-point lead on Paul Ozan in the Masters subclass of the 162 class. The 162 class is being led by 14 points by Oli Varney from Kyle Dunford in second uh, with only two points deficit to both Finlay Watson and Bobby Rosier are both on 860 and we've got Charlie Walsh down from the northeast with ST Racing he's on 152 points uh, only eight points and then Adam Rogers sixth overall and currently uh, leading the Masters he's 21 points behind Charlie Walsh but still a lot of points up for grabs and still anything to play for now you consider the 162 class last year Nick we went into this round and we were talking about the three drivers in the top three places in contention and it was won by um, Simon Peebles, who, who absolutely just came from nowhere. What's next? Uh, Rotax 177. We, we have someone here for, is it Minimax Louis supposed to be doing? Is that Louis? Yeah. Is he, is he early? Yeah, he is, but come on in. Come on in, Come Louis. in and stand behind us. It's fine. No worries. So Louis, who is uh, probably uh, taller than me almost. All right, mate. How are you doing? We've yes, met before, haven't we? Yeah. Um, Louis Louis's going to help us with the Minimax race. All right, okay, well, we've got a bit of your time. Um, you've had your first heat, haven't you? Yes. Yes, how did it go? Uh, it went all right, it got a drop down. <laughs> did you really? Yes. Sometimes it's impossible not to, though, isn't it, when it you're was, in, the, in the pack? Yeah, it wasn't impossible not to, but it's racing, it happens. Yeah. So still going It wasn't a deliberate punt by you, was it? No, no. <laughs> of course no. not. <laughs> I'd never do that. <laughs> no, of course not. 
Well, what do we mean by drop down? What, Louis, what Louis just said is a nose cone. The, the, the front of the cart, the nose cones that you see, you've got to consider, Louis, that there are people at home <laughs> who may not know what we're talking about. Yeah. We take it for granted. I knew exactly what you mean, but people at home. So sometimes we have to educate. Yeah, mm-hmm. get that? So a drop down is when your nose cone hits the cart in front. The mechanism that holds the, the nose cone on, it drops off. And it, it, you then get an automatic five-second penalty. And it's not, it's not negotiable, is it? No. You can't appeal. It is straightforward. And the reason for that is back in my day when I was racing, it was part of the, the, the game was to punt the cart in front of you off. And if you were it in front, you got ready to be punted off. Um, and it's to negate that. And I think it works perfectly. And some you win, some you lose. Yeah, exactly. That one you'd lost five seconds. Yeah. So early days. Uh, we're waiting. So you're going to join us for the mini match race, correct? Um, and you're going to call the race with me. Yeah, that's going to be great. Uh, have you done any commentary before? No. It's just like uh, just like this, mate. Having a conversation. Yeah. You know when you sat with your dad watching the racing on the telly. Yeah. And you're kind of just having a conversation, and it's a bit like that. Yeah. But you have to educate the public and tell them what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> so are you all for that? Yeah. Great stuff. Give Nicky's headset back and and hang about and you can see you know I'm, I'm sure you watch. Do you watch the live stream? You give us a thumbs up because you lost your headset. Do you watch the live stream <laughs> of your races when you go home? You do, of course you do. Everybody does. It's just delay then. Oh, they're off now. Right here they go then. One seven sevens out. We've got a thirty four cart fail for their first heat. Again, really really successful class here in the NKC. It's effectively for me the one seven seven class. This is the British Championship for me there is no 177 british championship last weekend they were at uh, pf for the final round of the rotax british championships and they had an all plate uh, on a different tire but for me this is the six round british championship because we have the most 177 drivers than any other series and it's zach bolton lrg motorsports zach bolton the zach bolton fan club are invariably with us they always are give us a nod if you are because zach's on pole position and i was talking to him yesterday over a cup of tea and uh, his objective here is to hang on to that lead as much as he can, as long as he can. He's got Reece Llewellyn alongside. Behind him is Adrian Smith and James Frost. And then Ben Hitch, Tom Storr on row three. Row four is Michael Mallett and Ryan Taylor Truman. Then Alex Jones, Tyler Fossey. Scott Clay and Simon Wheeler. We've got a well-formed grid. Well done, Sorry, Zach. You've got the first the... lap. Yes, it is. Wow. I, yes, I, I look is. down to fiddle with stuff, as you know, as I always do with the various <laughs> bits that's going on. Oh, oh, oh hang on. That is, that is gridding up. Yeah, now look how Zach's controlling the pace there. He's got them absolutely at walking pace. You see their hands down by the side, some of the drivers. They're nipping the fuel pipe so that the engine doesn't bog down. And here we go. Con- completely well controlled. Whoa. And Zach Bolton blasts off into the lead. And he's got a relatively comfortable lead. While Ooh, that's all horribly wrong there, isn't it? Yeah, all <laughs> hell breaks. Everybody was second, I think, there for a moment. <laughs> Recently, when actually was up off the track, he, he took too much of the inside curve going around that little left kink after the start finish, and he uh, got a nasty bump and then lost all his momentum. I think that's what caused the kind of the kerfuffle behind Zach as Zach streaks away in the lead. But in second place, we have the Ryan Taylor Truman, 65, Ryan 65 yeah. cards. That's a good, that's eight, from yeah. eighth. Yeah. So up he's made the most eight. of everyone having a bit of a conversation in the first corner, but not deciding who was going to uh, lead that chat. But Bolton is leading a lap with the. Uh, the LRG car, and I'm sure the crowd is going wild, though, of course, unfortunately, you're leading a lap by that much distance, you're not on camera. <laughs> well, 1.2 seconds is the gap, and that's uh, a, a, considering a 35-second lap gap, 39-second lap for Zach Bolton, and pulled out a 1.2-second lead over everybody, and this, this was his objective out there on the, at the front. Behind him, though, Ryan Taylor Truman oh. has Ben Hitch down the inside, carrying the number three, third in the championship last year. Ben Hitch, not really featuring in this year's championship table, oh, he's got but he was he, third last year. These did not. He's had not three nudges going around the lot, those the top bend. Um, so basically, yeah, I let you through. But now what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to nibble the back side of your cart as much as I can without getting a drop down. Um, and I'd, so be, I'd be tempting to brake test people sometimes to give them a drop down. Well, that's a bit naughty. That's a bit naughty. I didn't and, say uh, it wasn't naughty. I said he tended to do it. Yes, yeah, but then then you would lose momentum, and that and that's why Ben. Ben Hitch has got Ryan Taylor Truman knocking on his door, knocking on his rear bumper, because Ben Hitch doesn't want to back off. Mm. He's caught them. He, if he backs off, he loses momentum. And right there, you see kind of a, a, a gap is produced. He's got momentum out of the final turn, though. And they're gaining on Zach as well. Yeah, they so are. Zach's basic race pace a little bit below these two. And they're coming right for him. And positions change again. Taylor Truman goes back up to second, Hitch to third. 
that was kind of textbook. Now, whether these two are working together or whether they're tripping each other up, it's, the gap was down to four tenths. It was 1.2. And now, if anything, they're right on the tail of Zach Bolton. The move is going to come. And you know what? Zach is fully aware. He said yesterday, I'm just going to hang on to the lead as long as I can. Well, I think he's made a nice break. He could well finish top three despite everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've broke away, haven't they, these top three? So Bolton now, he looks quite vulnerable for a move into, out of Billy's blind into the corners. And I think we're going to see a hop out now. Oh, no, he hugged the inside line there. Yeah, very clever driving there from Zach Bolton. He's making it very, very difficult for the carts behind to find a gap. They're going to need a tail. Very, very defensive. He's Def gone top four now. And what he's actually doing, actually, I think for his championship points, this is actually not a great idea because he's letting everyone else come towards him. And then, oh, and the lead's gone. And maybe or has it? No. <laughs> he's fighting One, for two, that. One, two, three there. He's fighting for every inch. And Zach Bolton... Yeah, we'll have another look at that, Nick. Comes down the inside and then steers around the outside. They're already through and into their next lap. And still they're bottling up. He's the cork in the bottle, is Zach Bolton on the LRG Motorsport cart. Into the Ooh. hands hairpin. Not sure if he got help with that little sideways nudge there. They're going to head towards the horseshoe. Leaves a bit of a gap there. I notice it's a very tight line into that right uh, left-hander, double eight backs. Now through buttons, very fast right-hander, eating into top bend. Oh, he's made a mistake. He's gone oh, too wide, lost momentum. Wide. And I think he may drop his third at best, may go to fourth. Just went wide, just over that rumble strip, lost the momentum. And when you've got three carts right behind you, um, you're going to end up not anymore. So look at this. It's, everything's great. Oh, everything's great. Sideways. Everything's great. Yeah. It's not great. It's the rear end. The rear end just gave up on his cart there. He tried, you know, you, you've got to keep momentum through there. Can carry it all the way across the start finish. And the rear end grip just gave up on him. And he, he went into a bit of an oversteer. Now we've got a three car battle. Zach Bolton settles into fourth. He's got. Reese Llewellyn behind him, but he's got a gap. Right now, though, it's all about first, second, and third. Ryan Taylor Truman, James Frost, and Ben Hitch. That's who the top three are. Around the bottom bend. Zach being slightly left to go through the S's. Up into the hands, hairpin. Glance over the shoulder by Taylor Truman. But none of them are going defensive. They all stayed on the racing line there. You know what, Nick? I would like to call it three minutes remaining on the clock of this eight minute and one lap heat. Yeah. And I would like to call it, is James Frost just playing a waiting game? Or is Ryan Trailer Truman, has he really got that? We know he's got pace. Don't, what am I talking about? I'm not saying that. What I mean is, mm. is James Frost in a position to challenge? Well, Hitch was very quick to begin with. He just, he just seems to look lost a tiny bit of pace here. So my guess is that's tyre pressure. And he's it's just, you know, and I think um, you can see it here. I think he obviously had a pressure that came up quicker, got that second position and lost it again. The kerfuffle around uh, getting past Zach. Uh, put them all together but I would say that Taylor Truman is as comfortable as you can be when you've got a lead about three tenths of a second <laughs> <laughs> yes hardly anything in it here they come then. let's see what the gap is it looks a couple of tenths to me and then back to third Ben Hitch maybe three or four tenths there they go across the line and Taylor Truman two point two eight three and point six eight three between Taylor Truman Frost and Ben Hitch Zach Bolton still in fourth Harrison Crook now fifth Reese Llewellyn down to sixth Scott Clee up to 7th, Stuart Baker 8th, ninth is Michael Mallett and rounding off the top 10, Alex Jones. Very high quality racing here. More than four. That is an interesting line, isn't it, into that entry into the horseshoe. I think that the faster line it's is tighter, wider. isn't it? Yeah. The faster line is a bit yeah. wider, but then you feel very vulnerable to someone coming at the inside. I think it's the wider line because it's a double apex left-hander and you need to clip the, the second apex. I've got a proper driver in with me next. I'm going to ask him that question about that part of the track. Not saying that you're not a proper driver, Nick. I you, am, you know, but just not of these. Yeah. So, getting towards the 90 second to go mark, still plenty of time here at Clear Pigeon with a lap just over 30 seconds. 35.6 was the last time through. 35.627 is the fastest lap of this heat, and that is Stuart Baker down in eighth. First of the Masters is James Frost. He's running in second place. That's the first of the Masters there on the red, the KF Sport cart entry. And where is he in the championship battle, James Frost? He's not really showing in the championship battle. First and second. Up the hands, hairpin again. 
And let's look as they look to end. Oh, and I'm not sure that Taylor Truman got the best exit from it that time. Certainly looking slightly more in control. It was Frost there, and he has closed it down. He's now right on his tail. Ben Hitch has been suspected his early pace has disappeared. So, and we've got a breakdown of the 69 car. That's just ground. Oh, Zach Bolton. Zach Bolton's ground to a halt. Oh, no. Right in the middle of the track. Bolton has ground to a halt. He's pulled the cart off. I don't know what it was. I know that Phil Howarth had a fuel pump failure early. Yeah. Um, oh, no. Poor old Zach. Finally went up and running in the fast, and the cart lets him down. That's going to cost him with regards to Back points to the leaders, towards, please. Yeah, I mean, that, that's going to cost him towards... He, he's going to be lucky to get into the year final now with a retirement. He's, we're probably going to see Zach in the B final. Um, he's just got to kind of... Uh, he's got to kind of put that away and focus on just enjoying his day's racing now with uh, you know with face of adversity there's the leaders Ryan Taylor Truman and James Frost just coming through the S's and now silhouetted against that bright morning sunshine James Frost showing his nose a little bit into the hand hairpin out of there late apex in the first apex of the horseshoe and then clip the second apex to keep it tight to the left for the fast right under red buttons and then into top bend very fast exit of that using all the curb and more it's one lap to go board showed now to our leader ryan taylor truman and he really has showed wicked pace he got into the lead eventually and he's com it's been a, quite a commanding yeah he's lead, he's, hasn't he's, it? He, had a, so he had a bit of a glitch about two laps ago and just lost it, went back down to about a tenth, and then he's now eased back out at three, four tenths before. So Taylor Truman, certainly once he's got into the lead, I said has looked comfortable with someone not very far ahead. Frost now on this last lap, probably just going to settle to what he's got. And there they go. Checkered flag then. Checkered flag for the first of the heats for the 177 Rotax. That's the one... 77 kilograms 177 kilograms minimum weight for driver and cart a little bit heavier than the road axe class we saw before ryan taylor truman takes the win james frost second ben hitch is third that's your first and second in masters as well james frost and ben hitch harrison crook fourth Stuart baker fifth scott clay sixth ian branfield seventh it was dan milner reese the well in ninth harry wainwright was 10th tim darlow 11th and then we had steve gilly alex jones scott smith keith mason Oliver Smith, Joshua Pickford, Charlie Dowers, Lawrence Hilton, Michael Mallett. 21st was Logan Edwards, then Tyler Kelsey, Alex Thomas, Neil Hemming. And I've got a sneeze. Achoo. Achoo. <laughs> That's very good. Well done. Yeah. Hang on. Is Hang it, on. You got another one. I've got to sneeze again. Oh, see. This is, this is, this is, this is all about what live TV is all about. Tell, man tell sneezing. Live, can you? Man sneezing on television. It's marvellous. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry you got the nose blowing as well. You don't really want that. You're thanks, back. Let thanks, me give it, let me pass over to our guest commentator. So, so yeah, thanks, thanks, Nick. Do that. Yeah, we uh, we lost Zach Bolton, didn't we? Not sure what happened there. We lost Oliver Moss as well and Tyler Fossey. <laughs> right. Let's welcome back Louis Rees. Louis already had his first of his heats. He's in the junior road class, cart forty-seven. Yeah. Am I right, Louis? Yeah. Any reason, 47? Any particular reason? Um, not really, no. No, no, no. no <laughs> that's no. what you were given. Right, we've got Minimax out next. Um, it's, quite a, it's quite a thing, this, because Minimax only really is surviving in the NKC. And at the end of this season, this is the final ever race weekend for Minimax as a class, isn't it? I don't know, is it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. we're oh, moving through the Inter intermediate class you know the, the road axe inter yeah i know that yeah. that's, that's new i didn't know they were leaving yeah 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 because they're, they're not a well they're not an msuk class anymore no um so there's your grid louis i'll let you read the grid down start from pole position yeah so pole position number 27 of sunny morgan p2 number 119 of leo basterfield third place number 45 of eddie stewart fourth place number 52 of sebastian corking fifth place number 33 of savary viserec and sixth place, number 15 of Max Carlton. And finally, in seventh place, the number 158 of Jensen Cox. Well done, Louis. Yeah, it's a, it may be the smallest of our grids, and it has been throughout the season. But the, the racing's been very intense. The championship's being led by Seb Corting. 
He's got an eleven point lead over Sonny Morgan, who's got twenty four points over Zauri Visarek, and then Eddie Stewart a further thirteen points back, and then a further eight points back, Leo Bastford. Still all to play for, and I think it's gonna come down to Sonny Morgan and Eddie Stewart. Yeah. And we're away. Morgan versus Basterfield into turn one. Sonny Morgan there on the black nose with the white fairing. He's took his sticker kit off because yeah. of weight. He's going to save a kilogram because he's growing up. He's growing. You've got the same problem, haven't you? As you grow yeah. up, you get heavier. And I believe Eddie Stewart in second, if I'm right. Let's have a look. I think I am. Yes, you're right. You're spot on. There he is. Eddie Stewart's in the blue and yellow cart. And then behind Eddie Stewart is it, the number 10, Leo Basterfield. Yeah. New chassis, of course, for today. After his got cracked yesterday. Who's that, Basterfield? Yeah. Oh, right, okay. So he's on a Tony cart today. So he's on a, he's on a cart that he's completely unfamiliar with? Does that make, is that yeah. going to make a difference for him? It can do. Hopefully he's settled in quite quickly as he goes to a move on Stewart. And Stewart gets pushed wide. And the 33 of Vigeret goes through there as well. So Stewart goes from second to fourth in the space of one corner. Great move there, wasn't it? Uh, it, it I, th I think Eddie Stewart did was pretty heads up driving there. He saw him come down the inside and got out of his way, or else that could have been a bit naughty. It could have had a bit of contact there. Right then, we've got we've got a race now, Louis. We've got yeah. Sonny Morgan leading. He needs to get as m the m he needs to maximise his points all, doesn't he? He really does. He's behind Sebastian Corking, and right now he, he's, he's, he's ahead of Sebastian Corking, and this is good for his championship. Yeah. But look at that. Look at Leo Basterfield. He looks really very pushing. Yeah. Clear. I don't think Sun knows he's behind him. He may do in a minute if Leo goes for a move. Is that a defensive line there, middle of the track, into that hand hairpin? Yes, it can be. It can be. Maybe he is wary of him behind. Yeah. Leo really trying to get away through here for the lead. Onto the straight now they come. And this is and his chance. Basterfield isn't it? pulls out. Yeah, didn't quite have the momentum to pull alongside. Can he have a go down into the braking area? No, the answer no. is no. They've, and they've both got to be careful here because Vitatrek is closing in as well as Stewart and Corking. Yeah, in fact, we've got. Is that pretty much the whole field? I think it in is. In one train of cars. We've got Jensen Cox at the back who's yeah. just sort of keeping a watching brief. I think Jensen is. Uh, quite a quite a beginner, I think. Yes. So he's uh, he's dropped off, but we've got the six cart field now, six cart train, pretty much from first to sixth. Here he comes again. Round two. Oh, Morgan makes a mistake. Again, though. Does he hold it in? No. He's got some good. Oh, he does. Oh, yes. He does. Good move. Yes. The inside. That was all about momentum, Louis, wasn't it? Coming out of the final turn, yeah. he had the momentum all the way to that uh, Billy's blind bend. Let's have a look at the replay again. There he is, pulls alongside. Morgan had slid wide, but it just hangs on there. It's a very tricky corner, that. looks easier than it is, isn't it? Yes, it, yeah, it very much looks easier. It's a great send from Basterfield in the end of it. I don't think Morgan was expecting it. No, he didn't. He did not at all. I think Morgan's got some good power. Here they come again. Already another lap completed. And that's Basterfield now, who's got... He's pulled two tenths. Yeah, can he extend his gap over the next few corners? I suppose the, the, the other driver to keep an eye on is currently the driver in fifth place, Sebastian Corking, who's currently, he came into this round leading the championship. He's been held up a little bit, I think, by Eddie Stewart and Viserek. He's been held up. He's not been held up. Those drivers are, are quick enough to stay ahead of Corking, yep. is perhaps what I mean. And as Basterfield just comes through the final turn, let's drop back, Paul, to the carts behind... We'll keep a wary eye on Sonny Morgan coming back at the leader. But that battle there of uh, Zauri Vesarek and Eddie Stewart and Seb Corking with Max Carton not that far behind them, that's where it could all go wrong, isn't it? It really could. If these three collide here, Carlton can pick up some good positions. That's what he's going to be wanting. That's not what Seb Corking be wanting, though, is nope. it? That's the last thing he'll want yeah. right now. There's Stewart on the inside. Can he seal the move off? I don't know. Oh, he's on the grass. He's on the grass there. It got a very, very tight coming out of the coming out of the horseshoe. And I'm not sure whether Viserek knew he was there. He squeezed him tight to the left. I'm not sure Ooh. what the stewards will make of that. Do you? I would say racing incident. I think there was a cart's width there. I think yeah. Stewart just pushed it to the limit. It's corking up the inside of Viserek. He's gone from, what, fifth to third in the space of... 
half a lap. You know when you're involved in... You, so Viserek there has that coming together with Eddie Stewart. And poor Eddie Stewart got pushed onto the grass. But we talk about losing momentum. And that... It was way around the lap that that loss of momentum came to pay, came to pay off for Seb Corby. Yeah. Do, you, do you kind of get out of a rhythm when that happens? Yes, you can do sometimes. You can do. Your head's still thinking, oh, oh, that's, a, that's close. I've just made contact with him. And Corking's like, oh, I'll take that. Thank you very much. Yes. Up into third place. And this... And Corking can, with two minutes, 40 left on the clock, can he go, go after Basterfield and Morgan? Yeah, he's been stifled a bit, hasn't he? You know what? I can't blame Seb Corking for making uh, rash moves to try and get through the traffic. He's yeah. going to have to be very, very careful today, isn't he? Yeah, he needs to. He, he needs to get past this traffic, which he knows he's been quicker than all season, to try and get up to Morgan and let him score as minimum points, as minimum beating to him as possible. He'll be beating himself up about the poor start, dropping yeah. himself back to fifth and sixth place, which has all happened in the first turn, didn't it? Yeah, it did. So now we'll see if he can break away from the number 33 of Zauri Viserek and the 15 of Max Carlton. Well, it looks like Carlton's coming at him here, yeah. Viserek. Maybe he'll be focusing more on defensive, maybe even, and Cork will allow Corkin just to pull away. Yes, it is. That always happens, though, when two carts start squabbling. Yeah. Cool. The cart in front kind of pulls away. Because you do end up being slowed slightly, don't you? Uh, meanwhile, at the front, just to bring everybody up to date, we've still got Leo Bastafield leading. He's now got four-tenths of a lead, four-tenths lead on Sonny Morgan. But Sonny Morgan's not that far away. And Leo Bastafield will not be able to make a mistake. He's still, you know, four-tenths is absolutely nothing. And if anything... It looks still still look racy at the front, but uh, meanwhile, we are focusing on this battle for fourth and fifth. Well, you know what? Considering Stuart went on the grass and lost all his momentum, he's come back here almost into this fight again. Well, I've I've named Eddie Stewart, and Eddie Stewart will be joining us later to uh, after his final heat. He's going to come in and do a junior road axe round with us. Might even be one of your heats. Yeah. So Eddie's going to be the commentator with us for that. I've called Eddie Stewart the comeback kid. He's had yeah. lots of incident this year where he's dropped back and then come through. Um, he really is uh, uh, the sort of driver who can, sort of lad who can get his head right, put it all away and just focus. And that's what you've got to do, hasn't yeah, it, as exactly. a driver? As soon as a mistake happens for you, you just want to think, right, let's get my head down now and just push flat out to the end and see what I can do. And stop thinking about wh whether it was a mistake yeah. or an incident. That's an ultimate lap now for these two. Basterfield versus Morgan. I think Morgan's closed in a little bit here, isn't he, on Basterfield? It was four tenths, isn't it? It's now three. Yes, yeah, ever so slightly. The race to the flag with Leo Basterfield, the number 10, and Sonny Morgan, the 27. It's Basterfield looking behind there. What I think that is, is that's all he's got to give in his car. He cannot push anymore. That's flat out 100% what he's got. So Does that give you a sense of vulnerability when you yes. you know you're flat out? Yeah. And you're worried about how much pace the oh, car behind? Basterfield. Run wide in the top end. That's the last lap board then. Yep. Morgan's so quick on the straight. He's got a lot of top end, has he? Yeah, he has. He really has. He can, he's got that gearing right, hasn't he? He's got a good engine. I'm not sure whose engines he uses. So we're into the final few corners, Louis. Yeah. I think Sonny uses rain in race engines. I think. Does he? Yeah, I think yeah. he uses rain. Well, it's working well for him. I think Basterfield may just have this. As long as he doesn't make a mistake now in top bend, I think he's got it. Here we come. Let's call them. A, you go ahead, Louis. Call them across the line. And Leo Basterfield wins heat one. Sonny Morgan second. It's then going to be Sebastian Corking third. Savary Visacek in fourth. Eddie Stewart fifth. Max Carlton in sixth. And Jensen Cox rounding the final turn now will come home in seventh place. Great stuff. I detect you're from Wales. Yes. What part of Wales are you from? Uh, Cardiff. You're from Cardiff. Sonny Morgan's a Welsh lad as well, isn't he? Where's yeah. he from? Do you know where he's from? Uh, I don't actually know. I think him and Leo live quite close. Oh, do they? Yeah. Right, all South Wales, eh? Yeah, all South Wales. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my commiserations on the Rugby World Cup then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know how important it is to you Welsh lads. Yeah. Um, Louis, that was brilliant, mate. You are, If you ever give up driving, then uh, give Nick a ring, because uh, we can always do with a second commentator. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did you enjoy that? Yeah, I did. It was quite fun, actually. Yeah, yeah. Good race between Basterfield and Morgan. Yes, yes. It was. 
Yeah, you'll have to come back for a for a for a senior road axe or something next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, where you've got 30, 38 carts or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but uh, that was a good race. Yeah, yeah. And thanks for the insight as well. It's always it's always very interesting, I think, for the listeners and viewers at home when you've got somebody who's who's driving and racing and the sort of insight that you were able to give to what was happening there. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Well done. Great job. Thanks, thanks. mate. Enjoy and uh, race well. Thanks. And uh, have yeah. a great day. That's thanks. what it's all about. Thanks, Louis Reese. There. Cart 47 in our junior road class. class. Uh, Nick, if I was you, man, I'd be very worried. You know, you he didn't know, talk over me at all. He, well, no, he didn't say I talk enough. I <laughs> he, waited for the, he waited I for was the natural pause, didn't he, Paul? I was trying to balance his sound. <laughs> I've misplaced the car keys. Have you got them? Yes, they're there. Where oh, you fine. Them? Thank you. But you put a piece of paper over them. I did, but I know where they are. But that doesn't count. Junior road axe heat number two. Excellent. Which, hasn't, which has not got Louis Reese in it. Thank goodness, because otherwise he'd be late. Yeah. <laughs> Mitchell Mulvey is on the pole position with Curtis Latimer alongside. We've got Archie Butler and Billy Edge come on rule two. Lewin Hughes and Billy Vuk are on rule three. Jimmy Salter and Mason Perrin, uh, provisional champion uh, for 2023. Uh, rule five, Joshua Withcomb and Presley Walker. Then we've got Jack Dimbleby, Alex Dole, Alex Timmons, Archie Hardiman, Freddie Warlock, Daniel Haynes, Alex Fraser, Maxim Smith. Callum Scrivens, Benjamin Bartlett in 20th, Jasmine Taylor, Will Swills, Levi Earl down in 23rd with Reese Green alongside, then Jill Everton, Lucy Lovell, Daniel Davies, and it's Jaden Hewitt rounding, rounding off the 28 car field. We haven't got them formed up at all, no, they so we're going to send them round. Uh, hello to Ollie Hancock, he should have entered, where it looks glorious. Uh, Mel Bond said, come on, Zach, and it was going so well till it wasn't. Simon Keeble, Reese the Dark Knight is a missile at clay. Oh, yes, he is. He um, dropped a couple of places there, though. And then Ryan Taylor, a fantastic drive, Mayor Barrett. So, obviously, we were a little bit uh, delayed because we had uh, Louis on the, uh, the chat. And we had a full and frank discussion with Ash. <coughs> a full and frank discussion? Well, not really, because he went, no, you're wrong. I went, all right, then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hello to Jojo AGHD Rocks. He's, of course, part of the Zach Bolton fan club. And, uh, yeah, it went well, to a point. Yeah, he he did do well until yeah. he had a you know we, you can never foresee mechanical issues. I'm not Ca- sure what that what that was. Caroline Strange is off my Christmas card list. Uh, loving the guest presenter, he's a natural. <laughs> yes, he is. I thought so as well. <laughs> I thought it was great. I think I, I, think, think, I, I, I was sitting behind. Well. And I thought it was great. <laughs> Here, Here we, we go, go then. Here we go. I love this first turn at clear through the sweeping left hander of Billy's blind and into the right hander, and then sweeping into the right left S's out of there and Hans Herpin is perhaps that's why we'd see driving defensively there middle to the inside line and remarkably everybody in this 28 cart field is through the Hans Herpin and on they are indeed and it's Mitchell Mulvey who has who after having no intention whatsoever doing a single warm-up lap, he didn't even try and get the carts together for that first lap it was quite impressive it was quite impressive how he decided not to try he sweeps past in the first lap, leading from the 22 of Archie Butler. And I think it's, Kurt, it's Billy Edgecombe now up to third. And there's, there's Butler up the inside. Is Edgecombe going to follow him? Not quite. Yeah, but the foot cart in fourth. Curtis Latimer, he saw a gap as well, and he's gone through it. The number 20 of Billy Edgecombe, Edgecombe now comes in now third. the inside. No, he's come up the inside oh, of uh, Hans Hairpin. I'm not sure he's going to get the X. He has. He's now in third. But there's a bright orange cart. I'm going to get the number that goes round. That is the 30. That is uh, Mason Perrin. How's um, he done that? He's now Perrin? up to fourth. So Perrin. Oh, he started it. But well, still, it's not bad. And he comes at the end of the second lap. There's a few kind of waving from the crowd. There's some stopwatches and pointing. They sweep down to the bottom bend. And there's a nice little edgy lead that Archie Battle's got himself as he goes for the S's. Immediately behind him, Mitchell Mulvey. As you can see that 155 as they go around the hairpin. And there's more action in the back of this. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine carts have kind of broken away. <laughs> was it eight? Yeah. Eight or nine? Car, a nine cart train. And yes, there's a little bit, have. and there's some squabbling even there right back. You and Hughes, I think, has lost the position in that in, during the course of this lap. But there we go. Over the line go our leaders, and it is still Mulvey. So you Butler you from Mulvey, from Edgecombe, Mason Perry in fourth. It's behind in the, the action. Widdicombe now. Widdicombe, sorry, not Widdicombe, because that's a, a comedian. Uh, Widdicombe up to fifth. <laughs> I do that all the time. <laughs> I do that all the time. Oh, and the move there. Fifth to fourth. That's Widdicombe. Going past Mason Perry. I don't think Mason Perry gets overtaken very often in, in, in the championship. No, he does not. A little bit of a nibble there. It's a bit of heavy braking from the 77. Withercombe to try and move forward one step forward. He's now right behind the back end of the blue, the kind of bright blue carp of... Billy Edgecombe, of course, himself is trying to get hold of that fluorescent, yeah, fluorescent green and white machine of Mason Mulvey. But the man on the move 
is absolutely Joshua Withcombe at the moment. Good blocking there. Well, well defensive, not really blocking, defensive driving from Edgecombe. But all this is happening is it means that getting further away is Archie Butler had over a second of a lead and they're kind of leading Mitchell Mulvey to his own devices. Yeah, the gap last time through was... Well, it was four tenths, but that's because my timing hasn't updated. It was about uh, a second, I think, the last time, Nick. Yeah. Here they come, though. The 155 of Mitchell Mulvey is about to have Billy Edgecombe and Joshua Withcombe right with him. Withcombe, not enough pace on the bricks to get down the inside of Billy Edgecombe. He's a very, very quick driver at the front of this junior row tax field. Archie Buttle is having an absolute ball there. 1.4 seconds is the gap last time through. And because of the battling for position behind him, He's, he's, he is able to ease away, as is Mitchell Mulvey. He's got a bit of a breathing space now because behind the Billy Edgecombe and Joshua Withcombe, with Mason Perrin settling in now to that fifth spot. Remember, we said that Mason Perrin, he can kind of... One up the inside. Yeah, he has. That's been coming, hasn't it? So, Withcombe takes Edgecombe. As Perrin, as you see, I'll finish the sentence for you because you're obviously trying to reload the timing. Um can really just relax for this one because he only needs to score a few points and not have a disaster or get disqualified and he will uh, take this championship but he hasn't he's not quite in the bag though he's already at the, the self-service checkout uh, and only has to scan one more item and he'll be the junior rotex champion for 2023 but there you are now so so second and third right together seven laps completed this is not over yet is it for second place mitchell mulvey who was relatively comfortable three and a half minutes is a lifetime here at clear pigeon we can get lots and lots of laps 19 in three laps, and a half. yeah about that <laughs> and he's th they're lapping in 35 seconds these juniors around the horseshoe for the eighth time and this is where this is where he's gonna have, have to mount his move through buttons into top bend and it's all about momentum across the line and then into billy's blind the sweeping left into billy's blind the right hander down the inside Oh, he's got him. Yeah, yeah, that was textbook, wasn't it? That Not was sure. coming. You kind of think that Mitchell Mulvey knew it was happening and let it happen, because otherwise you just move across a foot and stop it happening. Well, there was an element of that, wasn't there? That he knew it was coming, and, and he didn't really want to fight that. So, he, he, you know, he could have defended. Very tricky corner, because you're breaking and turning there. Is his nose down? Is Smithkin's nose down? Oh, I'm not sure. Not sure. Let's have a look as he comes through. The final looks bend very here. low. Top bend does look low compared to the others. Yeah, we might have to wait and see what the uh, what the scrutineers think of that as they come through. It does look very low, doesn't it? Mm. I know he's he's front fairing is bouncing around, but that's not really in any kind of regulation. Mm. There's the leader Archie Buttle there, silhouetted coming in, sliding the cart in, getting it to rotate on the bricks. Great driving from all of these youngsters. And there's the number thirty of Mason Perrin now onto the rear bumper of Billy Edgecombe. This is fourth and fifth. One, two, and three kind of separate, uh, sort of settled their, uh, their argument. Though, actually, in fairness, these two guys could actually get back up to Mulvey, and they can see him just ahead with the green nosed cart. Well, that uh, Billy Edgecombe is actually second in the championship behind Mason Perrin. The rules are reversed on the road here with under two minutes remaining. Going away to Hans Hairpin again. No action this particular lap. Minute 45 to go, plus one lap. And the bright orange cart of Mason Perrin snapping around the rear end of the 20 of Billy Edgecombe. So Edgecombe, just, I'm pretty sure Edgecombe is pretty similar pace, but there obviously there's always a chance of an error. Yes, that's right. Yeah, very, very fast pace at that, these drivers. Quite experienced, very experienced drivers here. We're getting towards the final minute, which can mean at least three laps still, depending on where they are on the track. So Buttle leads by over two seconds now, 2.2 .2 to be precise, from Joshua Withcombe, who has himself got 1.3 seconds on Mitchell Mulvey, and that's the cart there, the blue-sleeved driver with the green and blue and white liveried cart there in third place from the Lando Norris cart there, the yellow and blue one of Billy Edgecombe, and then the bright red livery of Mason Perrin. That's orange. Is it orange? Deep orange, I think. Well, a mystery orange at the moment, but uh, it's deep orange. So we're getting towards the final stages. 
and this battle for third first and seconds pretty settled it's going to take an incident to change that order round but as Mitchell Mulvey consolidates that position I think we've got a chance of seeing the one lap to go board next time by for Archie Buttle who is just coming through let's have a look out the window see if I can see Buttle yeah just coming through the yes is now and heading down towards Hans Airpin. It will be the one lap to go board for these drivers next time by. As Archie Buttle leads out of Hans Airpin towards the horseshoe for the penultimate time. This battle still rages third, fourth and fifth. None of these drivers though look like they're in a position to maybe make a move. They are absolutely flat out driving from these three drivers. One lap to go board. And even Mason Perrin, who dominated that first heat in quite distinctive style. As we look for Archie Buttle now towards the flag. He is just coming through the horseshoe into the final two corners of the lap. There he is there. Archie Buttle it will be through top bend for the final time. Let's see how much Kirby uses. No, he's well within the limits of that cart. He takes a nice little discreet finger in the air to acknowledge the win. <laughs> finger in the air. Yeah, it was the forefinger as <laughs> it well, was, okay, not, not right. the other finger. All right. Yeah, Joshua, he's well, though. Joshua Withkim second. It was Mitchell Mulvey, Billy Edgecombe and Mason Perrin, third, fourth and fifth. Benjamin Bartlett finishes sixth. Freddie Whirlock changes places with Billy Vogt into towards the flag and comes seventh. Billy Vogt eighth, ninth as Will Swills. Jasmine Taylor. Now, where did Jasmine Taylor start? I'm pretty sure. Yes, 21st. Started 21st did Jasmine and came through to finish and round off the top 10. Logan Bennett has a question. Go What's ahead. the fastest time of the juniors? Um, well, there we had a 34.892 was the fastest lap of that race. Does he mean lap I record? I, I don't know about that. Do you know the lap record? No. Because it will depend on the tyres you're on. Yes. The so lap record won't be on a Maxxis tyre. No. It'll be on a, a Mojo, uh, which is a stickier tyre. Hmm. Um, we don't use Mojo tyres in the NKC. We use Maxxis tyres. He keeps the cost down. We have two sets per season in comparison to one set per day in other series. So it keeps the cost down massively. That's what I think has been one of the key factors to the success of the NKC, the Junction 6 NKC of 20, for 2023. And it continues on. 2024, looming large, Nick. Yep. Um, the big championship coming up. Two, well, we've got, we've got s s several new things happening next year. Um, first of all, we have a junior TKM class. Yes. We have KZs at some of the rounds, uh, to be confirmed. And we have a northern and southern split of the championship. Yes. So the, three yeah. rounds, the first three rounds are the southern championship. And I forget, it's Clay, Mansell, and... Uh, oh, it's Clay, Forest, Forest Edge. Edge. And Mansell, that's your southern cup. And then you have the Ove Plate at Rowra. And then you go to the Northern Cup, which is Wilton Mill, which is a good definition of North for me, because it's north of my house, yeah, so it is North. Really the then north. three sisters in Warden Law. Which being, is in, being from the Warden North. Warden Law, where you get to sleep in your own bed, yes, Joe. Yes, I know. Being from the North. Yes, from Wilton the Mill isn't the North. But we'll, we'll consider Wilton it Wilton Mill north. actually isn't even the North for most people. It's actually south of Watford Gap. Ah, now then, that's a good point. Our producer, Paul, who is firing the pictures into us, has just asked, what's happening with tyres? Well, there's a slight change in the tyre regs next year, Nick. I'm not sure if you're aware. I'm not aware. Right. Well, I'm going to tell everybody. Tell me. This is all about. This Could is all, you? <laughs> this is all going into 2024. One set of tyres for the first three rounds. Right. One set of tyres for the last three rounds. Right. So you've got a lot of people. There's a lot of talk, certainly in the north, which is where I'm from, Arr. of people joining in from round four. For, for, from round four. But we also have a, an overall championship as well, don't yes. we? So we have a southern. First three rounds of the Southern Base Championship. Uh, final three rounds are the Northern Base Championship. But overall, you're going for the the accolade of the NKC 2024 champion of whatever class you are in. Hmm. What's out next? Got a bit of a delay, and we've Here now got the Senior Road Axe out. The 162 class being led out by Tommy Lee Davies with Luke Evans alongside. And then we've got Joel, Joel Bowden and Lewis Berry on row two. Liam Deedman and Jody Fox are on row three. Reese Pope and Jensen Watts are on row four. Row five is Matthew Lambert and Bobby Rosier. Matt Lewin and James Wood are on row six. Now, James Wood had a retirement in his first eight, so he'll need to maximise his points haul here. Alex Wannabe and Sam White are on row seven. Then we've got Henry Stratton, Levi Goodyear, Ben Harper, Grace Lee Davis, 
uh, Aidan Pomeroy, Ashton French, Finley Watson, Kieran Gifford, Ryan Mills, James Burgess, Kyle Dunford and John Hobbs, Sam Elliott and Alex Jackson, Braden Hill and Philip Howarth, who also had a retirement in his first eight, so he'll be wanting to maximise as well. Harry Barter and Dan Andrews round off 32 cart field. Yeah, and I think, are. Nick... They're, they're giving all, it a go. They're, yeah, they're, they're, they're all giving together. It a go. We could get this going. I can answer Silver Stripe's question. Yes, this is from the UK. This is a place called Clay Pigeon, which is half between Dorchester and Yeovil, quite near to the south coast. And they're away. And they got the, they got the go. They have. And a very, very easy start. Oh, we've got an accident on the, on the line. The 87 and the 32. Oh, we've got a problem with the 32. Yeah, the 32. James Burgess there. He's gone into the wall. He's hurt himself. I think we're going to get this one to be red flagged, I would think. Um... Yeah. I'm not sure if he's been. He's been, he's took a hit up the back end. I think. And, yeah. Uh, he's feeling a bit winded. Not We've got a red sure flag. Yeah, that's no yeah. surprise. That's a uh, sensible approach. So we can see that we're not going to put it on screen. We can see uh, James. He's just. Um, he's obviously uncomfortable, but he's you know up and at me. He's about. He's about and conscious and everything else. Um, it was the 87, I think. A very Barker wasn't it? Who he had the problem with. Because Barker was facing the wrong way on the straight. So where was Harry? Where was that? That was right Harry towards Barker the back, was, wasn't it? Was at the back, yeah, thirty-first. Yeah, it, was, it all happened on the back. The back few rows there, they, they sort of bunched up yeah. and started uh, connecting and, and contacting, and um, they've been brought to a halt. We'll get this race. We'll, we'll restart this race afresh with the original grid being lined up. Uh, while we're in this break, Nick, we can continue our chat about yeah. the 2024 season. Absolutely. Uh, we haven't quite finished the 2023 season, but it's always around this sort of final round of any championship. doesn't matter what championship we're in. We always talk about the coming season, don't we? Yeah. Um, so, we, you know, we, we've talked about this, the, the split season, but it's an overall. We've also got an O-plate. We've got an O-plate winner here in the form of Kieran Gifford. He's carrying the O. Uh, the O plate uh, that took place in August in at Wilton Mill, didn't it? So it did. It was August. Wasn't it rained. It? Yeah, yeah, it, it was. It does. was. Well, <laughs> next year's O plate will take place in July in Rowra at Rowra, so which is rain. probably a good <laughs> good point of uh, what? Sorry, <laughs> it'll rain. <laughs> well, yeah, there's a good chance because it's just on the edge of the Lake District. And the reason why the Lake District is very green and picturesque is because it does have a lot of rain. Uh, however, in July, there's every chance that it could be one of those rare days at Rowra where it absolutely is blisteringly hot and the sun shines. Uh, that comes right in the middle of the season in and July. And if not, we can go to the Pencil Museum. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, honestly, is the nearest local attraction to Rowra is the Pencil Museum. I have never... I've been going to Rowra since 1986. And you've never gone to the Pencil Museum? never been to the Pencil Museum. Wow. No. Just no, just no, a no. bit like of ambition, doesn't it? No, no, no. Yeah, it does. Yeah. We've got a bit of a wait, Nick, uh, between this round and the first round of the 2024 calendar. Clay Pigeon uh, in April... Uh, it, uh, 19th and 21st of April, to be precise. But we haven't got quite so long a wait for the next karting live TV event, have we? I throw the ball in the air and you knock it out of the park. Well, you What's know. that then, Nick? Well, we are off to Hull. No, not Hull. Not Hull, sorry. We're off to Warden Law, which, of course, is Sunderland. Uh, on Why does Nick keep saying Hull? Well, I'll tell you, everybody. <laughs> we did a live stream at my local track, Warden Law. It was our first Law. ever big one. It was our first big ever one. big event and it was uh, at Warden Law, and Nick had one job to do to open the broadcast, and he said, here we are in the northeast of England near Hull, which everybody from Warden Law, Hull is about a three-hour drive south. <laughs> but Nick, being from Gillingham in Kent and yeah. living in Milton Keynes, yeah. has no geographical knowledge of anything north of <laughs> what? Scotland. What for gaps? No, I'm more at Leeds. Or Leeds. That's okay. the Leeds. Right, I know okay. the whole way. So, so, let, me, let me prove this to you. Okay. Yeah, what for gap? Yes. Yeah, the M6. Leicester. It's in the West. Nottingham. No, the M6 turn off. All right. Okay. M6. Then you've got Leicester, Nottingham, Mansfield, Sheffield, Le uh, no, Chester, Leeds. And then I don't know. But Harrogate's over there if you're rich. Harrogate's north of Leeds. I don't bloody know. <laughs> Just north of Leeds. Anyway, yes, yeah, so, so we are going up on the uh, 11th and 12th of November. So more Carting Live TV. Carting Live TV for the fantastic Autumn Cup. At Warden Lawn. The great thing about it is it's two separate days, so both days has heats and finals. You haven't got to wait for finals on Sundays. We've got all our action finals on the day. And already a bumper crop of entries, and the reason it's a bumper crop of entries is because it's a bumper crop of fi of prizes. Massive amount of prizes for the winners of the Autumn Cup. We've got uh, for instance, we are running a one seven seven Rotax grid on Maxis tires, like we run in the NKC, and the winner of the Autumn Cup in that one seven seven class will win a free registration to the 2024 championship and a free race entry to one of the rounds of their choice. Oh, yeah, so that's yeah. very, very, 
well worth uh, winning. The other road axe class. But you've not just teamed. I know you do, I'll give you the feed. You've not okay. just teamed up with the NKC for the prizes, have you? No, we haven't. The other road axe classes uh, from Micromax, Intermax, uh, Junior Road Tax, and Senior Road Axe 162. Their prize for winning the Autumn Cup is a full season registration into the UKC 2024 Championship and two free race entries for that championship. Uh, we've also got Pro Carts. That are going to be running, and they will win. We're working on prizes for that, but we've got probably in the offing an RPM engine build to the winner of the seniors, and juniors, what sort of value is and that? Honda Cadets. I'm really not sure. It's oh. a few hundred quid, though. No, imagine All of the prizes are a few hundred, hundred quid. quid yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And a free sticker kit from Apollo, uh, from uh, Red Graphics Racing, uh, Apollo Karts. Uh, Adam Nichols, big uh, advocate of the Pro Car classes, uh, is going to be giving uh, sticker kits to all of our Pro Car winners as well. So there's a race meeting on Saturday. There's a trophies. full race meeting on and a Sunday. race meeting on Sunday yeah. with trophies. And then aggregated, aggregated for the to give us Cup. the winner of the Autumn Cup for all so, of that classes. So, yeah, so it's going to be really, really exciting. And, of course, because it's in November, we guarantee it's quite a short day because it's dark by four. Uh, well, we've got floodlights there. <laughs> it's not dark by four. We're going to carry yeah. on going. Our, um, our cameras are going to be working at uh, full pelt that's under right. the floodlights. Full pelt, uh, and that is going to include uh, our very lovely producer Paul's uh, return to camera work and uh, frostbite. <laughs> Which he loves. He loves. He loves a bit of frostbite. In um, talking of the oh, end. hang on a second. We haven't told the... the, the no, we, we've missed out the major returning star for our performance. Oh, of course. Yes. Yes, Karting Live TV will be joined by our... Um, well, let me, let me just say, for the person who... Super com- For the person who, who commented, the one comment on Facebook for the last event was, <laughs> great broadcast apart from Nick. So we've solved that problem of the Autumn Cup because I'm not doing that. I'm pressing the buttons. Paul's doing the filming. And who's doing the talking? Johnny Palmer. Johnny Palmer of? Of BTCC fame, yep. uh, European Le Mans series, and Radio Le Mans fame. I'm joined by Johnny Palmer. Not a stranger to Karting Live TV. Nope. He 2020, 2022, he did the uh, round at Landau. And this season, if you look back across the season, as you've got nothing else to do across the winter, and across the winter, the dark, lonely, cold <laughs> nights of winter, which I hate, uh, mm. Then, uh, you know, they're all available, all six rounds of the season, all six rounds of last season as well. But Johnny Palmer was with us for Mansell Raceway. Uh, one of the best rounds this year. Apparently so. <laughs> <laughs> all I remember is the issues we had with the marshals. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. By the way, they have cleared the uh, driver who had the incident. I think he's been looked at in the medical centre. I think they're going to get underway again relatively quickly. There is still a second ambulance here. I don't think he would. And in fact, so Reggie, the carts are rolling already. Normally, they run this down to a six-minute race, so it did stop very early. So they might get the full eight. I'm not sure. I have to wait for the timing to actually get pinged when they start to find that answer out. Yeah, it's a, it's a fresh re, it's a fresh restart from the original grid. But is it with the eight minutes or six minutes? Ah, uh, that's it. Looks like six minutes to me. Yeah. Uh, Gaz Bury is Bury. with us this weekend, and he was he's going to run off and see just how uh, James Burgess is. He's the driver that looked a bit winded to me. Um, we'll get a report on him as soon as yeah, we can. Hopefully he didn't hurt his ankle because he was tight up on the right-hand side of the car. So I was slightly worried about his ankle. I think you're right. I think he got a windy from behind. Yeah. Uh, Tommy Lee Davis is our pole sitter and he will bring the field round. They're already out of the hands hairpin and towards the horseshoe. The number 89 is Tommy Lee Davis. That's the Lando Norris cart livery that you see there, the yellow and blue. Alongside him is JKR's uh, Luke Evans. And then behind them, Joel. In fact, that's Joel Bowden, not Luke Evans. Where's Luke Evans gone? Looking for the number three, Luke Evans. He's not there. Mm. Where is Luke started. Evans gone? Yeah, that's a bit odd. And he's, uh, you know, he's carrying the number three because he was third in the 2022 <laughs> championship. Here we come, Lord Practical Racing, Nick. And they come very, very slow. Sarah Dar- Darwell, the uh, startup, says, now you can go. And the throttle is pushed. And the 89 of Tommy Lido is in a slightly better start. The 13 of Joe Bowden will just swing around the outside. He's going to lose. Oh, and up the inside then. Two positions taken by, I think, Lewis Berry, I think, has gone into the lead there. It's by a fantastic... No, it's not. It's the 83. It's... 80 to- it's- Oh, I've got all the numbers that are wrong. It could be 93. I don't know. Is it Jensen Watts has picked it? Is what the lead? Yeah, could well be. How has he the, done that? The 93, he showed massive pace whenever How has he done that? <laughs> he is. He is. He was fifth. Absolutely <laughs> on fire, isn't he? Jensen Watts. Let's see if we can pick up where Jensen Watts went. We had an incident into the hands hairpin oh, with a cart spinning off. It looks oh, like wow. 
Who is Ow. that? The number 70 or the number 10? I think it's the 10. Right. Um, we have a shifty about who it might we'll, we'll be. Fi we'll find out in a moment here when, when the carts have oh, come through. Be, it must be the 16 of Grace Lee Davis. I didn't look like well, that. She's got, pink, got a yeah. pink helmet, so it probably is the lady driver. To Jensen Watts leads by an amount of time. This That's is quite startling. Eight tenths of a second is the gap to Matthew Lambert, who's no slouch at all, and we'll uh, now spend the rest of this right. five minutes chasing him down. I can only see what happened with the various squabblings around the uh, the bottom bend, and the, uh, the the race opened up to him like the uh, Red Sea uh, for Moses. So he's now absolutely away. Though interesting, keeping him honest, is Matthew Lambert. He's Whilst it's time to having lost two tenths in that last lap, I don't think it was Lambert who said before, oh, very, very wide. That's the 13 of Joel Bowden, allows he slid wide into the uh, into Billy's blind. Uh, mm. He was in fourth. That's allowed Lewis Berry and I think Bobby Rosie and Alex Warnerby even might yeah, have come through. One, two, and three equities, and four, five, six is where the more actions are. I'll keep an eye on the league because I didn't, I'm not sure what it's may well be pacing himself at this point, but he yeah. didn't really massively pull away from. Uh, Lambert last time across the line and they are no oh, it's two tenths it's okay right well. it's pulling away so the battle really is this fourth fifth and sixth battle and just coming out the inside to take that fourth place is, is Wannabe. Alex Wannabe yeah Wannabe who did get ahead of Bobby Rosier Rosier a former heat winner in this championship meanwhile flag so there's no overtaking at the hairpin due to the fact that uh, Grace Lee's cart is still on the side there Marshall, I oh know because there's they're, a Marshall there sorting tyres. Yeah, they're going, the tyre barrier get fixed this time. I just think they're going to have the track fully green next time round. There is the 16 car, letting, letting people lap her. One of those things you make the axe in the first lap. What can you do? But don't forget, you still get a few points even at the back, so you may as well keep going. Okay, someone else tries up the inside there, and it's another lap loss. As the 49 Bobby, goes past the 31, Bobby so Rose, yeah. past Berry. So Berry's on a little bit of a drift backwards at the moment, still leading by. Comfortable margin is Watts from Lambert and from Lee Davis, and now separated into fourth is Warnerby. So they're kind of easing them. To the Basically, this is about as exciting as the sprint race was in F1 yesterday. A bit of action on lap one, and now they're all just easing out to no, a various no, no. gap. No, I think, well, you're, okay. I, I think you're wrong Tell there. Me. Bobby Rosier there, the number 49. He's managed to break free of Lewis Berry, and he's now chasing Alex Warnerby. These are positions which will give them a better points haul so they're all important yeah, going absolutely. forward to the final they don't want to be anywhere near that b final they want to be qualifying well up the a final and there oh, inside yeah. the 25 Ooh, almost use the traffic yeah use the traffic and he did use the traffic past. well used it at the horseshoe went down the inside of the left hander now through buttons the right hander and the final top bend here it is coming into the hands hairpin and then using There's that back Grace. marker there, who's just regaining ground there, the number 16 of Grace Lee Davies, just regaining, in fact, pulling off the yeah, back onto the get, track. She's trying to get out of the way, actually. Yes. She's been trying to get oh, out of the way. Um, and, uh, and it's just one of those things where sometimes trying to get out of your way, but it's also where you it, want to be. What it, can you do? It was nothing to do with Grace. She, was, she can't disappear. She kept out of the way. It was the other car that had to get around it. There's Bobby Rose, yep. The lime green, very distinct of all that sticker kit. Now See he's... Now. He's brought it away from Warnerby, hasn't he? Yeah, but I'm not sure. Is he going to be able to move up towards Tommy Lee Davis? Oh, it's a big ask with only 1 minute and 46 seconds. Yeah, the shortened race, of course, because of the accident earlier. Sweeping now down the bottom bend. And there's the 31. Into the hands hairpin. There's the field. The sun moving slightly round gives us less of a silhouette. But it's still, I do like that By shot. By the time the finals come, you'll be able to see everything. Yeah, we'll be able to see, yeah. I kind of like the silhouette shot. It's a bit arty. Yeah, yeah it's that's great. Nice. We're as arty. The, as the change direction into the hairpin, really is uh, quite an arty shot. The 31 there's Lewis Berry. He's currently in sixth. They have settled in, Nick. Not quite as boring as the F1 sprint race well, yesterday. It's very hard to do that. I mean, midday well, have, is half 11. I managed to stay awake. That's I about don't know it. how you did that. Henry Stratton's had a problem and pulled off the 26 cart. Philip Howarth is another retired. again. He had a fuel pump last time. He's going to be in the B final. He is absolutely going to be in the B final. He's going to be at the back of the B final. He's, he's, it. he's back on. He's just clicked through. But he's way at the back of the field in 27th. So I'm not sure what, happened, what has happened to Phil. He started in 30th. Only 28 carts took the start from 32 carts that were on the grid. Yeah, we lost a few in the first uh, accidents. 
Oh, and there's a move down the inside. Has gone the all plate holder, Kieran Gifford. He's put Lewis Berry another, as well. Yeah, yes, Lewis Berry, Berry drops seven. to seventh. We are ticking down. There is Phil Howarth just coming through at the tail of the field. The leader's going to cross the line and get two laps. Yes, there he is. So two laps to go. Because he got across the line with six or so seconds left. So you get to, it's when you hit the, the limit, which is six minutes in this race, normally eight minutes. And then you get one more lap the next time you go around. So races can last. On a long track, a race can last the best part of nine and a half minutes, if you time it correctly. But yeah, on this short right. track, you're never going to get much more than... Uh, Sort of 8.45, yep. 8.50. Kieran Gifford, another scalp taken by him. Alex Warnerby there coming through. That sweeping Billy's blind into the right hander of Billy's blind there and then textbook move down the inside and pulls away straight away. Kieran Gifford, very, very quick pace from Kieran Gifford. Lapping in the, the best lap time for Kieran on lap 9, 35.1. Jensen Watts, though. Fastest lap of the race on lap 8, 34.955. I think he's the only driver to dip into the 34s as well, Nick. So mm. he's got massive, massive paces, Jensen Watts. Yeah, he's easy out of 10th here, a 10th there. And, and if, he's, now... if his plans come off for next season, as the all plate holder goes down the inside of Tommy Lee Davis, if Jensen Watts joins us for the full season. He's got to be He's a favorite. massive, massive favourite yeah. for a championship. Alex Jackson was that uh, driver who vaguely um, started um, photo bombing our shot. <laughs> Down at, he's gone off as well. A bit too much brakes, a bit of help, and he's reversed himself into the barriers. Down at Hans Hairpin. Cart sweep round the bottom bend in what's turned out to be um, a relatively interesting race, but been some problems left, right, and centre. Where's our leader? And they've yellow flagged the whole track. The whole track's yellow flagged. So they've yellow flagged the whole track. It's finished, that's why. You missed the end there. I didn't. You went in the phone and missed the end. No, 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 I didn't. I, I thought you were taking us through the... I didn't know it was the end. Really? <laughs> the checker... Oh, you can't see it. Can I you? can't see the checker flag. Right, Jensen Watts takes it in fine style. 3.8 seconds was the gap at the flag, which Nick missed. Uh, Matthew Lambert second. <laughs> Bobby, Ros <laughs> Bobby Rosier up into third place. Kieran Gifford, though, that was the driver of that heat for me. Kieran Gifford uh, all the way through. Where did Kieran start? Start at 22nd, and he just came very cautiously and carefully, but very, very effectively through the field and finished fourth. Tommy Lee Davis was fifth. Alex Wannabe sixth. Lewis Berry seventh. James Wood eighth. They'd be happy with that, will James Wood, because he, he had a retirement start at 12th, so he's made up some points. Uh, Levi Goodyear, ninth. The top ten rounded off by uh, Joel Bowden. Uh, then we had Ben Harper, Sam Elliott, Ari Barker, Braden Hill, Ashton French, Sam Wyatt, Kyle Dunford, Ryan Mills, Finley Watson, Aidan Pomeroy, Rhys Pope uh, was next. Uh, 22nd, Dan Andrews, then John Hobbs, Jody Fox, Henry Stratton and Philip Howarth. The last of the finishers, we lost Alex Jackson and Grace Lee Davis. Oh, sorry, they, they weren't lost. They actually were two laps down after an incident. Um, so that is the second heat for Senior Road Axe, Road Axe completed. What have we got out next? Nick? We've got we've our got first, first heat for TKMs. Oh, smoky smoke smoke. Yeah. Uh, so Simon Keeble asked the question, are we doing FIA track limits? Well, if FIA could decide what the track <laughs> limits are, perhaps we would do, but they can't. Yeah, yeah. The track limits are delineated just, here by tyres and grass. I'd tell Simon, I'll just put that to Chris Cox. <laughs> add that to Chris Cox's plate, shall I? Here they come then. They're out. They will, they will, they will not want to do one warm-up lap. They will make sure they get two warm-up laps. Or even three here at uh, clear. <laughs> What's the grid, Joe? Uh, the grid, Nick, looks like this. We've got uh, 28 carts down to start. We have got 20, well, that's still clicking by. 21 seems to have come out. I'm not sure why we've you got 28. Get, you might have a few more. Yeah, they might They might tick by. Uh, Mitchell Mulvey is the pole sitter. Curtis Latimer alongside. Then we've got Archie. Sorry, that's not our TKM at all. I think my pages have stuck together, Nick. Hang on. I wonder why that is. There it is. Oh, that's, yeah. it's that's why it's very, 21 again, is it? They've, they've been in here overnight and they're very damp. <laughs> yeah, it's Joseph Jakes on the pole position. Alexander Lehman. We've got 22 carts. And 21 carts have come out. 22 carts on the sheet. They will be given the, the one more mm, lap I around, I think. They're in order. Joseph Jakes, Alexander Lehman, Ooh. Matthew Temple They're Purcell. going for it. They are going for it. Wow, that's really, really... Uh, Unlikely. That's a first. Oh, and you could see them bogging, couldn't you? And a lot of them, they just bogged as they put the power down. To be honest, 
the field looks nothing like the grid after a few corners. <laughs> and we've got an incident at turn one. Uh, yeah, got blind. four carts off, one cart stuck in the back. And they're all underway again. So all of them got underway again at the bottom corner. So a few sliding wide. And after only one lap around clear, the, I can tell you now, those tyres will not be up to their optimum running temperature. They will have not gotten enough heat into those tyres. So we're going to be finding and easing ourselves into this first lap. And the leader, very, very much, is the number 65, the 55, 55 Joseph Jax. Jakes. Poor, he was, Joseph uh, Jax or Jakes? Jakes. He changed that round. Wasn't it? It's spelled Jakes and it's actually Jacks. No, it's spelled Jakes. Ja Jacques. It's spelled Jakes. Well, ja I, you've confused me now. Yeah, I think you've got that Gasbury wrong. will need to. Yeah. We'll, we'll find so out. So Joseph uh, leads with an F uh, from Matthew Temple Purcell. James Hull in third. Top two little breakaway. Bit of a squabbling amongst the fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh. Third place is the 48, so James Hull. And it's 23 now, which is Callan Lamont, possibly, or Caelan Lamont, or who knows. He's come up quite well. He's made two places in this particular round already. Let's go for third and fourth, guys. And there we go. 48 from 23. So it's Lamont now in the yellow fronted cart, looking to make a move around the bottom bend. Getting up the inside, and he should be... No, he didn't get to the edge. Oh, that's a... Just stuck with it, four corners through, and Lamont now whips into third place. There's also a little bit of a cheeky move up the inside there by the grey cart, which I think may well have picked up fourth, and that is the 42 machine of Tom Johnson. Now, one really the weird thing was is one, two, three, four, five carts in a row who all have plain white helmets. And it <laughs> yeah. kind of reminded me of that motorcycle display team that used to be on the Saturday afternoon. White on, helmets. Yeah. yeah, it is a bit. <laughs> I tell you what, though, the mixed grids do do that for us, don't they? They really do put these great, they, you know, we've got some great racing up and down the field. We really cannot keep our eyes on it, on everything that's happening. Joseph Jakes leads after three laps. Matthew Temple Purcell in second. And then we've got Callan Lamont, or is it Kiel and Lamont? Who knows? Uh, he's he in doesn't. third. Tom Johnson, fourth. James Hall, fifth. Leo Crabtree, sixth. Charlie King, though. He's the championship leader. He's got a seven-point lead on Mitchell Ball. Charlie King has got Mitchell Ball behind him. That's it there. The number 26 has gotten ahead of Leo Crabtree on the 44, and Mitchell Ball will want to do likewise. Yeah, Ball in that very distinctive Sunderland helmet, as you like to say, red and white, and he's also gone through as well. So they're now in line of stern, but losing a point or two points, in fact, to, no, not just a point, with Mitchell Ball to Leo Crabtree. Second and third now getting close together. Let's move up forward to second and third because Callan Lamont right on the tail of the 65 of Matthew Temple Purcell. Yeah, Lamont is not really featuring for some reason in the championship. He's the down in eighth. Him. But he's, he's on the outside. The Just cut off slightly then. He tries again and then round the bottom bend. That's pure outbreaking, Nick. Yeah. That is pure outbreaking. He didn't have the momentum. On engine power and speed out of the final turn down the straight so it was down it was down to doing it on the brakes and he made that look very very easy and it's not absolutely on the edge of grip and adhesion into the horseshoe then and the number 23 the flex livery the bright yellow and blue livery of the flex team being carried by Callan Lamont he's currently eighth in the championship on 862 points so he's a bit out of contention for a championship I think mm. However, there's a lot of points. 50 points for a heat win. It's 48 for second, 47, 46, and downwards. And he's pulled out, hasn't he? Yep. He's definitely, he was being stifled. And more moves down the inside yep. on Ta Third Matthew Temple change. Purcell. I think that's Tom Johnson. Yeah, but he's it, always come back. No, it's the 26. It's Charlie oh, King Charlie has come King. off both of them. That's big for the championship. That's the green helmet of Charlie King there. And Charlie King's got two carts between him now and the third. Mitchell Ball. And that's the real... It doesn't matter where he finishes. It's where Ball finishes. Ball nips out to try and get uh, a place further forward. A past Temple Purcell. Got him. And now it's another battle, really. This is, this is, this is absolutely a mixed grids battle, isn't it? It's, it's, you know, people are coming and people are going based on the mixed grids. Yeah, that's right. The, fast, the faster, the more experienced, faster drivers making their way through and Charlie King right now leads the championship from Mitchell Ball and current champion Louis Bevan Louis in third place 12 points behind Mitchell Ball 19 points behind Charlie King 
and Louis Bevan currently in eighth place in this field. He's a consecutive champion. He was 2020. He was the 2021 champion. He was the 2022 NKC champion. And albeit he's in contention going towards the rest of this day. But whether or not he can do it. This is Ball taking another position this time. The 42 of Tom Johnson. So he's right behind Charlie King again. But we are now in a situation where the, the, the lead is under threat. In fact, in fact, Lamont's taken the lead, I think, in that last lap. Yep, Lamont in the lead now. So Callum Lamont enjoying his time at clay. And now he's got Joseph Jakes behind him. Jakes, I don't think he's given up. Thinking about perhaps getting back down again through the bottom bend. Yeah, two, just coming up to two minutes remaining as well. So plenty of time. However, you. Charlie King looking very racy indeed and about to take that second place. Down the inside at the hand hairpin. And Joseph Jakes comes back at him and does the undercut. And that's actually put King into the grips of Mitchell Ball. And this is the one that counts because they are fighting for the championship seven points apart prior to this race. At the moment, it's going to be eight points. But the swap position is going to be six points. Joseph Jakes there on the number 55. The Carlin Motorsport mechanic works for Carlin Motorsport in Formula 4. Has to renege and Both drop positions. back into drop back into behind Mitchell Ball losing two places to both Charlie King and Mitchell Ball there and Mitchell Ball I've got to say is doing a, a cracking job of staying in touch with Charlie King however he'd prefer to be ahead of him and just bring some of those points back to him can he do it though Nick can he do it the number two there needs to be ahead of the 26 that's your championship battle there right there the 26 leading the championship the number two Mitchell Ball is in second seven points behind yeah, it's all going on in this TKM race, just 22 starters, but most of them seem to be competitive. And now Ball needs, if he, in the way, he needs to get past him. Because obviously, he started behind him in this seat. He won't stop by him next seat. And he looks at the inside. He's gone through. So, but is it going to be a switch back? No, Ball holds it. Ball has held the position. No, there has been a double switch back. And they fight and battle over four corners, right through the horseshoe, into buttons and beyond there. And they come down the straight, and the net effect is that the Monts had a bit of a breathing space lead. Ball now being helped along by King. King goes outside on bottom bend, and then bringing back into play Louis Bevan. Great racing this all the way to the flag as well. And defensive by Ball. That's going to cost him time on the exit. Charlie King's not happy, is he? Oh, and who's this coming? It's, it's Bevan. Bevan. That's your championship there, first, second, third. But in the championship, batting it out on the track. And who's that interloper? Johnson's come back into fourth Brilliant. place. Brilliant. Brilliant stuff. So Johnson back into fourth place in the greyish and blue cart there. 42. Ahead of him, there's a green helmet. That's uh, Charlie King. And then you've got Mitchell Ball with a red and white helmet. And they're leaning in. But it's Callum Lamont who's getting away and having a very nice time winning the race. Yeah. Last lap. One lap to go aboard. Being sure now. So it's one more 35 second lap for these drivers. Well, 37 seconds in the TKMs. And Mitchell Ball has to defend. Charlie King has the wider line through the hand hairpin. They're going to be side by side going into the horseshoe. Slotting in behind him now is King. Getting to the final two turns now. Into the right hander of Buttons. They've got one more bend left and that's top bend. Through that and it'll be a drag race to the flag. And Charlie King slots in behind Mitchell Ball. They both took down behind the steering wheel. And there's oh. absolutely nothing in it at the line. Mitchell Ball does take second eight but eight thousandths of a second, of a second there. As Charlie King comes through in third. Callan Lamont, though, he took a very fine win. I tell you what, Nick, another two or three laps, and considering that's what's going to happen in the final, yeah, yeah. Callan Lamont would have been under immense pressure from those three championship protagonists and the, the, cheek, of, the cheek of Tom Johnson to get in between Charlie King and Louis Bevan. Louis Bevan, third in the championship. So just to clarify, Callan Lamont takes the win, Mitchell Ball second, Charlie King third, Tom Johnson fourth, Louis Bevan fifth, Joseph Jakes from Paul to sixth, Leo Crabtree seventh, then we had Ben Watson, Matthew Temple Purcell, Alexander Lehman rounds off the top ten, and then we had Matthew Horton, Gordon Smith, James Hull, Ollie Milner, Matt Slate, Molly, Nicola, uh, Molly Nicholas Biles, Ryan Layton, Will Cregeen in 18th, 19th was Chris Whiteside, James King and James Workman rounded off 21 starts, 21 starters. Uh, no retirements there, bizarrely. Well, it's surprising to see how much they're going for it, and it's TKMs, but that was a great race. Good race, and well done, Callan, or Kalen, who knows. Um, 
And if you want to know what that's all about, you need to go back to Rauber last year, where it was all explained how a man didn't know how to pronounce his own name. He's lovely yes. lad, though. Yes. Um, I've got some info. Go for it. James Burgess, the cart that we saw at the start line incident on the previous uh, senior Rotax. Um, his chassis is uh, written off. Um, so that was a big hit. Um, and he's got a bruised arm, but he is okay. He can, uh, he, you know, bruised arm will be nothing for him. But however, unfortunately, he's out for the rest of the day because of that chassis written off. Nice. So James Burgess yeah, there, man. his season is finished. Hope to see James back here with the NKC next year. And hopefully you get well, that bruise uh, heals very quickly, James, and you get back testing at least. Or even, why don't you venture up to the northeast and for the uh, take Cup. part in the Autumn Cup? Absolutely. Yes. Uh, Joshua, who's obviously, um, I'm not quite sure why you asked this question, says, what time's the lunch break? Weird. Are you bored? I don't know. I think he's hungry. I think he can't tear himself away. He needs to make a roast dinner. Ah, right. Well, That's yes. My guess. Well, the lunch break is, where are we? About five so heats, six times five got, ages. I'll tell you how many heats we've got left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven more heats, and then the lunch break. So it's going to be quite late. In motorsport, you'd very rarely have a defined lunch break. You just, it's as drifty. and when. Where is Gaz Bury? Took me pen. There it is. I don't know your pen. It's my pen, yes. Mm. Rotax 177's out. And released and come blasting onto the track. Let's have a look at their grid. And I haven't got their grid in front of me, my friend. You you weren't very happy that the whole oh, thing there it is. There is. There you, it is. you said, oh, is everything in order? But yes, it is. But I think yes, what happened was. was they got the yes, first five were in they order. They got stuck together. Oh, well, the 52 shouldn't be there. That's for sure. Who is the 52? Um, Alan Cook. Alan Cook. Is, but now he's got to try and get himself back through the field. Is he going to be able to get back through the field? Is that it? Cold tyres spin in front of our camera. Thank you very much. <laughs> Makes it uh, uh, worthwhile us putting it there. It's Ben Johnson on the pool. I finally saw the be paperwork. Oh, well done. Ben Johnson on Not the pool. Ben Johnson, obviously. Pa Patrick williams Rahaj is second. Paul Moran. Hello, Helen. Back at home. Cooking the dinner. Is on the second row with Keith Mason from LRG Motorsport. 32 has got a problem. 32. 32 or 22. This might be 22. He's, I think by the 22 of Dan Moore, he's absolutely staring at the rear of his car, and he's going to know he's going to give it a go. So is it relevant, Nick? Is it relevant? What's happening? To a 34 card field. Well, it's starting. And we're away. And Johnson gets the whole shot. Second going to the first corner was Patrick Williams. Oh, wow. That's a big hit. That's a big hit. And it's, it's still, turned into chaos. We've, we've still got big hits. That was lots of big hits. And someone else has got a bit of... Uh, the, the, the cart's got damage. It's a cart on the start line. That's the 91 didn't even start. Who's the 91? Tyler, Tyler Kelsey. Kelsey. Let's have a look at that first corner incident again as they get themselves sorted out. Yeah, they all came together, didn't they? The concertina turned in. I'm trying to see who was involved. Uh, Keith, yeah, yeah, that was... Off, he was off the track. Who it's was the, that? It's the, the orange car. I can't see what cart number it is. 77? I'm, I'm sorry, 70 something, yeah, 70 yeah. Or 78. Basically, he came off the track, and of course, you can't break on grass. No. So that was it. Let's pick up the leaders. The race continues, though, and Ben Johnson, Keith Mason picked his way through that. That car slewed across his front, slewed across his bows. He could have very well have been mixed up in that, but he wasn't. He kept out of the way, and he came through in second behind Ben Johnson, who's pulled out eight tenths of a second. Scott Smith is third. Richard Evans came through fourth, then Stuart Big, Ian Branfield, Ryan Taylor Truman and Neil Hemming. Michael Mallett was ninth in the top ten, rounded off by Oliver Smith. Yellow flags are still waving just in front of us. As the field come through. Keith Mason has got a lot of pressure now from Scott Smith. These 177 class carts, the heaviest category of the day, senior Rotax. 177 oh. denoting how heavy the cart is and Keith Mason doing a great job of holding them back and uh, sustaining this pressure Scott Smith pulling away slightly from Richard Evans and Stuart Baker now they're on lap 3 so still a lot of racing left there's the leader across the line in front of these and then Keith Mason is he going to be challenged by Scott Smith oh. down into the braking area for Billy's Bend the answer is no well, he was challenged, just didn't he? He was challenged, it, 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 yeah. It was a kind of a meandering. I think, was, I think his braking was being uh, slightly unaided by being lent into by uh, uh, Smith. But they sweep round the hairpin again. Nice lead for the 61 of Johnson. And then it's a train of five carts now looking to battle over second, third, fourth, fifth and sixth. Still a long way to go, though. Five and a half minutes. And Keith Mason 
Oh, Keith, what happened to Keith there? I think the cart slid away from him. Mm. That's allowed Scott Smith through, but Ian Branfield's coming as well. Ian Branfield has Ryan Taylor Truman, and we know how quick Ryan Taylor Truman is. Stuart Baker behind them, Richard Evans, Neil Hemming, Michael Mallett, and Oliver Smith round off the top ten. But now that uh, Keith Mason has dropped behind Keith Smith, uh, Scott Smith, I should say, he's going to have Ian Branfield and Ryan Taylor Truman now breathing down, quite literally breathing down his neck. The KF Sport driver, Ian Branfield, onto the tail of the LRG Motorsport driver, Keith Mason there. And Scott Smith undoubtedly, Nick, pulling away slightly. He's a challenge, is it, down the inside, Branfield? And Ryan Taylor Truman oh, going yeah. with him as well. And Keith Mason being run out of road. Literally. <laughs> literally run out of road there. And Stuart Baker's gone through as well. Found himself hung out to dry, didn't he? Bad corner there. Yeah, he lose three places. It's never a great day. And now the chase of Scott Smith will begin for Mason and Branfield. Yellow flag going into Buttons at the moment. I can't see why. Uh, oh, there's a driver off at the outside of Buttons. So that's a yellow flag all the way around Buttons and Bigger Ben. I think the green flag is to the exit of Big Ben. So in this short track, if you lose two or three corners to overtake on, it makes it all the more difficult. Yeah. And there they sprint through the S's. And certainly the 38 of Smith now is under increasing pressure from the Banfield Taylor. But now we've got a yellow flag also at the hairpin. That's because of a car just we've got, pulling no, off. We've got a yellow flag, I think, the whole track. I think the whole track's yellow, I think. We've got a yellow flag into, perhaps you just can't see, but certainly half the track's now yellow. Um, yeah, we well, that's because we've got a cart off at the hand hairpin and then we've got a cart off at Buttons. Yeah, there's also so yellow going into the yellow going, into, yellow the as well. going into the S's as well. I so think that's clear. That, well, the yellow for the S's was a guy for was a long way away. I think it's that was slightly um, overcautious. It's not quite a full course caution, but it, it was almost nearly, was. Yeah, just by separate yellows. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So local yellows abound uh, pretty much the, the almost two thirds of this track. So Scott, Scott Smith doing a great job in holding back this. Uh, this tidal wave of uh, competitive carts in this 177 Heat 2. It's uh, Smith in the white uh, cart with the Bramfield, Taylor Truman and Baker carts behind him. Taylor Truman uh, in the middle of that pack with that yellow and sort of cream, swoopy moustache-nosed cart. But it's the second place has gone now. because the inside. through. And, and again, when one goes through, the door's open. Yeah. It's like you know, it's all slightly open. Well, that kick through the second part of it. In, in the orange and black cart there of Ryan Taylor Truman, the number 65, he's waiting for Ian Branfield to make the space. Mm. Uh, the orange, black, and white there on that uh, Ryan Taylor Truman cart. He's been glued to the pink and black cart of Ian Branfield, the KF Sport cart there, just now into what is second yeah. place. And, and already, look how much they've pulled on and Scott Smith. For the Smith. second time, we've seen someone lose three places in two corners. And Smith, who came off the line in second, is now going to go over the line one lap later in fifth but these two put a bit of space on themselves they've got to find 2.6 seconds to get towards ben johnson which in two minutes and he's running quite well is going to be a task but branfield firing down towards the hairpin not under immediate pressure from riot taylor truman so that red and white machine with the man with the multicolored helmet will he be able to get a little bit a couple of laps to concentrate see if he can put down to speed remember last time across it was 2.65 seconds was the gap have they managed to gain? Have they lost? Has Johnson pulled away from Branfield? Let's find out. They cross the line now, and the gap has changed to 2.3. So yeah, three tenths a, is not enough. It was a 35.8 from Ben Johnson. He's really he's showing cracking pace. Same pace as everyone else, really. 35.5 from Branfield and Ryan Taylor Truman. 35.6 from Stuart Baker. So Branfield and Ryan Taylor Truman there. Just a slightly quicker by a couple of tenths, 90 seconds or so remaining on the clock so time running out for them to close that gap but a second and third place finish from coming through that field there is a potential fly on the ointment in that there's obviously been that early first lap kerfuffle has meant that some people are a long way off so there could be some lapping in this one and johnson may get a back marker before he gets to the end of the race it's a short lap here isn't it as well yeah short lap big accident to start suddenly you've got a chance yeah. of lapping in only eight minutes yeah, I think back markers may become a factor here, Nick, with uh, just coming up to the one minute remaining. The lead went down two tenths that time, so if we watch this again, it's interesting, there's kind of an equidistance between second, third, fourth and fifth. They've all kind of spread out, not by a huge amount, not like a certainly less than a one mistake, any minor error, and they'll be in trouble again. But apart from that, they're all going pretty well. Gap down to 1.9, so two tenths a lap, they need about another seven minutes, uh, which isn't which they haven't got 
but there is every chance that our um, every chance that our second place man, sorry, our first place man, may get held by back markers. And indeed, he's, got, he's gone past one back marker already, our leader, which is the 61. Um, he's made short work of it, though, hasn't he? Yeah, I think that, I think there's been really some delayed him any. There's been some flaggage, and now it's going to get very confusing with everyone involved because back markers around the leaders. Yeah, Branfield now gets marker. waved through. Yeah, gets waved through there. Very efficiently, Ryan Taylor Truman goes through as well. As does Stuart Baker. He's next up. Ben Johnson, though, 1.6 seconds at the flag. Two laps to go. It'll be the one lap to go board this time by. And we've got carts pretty much on every point of this track. Yeah. See. Yeah. Taylor Truman. On camera at the moment. In third. Not really making any particular movement on... Uh, and the other drivers, to be honest, they have got this situation now where I think the back market is helping nobody. And my feeling is it's just keeping everyone, in, is it really preserving the status quo more than anything else. Up the inside there now, is that a back marker? I don't know, it could be a back marker, Joe. You can point at it, but it could have been a back marker. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> sure. I'm not, I wasn't sure at this it point, was. It was, the know, same, it was the same livery as Branfield. There's so a few cars. That, it it may well startled be, me. But there's so many cars with similar sticker kits. Who knows is the question. But I don't think it was Branfield. But, uh, well, I can tell you the leader is already in the buttons now on the, yeah. for the final time. Okay. So we will get, we'll get the leader. We'll stay with Ryan Taylor Truman. The leader just coming out of the final turn now. There he is in the foreground, and he will take the flag to take I think the win. And, and yeah, that, that was yeah, it was Ryan Taylor Truman overtaking Branfield. Well, no, 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 no. You pointed at the screen. Yeah, I did. But you're ha you're currently having a coughing fit. I was having so a coughing fit, so I couldn't actually verbalise what I was trying to say to you. But we were seeing lots of overtaking there, so you know, I'm going to take a. I'm, I'm taking nothing for that one. Okay. Because if you're going to be this sick, <laughs> <laughs> you've uh, you've eliminated all your rights to moan. So Ben Johnson takes the win. Shall we put some sort of credibility to this? No, uh, okay. that's not what we do. Yeah, okay. Ryan Taylor Truman did come through on Ian Branfield there right at the very end and take second place. Ian Branfield uh, therefore had to settle for third. It was Stuart Baker who finished fourth, Scott Smith fifth, sixth was Richard Evans, then Keith Mason hangs on. Top ten finish for Keith. Uh, he should be happy with that. Uh, Oliver Smith eighth, Arison Crook ninth, Cole Edwards tenth. Outside the top ten we had Matt Zanetti, Scott Clay, Alfie Williams, uh, Joshua Pickford, Harry Wainwright, Neil Hemming, Alex Jones, Steve Stewart, Paul Moran is 19th. Then we had Brendan Smith, Dan Millward, Aidan Hammond, Michael Mallett, Mike Edwards, 24th, Tyler Fossey, Dan Fleckney, Adrian Smith, and Patrick Williams Rahaj finished 28th. Alan Cook and Tyler Kelsey and Carl Bryant finished a lap down. Alex Thomas, two laps down. And then we lost Simon Wheeler and Ben Hitch right at the very start. Um, championship wise the 177 table as Harry Wainwright who finished 15th there he's only got uh, 6 points on Scott Smith and Scott Smith finished uh, in 5th place there so Scott Smith will be in the lead. by my very um, sort of provisional calculation will now take over the lead of the championship blimey blimey indeed blimey Charlie so race 9 coming up next it's the junior row tax heat number 3 that's what we've got for them. Not necessarily the third heat for everyone, as we've got the junior and senior road axe classes uh, into, split into groups. Um, Quite a lot of cart rescuing from that last heat. That last heat seemed to be particularly um, sticky as far as... It was uh, eventful, wasn't it? Carts going off. We had the accident on the first lap. Yeah, it was very eventful. And um, what... The, it's a very fast start here at Clear Pigeon. You've got that run down across the start finish line out of a very fast right hander at top bend and then sweeping into Billy's Billy's blind. You're turning and braking at the same yeah. time and trying to avoid people and you you're actually on you know if you do it on the grass, you're not you're just Well turning. that's what happened there. He <laughs> was just turning. He was not gonna make that right hander, was he? Was very he was not gonna involved. make it. Because half his time was absolutely going, not. Nah, not doing this boys. Yeah. And that would have locked the other side up, and they're going, nah, not going to do this. And I appear to have uh, hit several people. So there we go. So it's Junior Rotax Heat 3 next, is it? Yeah, Junior Rotax Heat 3. We've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six more heats before the brick. We've got um, some heats to uh, get through after the brick, after the lunch brick, uh, before we get into our B finals. Junior Rotax out next. We've got uh, 28 carts on the grid sheet. Let's see who's turned out. Alex Fraser's on the pole. Frank Ward's alongside. 
And then we've got uh, on the second row, Vlad Tomanchuk and Archie Hardiman. Jin Hewitt, Louis Reese, who was uh, proved himself to be very competent commentator there. Um, <laughs> so you say. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Maxim Smith and Jack Dimbleby are on row four. Row five is Alex <laughs> Dolan, Reese Green, <laughs> Joshua Delacarte, and Benjamin Bartlett are on row six. Joshua Whitcomb and Will Swills are on row seven. You'll get over it, Nick. <laughs> uh, row eight is Billy Edgecombe and Finley Underwood. Jimmy Salter and Freddie Theobald is, uh, are on row nine. Row ten, Callum Scrimmins, Alfie Bushell. And then we've got Daniel Haynes, George Keir, Presley Walker, Taylor Dixon, Mitchell Mulvey, Curtis Latimer, Lewin Hughes and Alex Timmons rounds off 28 cart field. We've got them in some semblance of order. Not sure whether the starter will be happy with that. No, no it's Bruce, way too... Bruce, our clock of the course says no. We've got too many stragglers. So we let them I have another know. bash at it. I don't know. The junior road taxes are really trying, to be honest. Well, I mean, you know what? Uh, any NKC round, any Junction 6 NKC round over the years... Over, the, over this year, certainly, and, and certainly last year, is intense and dramatic. Yes. When it gets to the final round and there's a championship for up the stake, and, and, and not just a championship win, but further down the field, you are wanting to finish. Like, if I was racing in the same class as you, mm. I'd want to finish ahead of you. I wouldn't necessarily be winning the championship as point. long as I can beat you. So well, every, yeah. all the way down the field, my you've, got, break down, you've got these personal little battles. Wouldn't it? My would have to, mate. Yeah, would yeah. have to, yeah. As I wave goodbye to you twice as you've fallen off the track, and then my cart broke down. Nick, I'm going to let you take the start here because I need to... Uh... Do I want to turn you off? Yes. Okay, they are bunched up on the inside of the triple six of Frank Ward. Oh, and he's taken way too much curb being bounced off. He's going to go down to third or even fourth. And into the lead is Alex Fraser from uh, Vlad Tomacek. So Fraser from Tomacek as they fly through Sturmy Straight. And Tomacek looks has a bit of a think about it. And there's like a massive spread out as various cars as try and get themselves into the lead, but the net effect is, is the Lando Norris card of Alex Fraser, who leads from Tomachik. Third card, just more difficult to tell at the moment as they go around the uh, top bend, but they are now line stern at the end of the first lap, and it is third. It is the uh, 55, 25 of Jaden Hewitt, so that's the one, two, three at the end of the first lap through the S's. The cart's now settling down. A little bit of action there with the triple four Benjamin Bartlett to get past Maxim Smith in this overtaking area with the hands hairpin. OK, round now through the horseshoe. One, two and three. Nailed together. But no one really looking aggressive they want to overtake. We've got a straggler already. There's a back marker in a terrible lap. And is it going to get overtaken? That's that bright coloured cart. He pulls off to let everyone through. Good, good driving there. Yellow flag waving, thinking to turn one at the moment. Oh, the yellow flag maybe for that slow car to actually, which would be a white flag. And they come through the S's. And again, no real movement there. Glance over the shoulder from Vlad Tomachuk. Just trying to make sure where Hewitt is. And Tomachuk gets up nicely up the inside there of Fraser. We're going to go around the wrong side, but that's all we go away. But now at the inside is the 25 of Jaden Hewitt. But each time these, these guys are trying these little moves, they're just losing enough momentum not to be able to make it happen. And what's end result unsurprising is two attempts to overtake positions and all that's happened Alex Fraser has got a few, a few extra lengths but now looking left looking right Hewitt didn't quite make the dive in the bottom bend and we've had a very very action packed complete lack of overtaking Joe yeah it's uh, it's settled down Alex Fraser our current remember our current Minimax champion from 2022 moving into juniors there and now leading the field round in this third heat for junior Rotax and now coming under a bit of pressure from Vlad Tomanchuk on the number 336. But it's all about a bit being a, playing a bit of a waiting game, Nick. You know, these mm. drivers are driving very fast, but whether or not they are, you know, uh, creating chances and, and throwing caution to the wind, as we see Tomanchuk there, quite happy not to press Alex Fraser. That's letting Jaden Hewitt onto the rear bumper of Tomanchuk as well. A little bit of a cushion before Maxim Smith comes through. And there's a move. That was Jaden Hewitt down the inside. The orange nose with the black oh. bumper just coming into contact with there. Alex Fraser. Yeah, they're all. this is about you know but keeping momentum, isn't it? But we've also got top four now because uh, down the bottom, Ben Benjamin Bartlett took Maxim Smith last time round. And that, I think, is what inspired to, uh, to uh, oh. Jaden Hewitt to get moving. One, two, three, four, and right up the inside. And I think that was a change to the lead. It's always hard. Yep, Landon Norris Cart not in the lead anymore. Now there's five of them. Where's the fifth one come from? <laughs> <laughs> so Alex Fraser... Just stayed ahead, I think. Just stayed but ahead. Now he's down lost the it. inside. Now he's lost it, I think, hasn't he? He could be down to third, third here. Yeah. 
Yes, that's Tominchuk into the lead. Triple four is Benjamin Bartlett, who's up to second. Fraser hanging on really well to third. Did well not to drop another two there, because right behind him is, is Jaden Hewitt. Then Maxim Smith. Tominchuk's in there as well. Oh, he's a battle for the lead coming in Tomichuk through. Tominchuk leads in that grey car, the grey fronted car. Just got the line through bottom bend there to hold off the very aggressive attention to Benjamin Bartley in the triple four machine. And there's some action behind. I think fifth and sixth. Fourth and fifth has changed around as well. As you can see, what's happening is there's a, a, a corner oh. copy of Carl. There's a lead change and into yeah. the lead. Bartlett. Goes Bartlett. I'm not quite sure. That was only a three corner attempt. Well, he came out of the hands hairpin and then towards the horseshoe. He just waited for the, the oh. gap to open up, and he went through it, didn't he? Thank yeah. you for opening the door, Vlad Tomanchuk. Tomanchuk, I think, may have gone a bit wide. You know, he got a little bit of squirrel as he put the brakes on for that corner. I think that prevented him from tightening back in again, and he saw behind him with Bartlett, went, OK, I'll let you go and see what happens next. And Bartlett breaking away from Tomanchuk. Third place is scored as Fraser. I'm not sure if it is Fraser now, to be honest. I think it's, yeah. it's not. It's a it's the bright red and blue machine of the 77s in third now just a, Joshua yeah. Withercombe where did he come from it yeah. him. he was fourth well, it was, yeah but he was way back prior to that I can, see him. I can also see that uh, Billy Edgecombe's coming through as well He's, he comes from nowhere and now he's in sixth he so started 13th where did Edgecombe start uh, he's in sixth now oh. Billy Edgecombe's just passing Alex Frazier and he showed that he was passed by the time they crossed the line he wasn't quite far, uh, be, uh, ahead of him into Billy's blind but now he is. And it's a change for second and third. Withcombe has gone into second place. Let's get back up with the leaders. Second and third. And see if Withcombe can now gain back up on the triple four. Because Tom Chick has gone down to third. Withcombe has come from a long, long way back now. He's already gapping uh, Tom Chick as he now is looking to try and bring it to Benjamin Bartlett. Who himself has come from the pack into the lead. The lead this time round between the first and second. It's Bartlett leads by 0.5 for the second. But you've got a feeling here that Withcombe's got the pace. Yes, Withcombe. Let's have a look at the timing screen, which has just failed me, Nick. Well, luckily, um, ours is working. Yeah, I'm just looking at the sort of lap times that they, they're putting in, though. Uh, we'll wait and see for that. We'll wait for that to catch up. Uh, but very much Benjamin Bartlett now coming under pressure from Josh Withcombe. I don't need a stopwatch. I can tell you now, <laughs> Josh, With Josh Withcombe is the fastest man on the track in comparison to the leader because he's absolutely coming, isn't he? Yeah, he oh, no, is it looks coming. like all, all our timing seems to have frozen, so I was a bit smug about that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it's back on again now. I think obviously there have been some issues with uplinking the timing from the track here this week today. It's just some problems. Claire's got some weird issues, and of course, what happens is the timing gets uploaded from the timing hub, and we then download that again from the ether. If it doesn't go up, we can't get it down. But they are now nailed together with Cam and Bartlett, the triple four white side pods, well, yellow helmet. That's no. your Benjamin Bartlett, and then behind him. Blue and red with a kind of a chrome finish. Very attractive from Withcombe. Withcombe now looking to go up the inside. Can he get the move into Big Bear? Bottom bend? No. Well, Withcombe, and now that I have my stopwatch back, that was the fastest lap of the race, the previous lap of that one. 34.9. First of the drivers to dip into that. And we've got Withcombe now pushing Bartlett all the way. And there's plenty of time. Usually there wouldn't be with only a minute remaining. But here at Clear Pigeon with only... A, a lap just over 30 seconds. There's plenty of time for more challenges to come. And Joshua Withcombe is playing it very, very cleverly. He knows where his strengths are. And here is where his strengths are. Through, but he's blind. Oh, it really is. Bartlett cracking driving there from Benjamin Bartlett, who was absolutely on the edge there into the braking area for that first turn. They're out of the S's towards the hands hairpin now. And then out of there, heading towards the horseshoe. There's no gap going to appear there. It's a very fast left-hander. Two double apex left-hander. Through the very fast button right-hander. And then into top bend. Through top bend. And now the race to the first corner. Billy's blind. Sweeping left. Underneath us. Sweeping left. And then down the inside has gone Withcombe. Joshua Withcombe, he's been sizing that up for a couple of laps. It'll be the one lap to go, board next time by for Withcombe, our leader. Bartlett now settling for second. And Withcombe, he, he checked that off. He had a jobs list, just following Bartlett. He knew where it was going to come, and it all started coming out of top bend. He's going to do it again. This section of the track here, the all-important top bend, the final bend on the lap, because that's what governs your time across the line. 
and into the final lap now Bartlett leads uh, sorry Withcombe leads from Bartlett Tom and Chuck sec, uh, in third Edgecombe fourth Maxim Smith fifth Jaden Hewitt Louis Reese, Mitchell Mulvey Reese Green and it's Alex Fraser who rounds off the top ten the youngster first year in junior Rotax moved up as the mini max champion from 2022 and Alex doing a great job there keeping that number that number 55 in the top 10 but this heat has been all about the move through the field from Joshua Withcombe who acknowledges the flag with a discreet little flick of the wrist he will take the win from Benjamin Bartlett Vlad Tomanchuk loses out right there on the final lap to Billy Edgecombe who comes through in third Tomanchuk settles for fourth Maxim Smith fifth Jid Newitt sixth Louis Rees will be happy with seventh Mitchell Mulvey eighth ninth was Rees Green and then Alex Fraser rounds off the top ten outside the top ten Archie Hardiman Jack Dimbleby Frank Ward Finley Underwood Alex Dorr Presley Walker Taylor Dixon Callum, Callum Scrivens Alex Timmins Alfie Bushell rounds off the top 20 then we had Freddie Theobald Daniel Haynes Joshua Delacarta Curtis Latimer George Keir we lost Jamie Salter Will Swills and Lewin Hughes at the start of this race Cracking race that one. It's always good to see someone come through the field. And then about four different people came through the field. But of course, it's all a bit too late because Mason Perrin's kind of claimed that one, hasn't he? That championship. Yeah, he kind of has. But it's a, you know what? There's still, like I said, Nick. There's there's championship. There's personal battles going on and on down the down the field, really, down the order. Mm. Um, talking of the championship, though, this one's pretty hot. The Mini Max Championship. It's kind of coming down to two, maybe three drivers, maybe even four, with the form of Leo Basterfield in that first heat Eddie Stewart can't be discounted as well but Sebastian Corkling came into this round leading the championship by 11 points from Sonny Morgan who had a 24 point lead on uh, Zauri Veserek who had a 13 point lead on Eddie Stewart who had an 8 point lead on Leo Basterfield Max Carlton is in 6th as well Daniel Haynes who's uh, part of the championship he's moved up into juniors already as has Lucy Lovell and Daniel Parsons, not sure. Daniel Parsons, not here at all. Uh, the grid for the Mini Max, we've only got seven carts. We may only have seven carts out, but I tell you what, it's not. It might be the smallest field, but it's not small in incident and drama. Incident, accident, and excitement. Well, let's hope, hopefully, not accident, just a bit of drama will do. Uh, as long as no one gets hurt. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> bit of drama. Bit of drama. Drama llama. Zauri Viserex, our pole position holder, and he will lead the field round with Eddie Stewart alongside. Max Carlton and Jensen Cox are on row two. Leo Basterfield and Seb Corping are on row three. And then Sonny Morgan. Now, I think to remember, of course, is that the person who wins this championship will be the final mini-max champion for NKC, won't they? Because we're going into max next year. That's right. This will be the f yeah. This will be the, the the final hurrah for the mini-max class completely in, in the, the country, UK. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure that's a particularly wise move, but hey ho, you know. Carting in its wisdom, and they have sort of formed up. And then there's this cart that's out of position. I'm not quite sure how they're getting this, this seven carts wrong, but they currently are slightly. Uh, there's some confusion at the back. Oh, I see. Right now they're lining up. Right, we should be able to get these underway, shall we? They're giving it a go, but it's not the greatest start ever. I'll be honest with you now, but uh, it's a good lead for Visor Eddie Stewart in second. Visor uh, leading the move up the inside for third. From Bastafield. Bastafield. So Bastafield's yeah. taken third. And they come through the S's. That's Cox in fourth. Then Corking. Ooh, they're basically, they're all defensive there. Yeah, Eddie Stewart being very defensive there. Viserek it is that leads into the horseshoe for the first time. And side by side, alongside Eddie Stewart, goes Leo Bastafield, who seems to be on a bit of a mission this morning. That's a, that's a very good four-corner pass there for Bastafield. He stayed it around was. the outside of Stewart the whole way through and then got him... Um, on the uh, buttons turn Basterfield was hard to win he's, he's tapping his helmet he doesn't really need to because he's he's already lost Eddie Stewart and he's now on the rear bumper of the lead of Viserec behind Eddie Stewart is Max Carlton I thought that was Jensen Cox it's not it's Corking Max Carlton and, yeah, Corking and Morgan have, uh, they're, Swap they're, places, they're they? five and six they're not really making a big move into the lead goes Basterfield there yeah but significantly Sonny Morgan has gotten ahead of Sebastian Corking which Corking can't afford to do because that's going to reduce the the, the, the uh, championship deficit. He's got 11 points lead. He's going to score one more point. I mean, he can fit. Yeah, I mean, he can finish behind Sonny Morgan in every heat and final this weekend. 
Lots of scrabbling around there, including the 50 of Max Carlton was in three different positions during about a short amount of straight. Stewart was trying to think about getting back part. Kazri Vizrakek, but uh, Morgan now closing up, and there's now one cart ahead, and then five carts having a squabble over second, and second has changed. Stewart's back into second place. Yeah, great move down the inside of Vizrakek, who slots in behind, but lose that behind Vizrakek. It's Sonny Morgan. Now, he's got to bring Seb Corking through with him, and Corking's finally got by Max Garton. He's dropped off the back of Sonny Morgan there. Sonny Morgan's in the black with the black nose cone and the white uh, side pods and fairing, front fairing. He's took Corking. the sticker kit off for weight, would you believe, Nick? It doesn't surprise me. I think he, 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 some of these kids at the end of the year are getting a bit big, aren't they? Yes. He they might are. start the year the right size and the right weight, but uh, you know, a typical 12 or 13-year-old lad's going to put on a huge amount of... Uh, uh, size and weight, they get their growth spurt, and it's all going on because it looks like Vizarek and Morgan having a big battle. Morgan's got the inside line, a bit too much curve, but Vizarek kind of moves super wide. Oh, uh, yeah, slots back in. It's all gone to now. So I think both of them made a mini mistake going around the uh, horseshoe there. Well, it's, it's, it's net nothing. Stewart is a little bit ahead, but getting away now is Bassett, and he's got a, quite a nice lead, I think, at yeah, 1.8 seconds. What's the interesting bit here, though, is that orange and white LRG Motorsport cart of corking. The squabbling that Visserek and Sonny Morgan are doing at this part of the track here, the last time Bry, oh. has allowed corking along uh, to get on to... There's Sonny Morgan down the inside. Can Visserek come back like he did the last lap? He has. They're side by side, looks over his shoulder. Sonny Morgan gets through. Visserek has to slot in behind. Ahead of Visarek, Eddie Stewart in a comfortable second place. Now, Sonny Morgan, if he breaks away from Visarek, using all of the curb and more there on the outside of top bend, he wants to pull away and now get on terms with Eddie Stewart. And they've all come together, Nick. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. Second, third, fourth, fifth, You're and sixth. Running right together. You've got a leader in Basterfield who's half a second a lap faster than the squabbling uh, people and then goes Morgan up the inside into second place and Morgan now releases himself past you but no the switch back and oh. she gets back ahead again so Morgan was ahead and I think he must have just carried just a tiny bit too much they speed did. he couldn't get that uh, second part of the hairpin done he's now back behind Stuart again he's going to go up the inside of Stuart thinking about it on top bend that's a tricky place to make a move just giving time to Basterfield a, every single time it's a one-line corner through that final bend here this is where this is where he'll make his move. Oh, and there's a touch there. And that was that was utterly and utterly pointless. Mm. There was no need for that whatsoever. Sonny Morgan's got the pace. We talked to Sonny in the paddock show. And he just carried too much momentum. He's on the brakes. He's on the brakes. He can't slow the cart. He can't slow the cart. Oh, and he's going to get a penalty oh, for that. Oh, he's going to get a penalty for that. I'm pretty sure. Uh. But that's ruined Eddie Stewart's race now. Yes. Eddie will go to the back of the field. He's just ahead of Jensen Cox. Oh, we'll get, sixth. Yeah, we'll get... Look at that. Seb Corking coming back at Sonny Morgan now. I'm not sure if Sonny's going to incur the wrath of a contact penalty, but I'm not even sure his nose will have been affected by that. It was just a slight touch. A bit unfortunate, really. Yeah, but you can still get a penalty if your nose doesn't drop. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. You know, it can be assessed that's not on, and you get the penalty anyway. This is significant for the championship as Seb Corking there, right on the tail of that number 27 of Sonny Morgan. He just needs to drive around, does Seb Corking. Looks like the cart's sliding around underneath him. So Corking now at the third. He's been very, very conservative at the start of these races and then finds himself up the order and into third. Certainly did that in heat one. And here he is following Sonny Morgan round. Max Carlton is the cart behind him. Zauri Visarek just dropping slightly off the back. And Eddie Stewart, now the comeback kid, has to come back once again. Yeah, Pasterfield, yeah, we haven't mentioned him, but he's, yeah, he's gone, hasn't he? 4.3 seconds ahead. Yeah, he's gone. Every single lap they squabbled, he just gave more. Now it's the Morgan uh, versus Corking show. We said that a few times over the course of the last couple of seasons. Corking in the red and white side potted machine. The all white to save weight. That's Sonny Morgan. How much these these sticker kits weigh? Like 14 kilos? <laughs> Apparently a kilogram, they reckon. Wow. Uh, Busterfield has been a bit hot and cold all season, hasn't he? If he, mm. could have, if he could have showed this form at every round, he would have been unbeatable. I'm not sure whether this is his local track or something, but his track knowledge here, his, his pace is phenomenal. Max Carlton, fastest lap of the race last time by there, 36-7. Um, and Max is down in uh, in fourth place, um, but personal best lap times every lap from all of these drivers. So they haven't, they're not pacing themselves. They're pushing every single lap. Yeah, been a big fade from uh, Kazari Vizicek, who has had a, had a couple of 
stunning individual races where he just disappeared off in the fi- into the into the distance. Isn't it? I remember doing it. Wilton, he just just won it easily. And, and, and but he's yeah. Again, I suppose this is the whole point about you know Mini Max and the, and you're learning. So you know some of the, some of the drivers are more finished articles than others, but some will go blow hot and cold, and they need to learn why they're hot and why they're cold, and, and they'll be able be yeah, able true, to. True work out how they can make themselves you know, hot <laughs> yeah. as much as possible. They're really children, aren't they? Yeah, yes. but the problem is they're very talented children they, and they're very committed children. So it's all a bit kind of like, yeah, yeah what can you do? Bassifer about across the line. A little minute to go. And let's see if it's Lewis. 4.4 last. I don't, think they, they, I don't know whether they're beginning to peg him back by 100. No, they lost another tenth. So he, Bassifer is the fastest driver at every stage of this race. Yeah, another fastest lap there on lap 11 from Bassifer, 36.6 as he extends that lead to 4.7 seconds. Behind, though, this has been the way for the last at least three or four laps with Sonny Morgan, Sebastian Corking and Max Carlton sitting on the rear bumper there, the number 15, the black nose cone, sitting on the rear bumper there of the, the red <laughs> and white livery of the LRG Motorsport entry, 52 of Seb Corking. Sporting his uh, relatively new helmet. He destroyed a helmet at Mansell, didn't he? And mm. then... He brought that one out at the previous round at fullback. Is uh, another Vettel tribute helmet with a bit of Red Bull stripage as well. How much tribute does Vettel need? Can well, I just say how fantastic was the uh, Gasly tribute helmet? Oh, fabulous. In F1, yeah, Francois fabulous. Francois Sivert, 50 years past, 50 years of, yeah. um, past at the USGP in Watkins Glen in what would end up being not Jackie Stewart's last race. That's right. Yeah, that's he why Jackie start. Stewart finished on 99 Grand Prix and not 100. Francois Sivert, one of France's most promising drivers 50 years ago, though. These youngsters, these youngsters' parents were probably probably not. didn't know him. Yeah, probably uh-huh. weren't alive at the time. Yeah, I mean, just yeah. interesting. interesting just talking about that, the three drivers, uh, Alex Albon, uh, George Russell, uh, and um, Charles Leclerc, all celebrated their hundredth Grand Prix this week. I know, I found and that incredible. You know, Jackie Stewart did his entire career, three world championships, ever several. I mean, there were some seasons where there were like nine Grand Prix, weren't there? So it's um, quite easy to get a hundred. You know, by end of the seventies, it was sixteen rounds across the across the year, starting in March and ending in October. And about to come over the line, <coughs> winning the Clay Pigeon Heat two. It's Leo Basterfield, big win, big points. Now second place on the track is Morgan. Third is Corking. Fourth is Cart. Now we're not um, marshals. We're not judges stewards. of fact. We're not stewards. I would probably be thinking about having a chat with Sonny about that. Um, but, you know, there are levels of acceptable contact and it wasn't deliberate. It was a mistake. So that's fine, really, isn't it? It's all about things that aren't deliberate. And that is the result. So Leo Basterfield wins this one. Sonny Morgan second. Seb Corking is in third. Max Carlton is fourth. Kazuri Vizek is in fifth. Eddie Stewart, very unlucky to be down in sixth. And Jensen Cox in seventh. And that was Mini Max Heat that, 2. That is a very significant result. Um, and we'll wait for clarification on if, if anything happens. The results the results that we called, Nick, are all provisional. Yes, Because the cards yeah. have to go through tech, tech, uh, um, technical inspection and scrutineering. And then there are you know penalties applied for whatever the stewards and the observers have seen. Yep. So they're very, very much uh, provisional. So next up... Will be as Joe chokes on his drink again. Oh, he's got the wrong page. I don't know what's next up. <laughs> it's Rotax Senior Racing Heat 3. I'm, I'm not in charge of any of the paperwork. switch me on now. I'm not in charge of any of the paperwork. Joe, Joe is suffering from the backside of a cold, aren't you? Yes. You know, coughing and sputtering occasions. So I called it off you on an uh, aeroplane no back you, from America no last didn't. weekend. I did. You didn't. I absolutely did. Well, we, I don't remember us in having any sort of. He may have caught in the in the car on the way there. That's possible. Who knows? Anyway, right, so senior... Oh, well, this is interesting because Phil Howarth is on the front row. He hasn't finished the first two races. Yes, he's going to maximise this, isn't he, is Phil? So, pole is Alex... Jo- J- uh, blah, 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 blah. Pole is Alex Jackson. Second is Phil Howarth. Third is Adam Rogers, who's a master. And Carl Dunford in four. Ari Barker in fifth. Gracie Davis in sixth. Aidan Pomeroy in seventh. Charlie Walsh in eighth. Marcus King in ninth. Rob Statham is tenth. Sam White, eleventh. Braden Hill, twelfth. John Hobbs and Sam Elliott are row 7. Ollie Varney and Ethan White row 8. Jodie Fox and James Becker row 9. Matthew Lambert and Scott Russell row 10. Rhys Pope and Kieran Gifford are row 11. Kieran Gifford, the O-plate man, of course. Then Lewis Berry and Liam Dublin in 12 on row 12. Ashton French and Lewis Ball are row 13. Ben Harper and Jake Davis are row 14. Tommy Lee Davis and Joe Bowden are row 15. Row 16 is uh, Alex Warnerby and Luke Evans. And row 17, all on his own, on his last ever race meeting, 
is Paul Lazan. Yeah, because Paul's That's not because he's slow, it's because he pulled a bad ball out of the bag. And he's announced his retirement. Uh, more of that in the paddock show coming up at the lunch break. Championship, Oli Varney leads by 14 points from Kyle Dunford. Two points behind are both Finley Watson and Bobby Rosier. And then a further eight points, Charlie Walsh. Adam Rogers leading Masters from Paul Ozan by a, a margin of 41 points. Here we are, every single heat and final score points towards the championship. And Ooh. Philip Howarth leads from Straight across, wasn't that he? second place. Yeah, it's his, uh, it's his home tra track, this one, Clay Pigeon. This is where he first started, did not, Philip Howarth. And look, at he's checked out already. He's gone. Well, he's going to make up for his two non-perfected DNFs. He has. He's not he treating has. well so far. But you see what happened in the second race. Fuel pump failure took him out in the first race. There's two bright orange carts from the same team. The one's 66, I think that is. So Carl Dunford's gone from fourth to second. And I'm just trying to think Alex Jackson has dropped down to third place from the lead as he crossed the line. Well, Kyle Howarth Dunford is miles ahead. Kyle Dunford, this is great for his championship. Came into this round in second. And Kyle Dunford and his teammate Alex Jackson is that? It is, yep. And then behind them is the seven of Adam Rogers. So they are as they are on the screen. No big changes around the bottom bend in the last heat. A little bit of a thinking about changing of position round Hans Hairpin, but it didn't happen. Oh, at the inside goes the seven. Beautiful move by Adam Rogers. Kind of didn't really ask and wasn't invited, but still went through. Carrying the number seven is Adam because he was seventh in this championship last year. So a seeded driver, top ten seeded drivers, carrying number one to ten. You don't have to take a number, do you? You, you don't see? have to. Yeah, it helps our cause. Yes, gives us something to talk about. Massively. So please, if you're seeded, please use your number in the next. You should be proud of that. Yeah. Top ten finish in the championship. You should wear that number very proudly. Well, more. Adam Rogers now right on the rear bumper. The flex driver oh, down well, the inside. Two in a row he's done that. Yeah. He's got a huge, impressive drive coming out of the hairpin. He's gone up through both the uh, the orange cards. I assume are from the same team and therefore set up in the same way with the same motors. I also think that you're in two minds through the horseshoe. It's the late apex. You missed the first left-hand apex and hit the second one. So it gives you a late entry. Oh, Dun come back. Dunford backs at, back at him. Back at him into the first turn. And now through the S's, Cal Dunford back into second place. Something. Philip Howarth has still got four seconds. Look at that. He's already coming out the hand hairpin as the rest of the field go into it. Yeah, This is, is not over, though, for second, is it? No, I mean, I think for first it is, unless the field breaks down again. So he's going to probably... This is probably going to catapult him all the way to like the back to the middle of the uh, the main final. Little break now for second has been achieved. Nice break for second, because what's happened, I think, is that Jack Rogers has had a problem. He's dropped down to fourth. So there's a nice break there for second in Dunford so it's Jackson and Rogers now who kind of third and fourth where it's really happening Dunford on the Zenon chassis thanks to Guys Bury for clearing that one the orange livery of that Zenon chassis for both Dunford and Jackson Adam Rogers now behind that orange and black of Alex Jackson but again he's going to have to make a move because Braden Hill is the driver behind him and we know how quick Braden Hill is across yeah. the line. No change. Braden Hill alongside, but he's got the outside line into that Billy's bend. And he has to relinquish that. But down to behind both of those drivers has gone the 47, Alex Jackson. He got hung out to dry on the outside of the first turn. Oh. And it's like M25 coming towards you, isn't it? It was Rogers and Hill who went through, Nick. Yeah. On there. Howarth now is leading by... 4.3 light years 5.3 seconds it's 4.3 light years uh, he's crossed the line just underneath us right now when he's the second place man you can just see him there flashing through the orange helmet and you know what purple purple lap time for him as well fastest lap of the race 35 1 so he's not he's got he's got a lead he's got a huge lead but he's not hanging about he's extending the lead every lap it's yeah. out to 5.7 now uh, Braden Hill he's in the car that looks pink on this screen by the time it's you kind of mix its light red and white stripes together it's got a kind of pinkish hue it's actually grey it's grey and red actually it's grey and orange grey and orange but it ends up looking pink the Braden Hill machine that 35 car there and the car there just ahead of the 95 of Matthew Lamb but fourth and fifth is in the third ahead of Adam Rogers they kind of had a quite an eventful race already yeah now we've got Adam Rogers bringing a, 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 create a bit of breathing Ooh. space as down the inside has gone Matthew Lambert Matthew Lambert on the 95 there, ahead of Braden Hill. Yeah. 
taking these none two, of that rubbish though, was he? Straight they knew each, through. They knew each other so well as well, and it was a very clean move. There's all sorts of racing going on out the window yeah. Nick, down this field. Cannot keep a tab on that at all. Now you have to concentrate on one thing because there are 17 others going on. So we tend to we'll stick at the stuff that's nearest the front because it has the most influence on the points overall. Yeah. Philip Howarth has six seconds gap now to Kyle Dunford. 6.3 to be exact. And now, and now, oh, and Lambert thought about going up through Rogers, but Rogers had left about a third and a half of a cart and not a whole cart. And I think they've already seen that you can't break on the on the grass. But now looking to get up the inside, he does it. He's up the inside. Can he hard make it stick? He got a little block pass in the middle though, and he has made it stick. Yeah, I think I think that was the number seven. Adam Rogers getting a little bit wide coming out of the S's. That allowed Matthew Lambert to get alongside into the breaking area for the hand hair. But now that's done. The de the deal is done. By the time they're coming through the final bend here at top bend and across the line, it's Matthew Lambert who will show in third place. Ahead of them, though, Kyle Dunford still second, and Philip Howarth now extending the gap to 6.5 at the line. But the battle is very much still on for this third, fourth, and fifth place. Yeah, Braden here looking quite racy, but yeah, he's been in that position before. He now tracking Rogers. Got yellow flags flying at the hand hairpin. That's been the passing place of choice for most of this meeting so far so that one is uh, that little avenue of opportunity is now bricked That's off Ethan White I think has gone off the 65 car okay so second third and fourth blue and white yellowy and of course the orange and grey at the 35 of Braden Hill he's looking left he's looking right he's thinking about what he can do about the seven and the answer is not very much at the moment as Rogers continues to just hold position. In many ways, the 66, which is Dunford, who's in the orange helmet, you just see in the corner of the, of the shot as we come around in a second. He's man, managed to maintain an equidistant gap to Lambert, who stormed through the rest of the field, but hasn't really got any further since. And, and, and even bending right down out of the slip is doing him no good. Yeah, you need more than that. You need another one and a half brake horsepower, maybe. That might help. But Braden Hill is coming, and there's plenty of time. One minute and ten seconds on the clock. Plenty of time here at Clear Pigeon to get that done. Plenty of opportunity. Still the yellow flag flies while we recover that cart. So the hand hairpin is not somewhere where you might want to have a challenge. So they're going to have to behave themselves there. And through the horseshoe and button bend, Adam Rogers pulls out a bit of a gap. You know Adam Rogers is the, the chap that won the Dad and Mechanics race at oh, yeah, Mill. Yeah, yeah. That's not fair. Yeah, a bit of a cheat, really. Yeah. Number so, seven in the there, championship. There was something interesting I saw from uh, Louis. Did you see Louis Large was trying to sell some of his kit that he won the O-plate with? Yes. And he actually said, yeah, he's got, he said in the engine, the engine's doing 31.5 horsepower. And I had no idea what these engines do. Yeah, no. Apparently 31 and a half is, is very good. Yes. What happened there? Some lappery went on there. Sorry, I missed that for a second. We were talking about engines, which made me very excited. Uh, man gets too excited about engines. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, so the people ask what sort of horsepower these. That's the same for the senior Rotax and the 177. So it's about 31, 32 horsepower is a good engine. But also it's flexible as well, which is interesting because two, a two-stroke racing at the inside. And that's second place gone. Lambert's taken Dunford on the penultimate lap. Um, a good two-stroke engine. The old, the old the, the days when they used to have 125 um, sort of race bikes. So a two-stroke 125 race bike was doing 48 horsepower. Forget that. Our first family car was an Austin near 40, and that had 45 horsepower. Yeah, good point. Yeah. Think about that. That doesn't. It's, it's six, 162 kilograms. Oh, they're quick, and they have. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There's no doubt. Massive these performance. Things know what they're doing, and obviously you go in the gearbox to be even faster. But here we go, flying round the bottom bend for what is the final time. Phil Howard is leading by 2.3 parsecs in uh, Star Trek terms. He's already. Um, exited the uh, the hairpin going around the horseshoe. Second, third, third and fourth are where we're with, though, as they streak in a, in a row. Yeah, sorry, Phil. We're just getting a glimpse of you for the first time. You've been in, a, in another race completely here as you're going to take a win in your third and final heat, which is no consolation to two very bad heats, a retirement in one and, and finished at the back of the other as the rest of the field come through. How has it settled down, then? Ooh. Right close on the line there as Matthew Lambert finally got by Kyle Dunford to take second place. Dunford left in third. It was the number seven of Adam Rogers. The old plate holder, Kieran Gifford, fifth. Braden Hill, sixth. John Hobbs, seventh. Sam Wyatt was eighth. Ari Barker, ninth. Sam Elliott rounded off the top ten. The ST driver, Charlie Walsh, eleventh. Marcus King from LRG was twelfth. 
Rhys Pub 13th, and then we had Championship leader coming into this round, Oli Varney finishing 14th. Lewis Berry was 15th, then we had Lewis Ball, Alex Jackson, Ben Harper, Jake Davis, Paul Lausanne. The number five was in 20th spot. Alex Warnerby, Aidan Pomeroy, Tommy Lee Davis, Scott Russell, James Becker, Grace Lee Davis, and then Jody Fox finished 27th. Rob Statham a lap down. We lost Ethan Wyatt, as you mentioned, uh, Nick, on lap eight, and we lost Joel Bowden on lap number two. We have got another good race, though. Another three heats before the lunch break. We've got a very interesting... Paul's not going to die before then. We've got a... Me too. We've got a very interesting uh, paddock show for you. We've got Paul Lazan announcing his retirement after, what, 40 years in the sport? A long time. He spoke about his uh, his Formula Renault days. He won the scholarship, went to the Winfield School, won the scholarship, Super 1 champion. He's done it all as Paul. And he's... I think he's he's staying in the paddock as a... He's retiring from driving. Right, yes. But he's going to run Paul Lausanne Racing, the gold chassis, still the dealer for them. Um, and you know what? He could even well be tempted back to do some KZ racing. And yeah, probably end up with the mechanics race. KZ, <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. KZs are going to be on the on the card for what some of our races next year. We're going to be every round apart from this one, I think. Is it really? I that's, thought that's, it was only three. I don't know. It's a All good right, question, we'll clarify that. We might see Paul Lausanne <laughs> being tempted, tempted out to run in a gearbox class. We'll see. Uh, senior TKM are out next for their second heat. This was a cracking race in the first heat. More of the same, please, from the TKM runners. Uh, Gordon Smith on the pole with Ryan Layton alongside. Then we've got Leo Crabtree and Mitchell Ball. Ollie Milner and Jason Lovett are on row three. Row four is Will Cregeen and James King. We've got Matthew Temple Purcell and Molly Nicol- Nicholas Biles on row five. Row six is Ben Watson and Alexander Lehman. Joseph Jakes and Louis Bevan. Louis Bevan on row seven. Row eight is Cannon Lamont and Matthew Houghton. Tom Johnson and Chris Whiteside are on row nine. Charlie King, championship leader, down in 19th on row 10 with Matt Slate alongside. And then rounding off the 22 cart field, James Workman and James Hull. Is this just kind of not in here? Next year's, yeah, yeah. Keep going. Keep going. All right. So we've got them out on track. Now we expect the TKMs to get at least two laps. They didn't the last heat. Yeah, they off, didn't, they? yeah. yeah. They, they were showing off, off getting themselves all, all collected and together and uh, and ready to start. And they're looking like they're about to do mm, the same. I don't know. There's a bit of a kind no. of a straggle at the moment. It's going to need a bit of a, a hurry up from the uh, 48 car of James Hull. Oh, no. No, they're looking better. They're looking better. There's a, no, they're there's all a formed. meandering smoke screen going round the, uh, the top bend here. They're all formed up and ready. We can get these underway. I'm, pr- I'm pretty sure Bruce, our clerk, the course, will be happy. Uh, the smoky two strokes of the TKM air cooled motors, the 115cc engines. Here we go. Fire up and away at the start, and it's almost three wide there at a point there towards the first corner of Billy's uh, blind. Right. I think Ryan Layton got the whole shot. He did. He just kind of came across on Gordon Smith. I'm not overly sure about the pole position side of this track, to be honest, but. You know. Yeah, it is debatable here at Clear Pigeon whether Paul should be on the right or the left. I can it's certainly... hard to get in because he, he'll have a well, I, was a, I was asking Louis Large about this. We were talking about this yesterday, and uh, invariably the person on the second spot will get round the outside of Billy, Billy's blind. Here we go. That's number 61, Ryan Layton, who did start in second, kind of confirms that theory. It's number 15 of Gordon Smith slotting in behind him, but it's going to be three wide going into Billy's blind with the... Number two of Mitchell Ball there, down the inside, coming out, no change. It's about three lines option yeah. through that corner, none of which kind of disadvantage you. Oh, that's a great move up the yeah. inside. Inside of Hans Hair, now, we've got a change for the lead. Has the lead? It has. It's now the 15. And then Robert Mitchell Ball going around the outside trying to take the second. Mitchell Ball is in the lead. He's got it back through the, the right-hand switchback of buttons. And he's taken these. Here. Balls come through brilliantly from third into the lead. Big loser there, Ryan Layton. Second place over the line, Gordon Smith. Layton Smith has backed Ryan Layton down to sixth place. Ball, Smith, Crabtree, Milner, Cregeen, Layton, Temple Purcell, Watson, James King, Charlie King, championship leader, up to 10th already from the back of the field. Yeah, and Callum Lamont, our winner of the last heat, had a bad, bad lap. He's down in 20th and in 21st and last is our leader. Leader? Our le- championship winner, sorry. Number oh, one right, current champion, yeah. Number, number one, yeah. He's had, a, he's had a nightmare, hasn't he? 
but it's Mitchell Ball, his teammate, has been the number two for the last two seasons as well. Louis Bevan and Mitchell Ball, it's been their show for the last two seasons. It's a little bit different because it's Charlie King who's moving up the order and already up to ninth. And he will not stop at ninth. He's got Ryan Leighton and Ben Watson ahead of him as the field pour into the hand hairpin and out of the hand hairpin towards the horseshoe. Louis Ball, Louis Bevan still at the back of the field. Mitchell Ball leads though and already pulling a bit of a gap. There's the battle for second behind. It's Mitchell Ball in the yellow and white and blue and then alongside has gone Crabtree down the inside of Gordon Smith. He's made it stick before the breaking area for turn one. Billy's blind there. Very tricky. Leo Crabtree up to second. And the number 15 of Gordon Smith forces Ollie Milner wide. Ollie Milner trying to get round the outside the second part of the essence. There's just no way you can get round there. And very, very quickly run out of room. There's the 95 of Ben Watson just coming through the horseshoe. So Ben Watson as Matthew Temple Purcell and Charlie King. Charlie King on the number 26. Where is Charlie King? I've lost sight of him now. Let's see as they come through. Charlie King's up to sixth already behind Will Cregeen on the 84. So he's there right on the bumper of the 84 towards the hand hairpin. Turning right. Slightly downhill entry into that corner and then it goes uphill as you come out of it. Already into and out of the final two turns is Mitchell Ball with about half distance in this heat. As we continue on then, Mitchell Ball leads. There's the battle we were talking about as the number 84 of Will Cregeen down the inside or not as Charlie King moves through and takes another couple of places Charlie King on the number 26 there in the green helmet has moved up the order once more and he will come across the line ahead of the number 84 of Will Cregeen and I believe Gordon Smith as well the number 15 is in there there's the leader there's second place Leo Crabtree then Ben Watson this is Charlie King here, the number 26, current championship leader. The green helmet, and it's Will Cregeen and Gordon Smith behind. Ollie Milner in seventh, Alexander Lehman eighth, Tom Johnson and Joseph Jakes rounding off that top ten. That second place cart there, the number 44. And then just behind him is Ben Watson on the 95. And then the man on the move is very much Charlie King. Now, Ben Watson on that 95 will try as hard as he can to stay with it. Two and a half minutes remaining then. Mitchell Ball comes out of the final turn. The rest of the field do so behind him. Leo Crabtree on the 44. Ben Watson catching Crabtree ever so slightly. And behind them, the 42 of Tom Johnson there moving through. And trying to get ahead of Ollie Milner into the hand hairpin. So getting towards the final stages of this second heat for senior TKMs. Mitchell Ball has got a lead of, well it was 1.6 last time by. Let's see where it is this time by. It still is 1.6 so it stays the same. Charlie King is still chasing the field down. He's reduced the gap to Ben Watson in third to 1.5. Will Cregeen dropping off the tail of him to want the extent of 1.2. And as we get inside the final 90 seconds, there's a challenge. The 35 is that, the 35 of...
sorry 95 that's Ben Watson getting ahead of Leo Crabtree on that lap so Ben Watson with a gap of 2.6 to the leader Ben Watson I think has not got enough time to close the gap having got by Leo Crabtree who was very shortly going to have Charlie King right on his tail there's Ben Watson there's Crabtree there's Charlie King both Ben Watson and Charlie King from the Klassen team and will be working together they're on the Klassen cart remember here they come then still plenty of time nice move up the inside Charlie King's ahead of Crabtree so that's Charlie King now ahead of Crabtree on the 26 lovely move up the inside Nick but, yep. and we'll chase his teammate down but ball in the lead that's giving him a nice point swing isn't it yeah it's gonna yeah I mean you get an extra you get two points over the second place don't Char you? Charlie King finishing not that far behind in third door it's three points is this drop at the moment He's damage limitation yeah, yeah. So they're gonna be what three apart now because they were down to six weren't they we had a three apart. Yeah, yeah, there's only seven go seven points difference. Six at the end of this game to this one because he gained a point back last time. So and they're on the final lap, that's for sure. Quite convenient they'd be in the same heat. <laughs> well, they always will be. Good point because there's no, <laughs> yes, there's no yeah. spare heat in the game. Yeah, I love no. the way. I wish we had a a, 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 a um, booth cam to see how smug you were when you told me that. <laughs> <laughs> that's a first. Check it flag then, and Mitchell Ball takes the second heat for the senior TKMs. Ben Watson second, Charlie King third. So damage limitation on championship positions there from Charlie King. Leah Crabtree fourth, Tom Johnson fifth, Will Cregeen sixth, Ollie Milner seventh, eight was Alexander Lehman, Gordon Smith ninth, Matthew Horton rounded off the top ten. Then we had Callan Lamont, Matt Slate, Joseph Jakes, James Hull, Molly Nicholas Biles, Louis Bevan made his way from the back of the field up into 16th. Matthew Temple Purcell was 17th. And then we had Chris Whiteside, James Workman, James King, and Ryan Layton. Once again, no retirements in the TKM field. It's the penultimate heat before the lunch break. That's how I'm going to uh, call this one. It's the Rotax 177s back out for the third time we've seen 177s. Uh, each we've got some heats oh, to come okay. senior road tax 177s mini max and Joe's senior tkm after else. the um after the lunch break um we'll see them finalize their positions for the grids for the finals but right now two more heats to go before we go for a very short break and it's 177s out on track very shortly Let's have a look at the grid because we're going to have very little time to do that, as ever. Brendan Smith will start on the pole position with Dan Millward alongside. Harry Wainwright, championship leader. I'm not sure if uh, Harry is still leading the championship after the first heat, but we'll, uh, we'll wait and see. We're going to try and get an overview going into the finals of how the championship looks after the heat here at Clear Pigeon. Um, Will Wren, our timekeeper, as, uh, is going to work feverishly at trying to bring us an up-to-date situation going into the finals. So for now, Harry Wainwright came into this uh, this one uh, as the championship leader in Rotax 177s. It's his last race. He's going to have a break from karting. He's going off to college to train uh, on a motorsport mechanics course. He's wanting a job in motorsport. He's only young still. He's only 16. We see in the lunch break, you'll see a, a lovely little interview that we did with... Uh, with Harry, um, he's uh, he's continuing to grow. He's about six foot fourteen now, and and is not stopping growing. So we uh, we wish Harry all the very best, and hopefully he has uh, the rest of his day is fantastic, and he enjoys his last day karting for a little while. He's only sixteen. We're going to see him back in some sort of motorsport, I would imagine, in the future. Alongside Harry on on the second row is Lawrence Hilton. With row three, Harrison Crook and Charlie Jowers, Jason Bear and Tyler Kelsey on row four. Row five is Alfie Williams and Steve Stewart. Alan Cook and Oliver Moss are row six. Cole Edwards and Matt Zanetti are on row seven. Then James Frost and Carl Bryant row eight. 
They've got Thomas Dora, Scott Smith, Richard Evans, Stuart Baker, Reese Llewellyn, Dan Fleckney, Zach Bolton is back out alongside Scott Clear on row 12. Then we've got Dan Milner, Steve Gilly, Tim Darlow, Michael Mallett, Ben Hitch, Ryan Taylor Truman, Ben Johnson, Paul Moran, Aidan Hammond, and Patrick Williams, Rohaj round off the 28 cart, uh, 34 cart field, I should say. Um, we've got 34 carts on the sheet. Uh, we've got 31 carts, have we? 32 carts have come out to play in this, the third heat for 177s. Another great job, this time the responsibility of Brendan Smith to bring the field round in some sort of orderly fashion and he does so in fine style and I think we're going to get this away the starter was happy and we are indeed racing 8 minutes and 1 lap then for this the Rotax 177 30 teammates going round the outside of one another and into the S's we'll find out as they come towards us just who it is that has pinched that one The field barreling into the hand hairpin. And it's the number 72 of Harrison Crook, who started on the second row. In fact, in fact, he started fifth on the third row. Harrison Crook finds his way through and will lead across the line for the first time. That's the field streaming through. Harrison Crook, Harry Wainwright. Moves up into second. Lawrence Hilton, Dan Millward, Charlie Jowers, Jason Bear sixth. Tyler Kelsey, Alfie Williams, Alan Cook, and it's Steve Stewart rounding off the top ten. So that the tall figure of Harry Wayne right there, the 16-year-old, moved up early into seniors, senior 162, because he was getting too tall. And then very quickly had to move into the 177 category because he was getting too oh. even taller and bigger. And now he's quite a, got quite a set of shoulders on the young lad. Hopefully see him in motorsport somewhere. Great battles going on just behind the two leaders for third. Got uh, quite a kerfuffle there. Sorted itself out out of the S's and down towards the hand hairpin. Lawrence Hilton, Dan Millward, Charlie Jowes and Jason Bear amongst those four. Meanwhile, it's Harrison Crook leading. Harry Wainwright in second there. But very quickly, the number 10 of Lawrence Hilton is going to be, or is he, going to be on the rear bumper of Harry Wainwright very soon. Incident down the field. Mm. Everybody oh, yeah. regains, so no no possibility of any delays in these proceedings. Six minutes to go. Yeah, good good break in the initiative by Harrison Cook there. Wainwright and Hilton now getting ready for a battle, but it's not quite come together as fast as you may have thought as they move into the hand hairpin, which is no longer a silhouette, and now it's actually a shot where you can see the colours of the, colours of the car tyres as the yeah, sun moves round. We knew You've lost sun. your arty shot. I'm sorry, Joe. Yeah, we knew the sun oh, would, uh, would that move. that was too much, too much from Wayne right around the corner. He's had the tail right out and lost at least two tenths of a second. Okay, they come then across the line. The gap to Wainwright from Crook was 1.4. It's now 1.7 as Harry Wainwright will definitely be aware of the presence of Lawrence Hilton. Hilton now, the number 10, finished 10th in the championship last year, seeded driver, is now right on the bumper of Harry Wainwright. And Harry, he's got a lot of experience in karting there, just using his weight to get the rear axle to uh, lift, to release that rear axle from binding up and reducing power. I'll explain more of that technicality later. But here he is, Lawrence Hilton. Can he get onto that rear bumper? He's not quite enough. He hasn't quite enough, Nick, to get onto the rear bumper and maybe put himself in a position. No, it's, it's uh, pushing the whole way. He took a lot of curve there through the first part of the S's as well. Now way out wide for the hairpin, and he's lost himself, what, half a second almost there? Yeah, almost. Yeah, he went really wide, didn't he? And he's lost what it, well, he was about to mount a challenge. Now he's dropped back off the bumper of Wainwright. And Wainwright, who is not absolutely aware... He hasn't looked round yet, as even once as Harry. You kind of get the feeling of somebody behind you because you can hear their engine note as well. So you get a feeling of the, the presence of a, of, a, of a cart being right on your tail. And Harry Wainwright's got a, a chance to breathe a little as we hit half distance in this third heat for 177s. The sun still shining through the cloud here at Clear Pigeon. 
Had some terrible weather as Storm Babbitt has blew through. And thankfully the gods are with us and give us an absolutely gorgeous day. Gorgeous autumnal day here in the south of England. Just between Dorchester and Yeovil geographically. The clay pigeon track has been here since the 1950s. We've been racing national championships here since the 70s. And it's always been on the calendar for all the big events. And none more bigger than the NKC here this year. We kicked the 2024 season for the NKC off here at Clay Pigeon. We come back here in April, so we finish here and then start again in 24 right here. And what you see now, this is the type of racing we'll have going forward into 2024. Get your entries in. If you're watching this back at home, get your entries in nice and early. You don't want to be disappointed because the popularity of the NKC continues to grow. As this battle now comes back together, Harry Wainwright, Lawrence Hilton. Lawrence Hilton slid wide, didn't he, and dropped off. Harry Wainwright had a bit of a cushion. And now we see them coming through. Out of the horseshoe. Wait for them to come across the line. There's the leader, Harrison Crook. Here comes that second place battle there. Harry Wainwright, Lawrence Hilton. And now joining in is Alfie Williams. Alfie Williams is looking like he's about to join in with the fun of that battle for second place. The hand hairpin, the right-hander, out of there and towards us, straight towards us, at, towards the horseshoe. And Alfie Williams through. Alfie Williams is through on Lawrence Hilton. So a change of position for that third place. And now Harry Wainwright has somebody else to contend with. Harry Wainwright as Alfie Williams. There's a leader through. Who's going to be next? It still is Wainwright. And Alfie Williams is now the car down the inside. Alfie Williams has got the position. So a change for second place as Alfie Williams goes through in the 96. With now Harry Wainwright just edging out of the, uh, out of the seat there to get the engine to pick up out of the S's. So Harry Wainwright resumes that battle with Lawrence Hilton. But now it's for third and fourth. Because Alfie Williams has come through with a cracking drive. Here they come then, across the line. And look at the gap he's pulled. Alfie Williams. Alfie Williams, one of the fastest drivers on the track. Fastest lap of the race so far. Stuart Baker in fifth with a 35-1. The top ten is Harrison Crook, Alfie Williams, Harry Wainwright, Lawrence Hilton, Stuart Baker, Charlie Jowers, Tyler Kelsey, Matt Zanetti, Jason Bear, and Carl Bryant. Carl Bryant into the top ten. Carl Bryant, whose day job is working in motorsport, working in the world of sports car racing, TF Sport, running the Aston Martins in the World Endurance Championship and other series. There's a move for the 58, Stuart Baker, down the inside of Harry Wainwright. What's happened to Harry Wainwright? Is it a tyre issue? Because all of a sudden, Harry Wainwright has lost all of his pace and has now found himself behind Lawrence Hilton and Stuart Baker. Now the question is, can Charlie Jowers behind Harry Wayne right now? How, just how off has Harry Wayne right set up gone? And it is, he's lost another one. Or is that him coming back at him? Harry Wayne right coming back at Stuart Baker. He's not happy, is he? So it's going to be one more lap for the leaders. And now, as these two cross the line. Oh, and there he comes back. Stuart Baker back at Harry Wayne right. Wainwright slots in behind the 58 through the S's and on that short burst run down towards the hand hairpin Harrison Crook already already on his way towards the chequered flag as Alfie Williams of just under four seconds behind and then Lawrence Hilton in third but it looks like Stuart Baker has settled that one as the chequered flag flies Last lap board still showing out. Where's where's my leader, Harrison Crook? I've been so focused on that battle between Harry Wainwright and Stuart Baker. The 72 out there on the circuit is just coming through the horseshoe for the final time. Into buttons. And then into the final bend here, top bend. And we'll come across the line to take the chequered flag. Flying now. 
Checkered flag is hung out. There's the winner, Harrison Crook. Alfie Williams will take second place. And then side by side across the line is Dan Milner, Milner and Matt Zanetti. Absolutely nothing in that. But just rounding off and clarifying our leaderboard. Harrison Crook takes the win. Alfie Williams second. Stuart Baker third. Lawrence Hilton fourth. Harry Wainwright fifth. Dan Milner sixth. Seventh is Matt Zanetti. Tyler Kelsey is eighth. Ninth is Charlie Jowers. Carl Brighton is tenth. And then... And then Richard Evans, 11th. And then behind Richard Evans, James Frost, Ryan Taylor Truman, Jason Bear, Ben Johnson, Scott Smith, Scott Clee, Rhys Llewellyn, Patrick williams Raj, Dan Millwood, Zach Bolton, Steve Stewart, Tim Darlow, Ben Hitch, Steve Gilly, Aidan Hammond, Dan Fleckney, Paul Moran finishes 28th. And then we had Oliver Moss, Alan Cook, Cole Edwards finished on lap 13. And we lost Michael Mallett on lap 9. Now then, I'd like to welcome into the commentary booth one of our driver commentators, Eddie Stewart. Eddie Stewart, is, you've done this before, haven't you, Ed? O-play, yeah. It was the O-play, was it, at Wilton Mill? Yeah, the O-play. Right, OK, brilliant. So you uh, had one of those heats again, mate, in that second heat for you. Um, I've called you the comeback kid many times, haven't I? You had to do that. That was a bit unfortunate, that, though. You just got a nudge from Sonny. That put you into a spin, didn't you? Yeah, it was a small nudge, but it was enough just to um, put me off. Yeah, well, you spun out, didn't you? You, you, yeah. you were a passenger at that point, weren't you? I couldn't do much about it. Yeah. Um, so, all right, you've got to put that behind you now, haven't you? And just go out and race in the third heat and then, then on into the final. Is that where your head is now? Yeah, just head on to the final and just see what place we can get in the final. Yeah, because that's what it's all about. Uh, have you thought, what what's your plans for 2024? It's, a, it's the end of the Minimax uh, formula. Here in the NKC, they move to Inter. Are you are you move Are you old enough to move to juniors? Yeah, so we're going into juniors next year. Probably doing NKC, maybe Excellent. Super One. Um, right, but definitely juniors. Well, Super One's over by August, so you can do the NKC and Super One, can't you? Could do, yeah. There's plenty of <laughs> plenty of uh, months of racing after Super One finishes in August. Yeah. Um, so that's good. It'd be good to see you in junior. And I, I hear that you had a blast out on a junior recently. Yeah, it was a lot quicker. <laughs> was that here, a clear? Yeah, it was here. Right, because this is your home track, isn't it? It's the closest, yeah. Yes. So what was it like then? What, what's the? So give our viewers an idea. We've got we've got the junior. Um, have we got juniors coming out next? We have. So junior and mini max. It's the same engine. It's the same car, isn't it? Same tyres, but the engines on the on your mini max is uh, uh, restricted slightly, so there's less power. Did you notice the increase in power on the junior max? You can notice it down the straights, but not so much at the corners. Sometimes in the mini, you can catch at the corners. Yes. Um, on the straights, though, it's a lot faster and you can notice it. Does the engine just keep on pulling then because the air restrictor on the mini max is that it's doing that, it's doing that job, isn't it? It's stopping it uh, revving too high. When I was in the um, junior, I, um, I only put I half throttle on because I, I, was, I was thinking um, <laughs> the same as the mini, but no, it's more. Really? Yeah. Really, that's interesting. Right, we've got junior Rotex. Do you want to have a read of the grid down? You want to read the grid down, Ed? So, because Eddie's going to stay in the booth with us and, and do that. So, starting from pole position, let's have a look at the grid for juniors. Pole position, Daniel Davies from Freddie Warlock, then Lucy Lovell, George Kay, Will Swales, Taylor Dixon, Alfie Bushell, Rise Green, Benjamin Bartlett, Jay Leverton, uh, Ian, Ian, Ye <laughs> Ian Hughes, Jasmine Taylor, Louis Reese, Vlad Tomovich. Tom and Chuck. Tom and Chuck. Levi L. See, it's not as easy as it looks, is it, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Levi L. Um, Kurt, Kurt Lameter, Frederick Ward, Mitchell M M Mulvaney, Archie Bustle, Maximum Smith, Mason Perrin, Jack Dimbley. Mm -hmm. get I get names wrong, easy. Yeah, yeah, they're okay. That's all right. Billy Vaught, Archie Hard Hardyman, Freddie Theobald, Finley Underwood, and Joshua Delicate. Delicata. Well done, Ed. That's our grid for juniors. We've got a bit of a delay. So what's the track conditions like out there? It's a beautiful day, isn't it? This is it, the, the track nice? It's a good good track to drive on when it's like this? It's very slippy. Is it? And usually it's because of this rain last night. There's not much grip left in the circuit. Right, because it hasn't got any rubber on it, I would, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah, there's no rubber down, so it's slippery. Um, it will get better as the day goes on, though. Yeah. 
What do you like for tyres? You know, we talk about the NKC and the two sets of tyres, the juniors that we have coming out. They're in the same boat as you. You've done the whole season. Where is your, where, where are you like on your tyre life? How, how good are your tyres at this point? My number one set of tyres we used yesterday for practice. Um, so tyre life, they can last about two or three rounds and right. then they start to get slower. But um, the new tyres make a lot of a difference. Yeah, but everyone here is going to be on worn tyres, aren't they? They're going to be on pretty old tyres being, being the sixth round. Because we, we, we haven't had very many uh, wet heats, have we? No, not many. Yeah, so tyre wear. Is tyre wear going to come into play to when we get to the final this afternoon? It might do. You might see some people in the lead who've got better tyre wear because they left their number yeah. one set of tyres a bit later. Splendid. Right, Eddie, me and Eddie Stewart are going to take you through this junior row tax heat which will um, take us up to the lunch break, actually. And then we have a sport short break, and then we'll be back with you to finish off, not just the afternoon here at Clear Pigeon, but the 2023 season. It's come around that quickly. Right, Eddie, I'll let you take it here from the start. It looks like we're about to get going. And they are away. It looks clean through turn one, the kink. Also looks clean through there. Clean start for the junior Rotax. Remarkably, we've got no incidents at turn one to report. Phenomenal. Oh, and I say that, Eddie, I spoke too soon. No. We've had, ah, I'll tell you why. It's because we haven't got the start. Oh. Right. We we can't see. Eddie and I can't see exact what's happening on the start in Gantry. It's just below us and out of our sight. So we thought they were racing there, and it That'd wasn't. That's why there's no incidents. And that's why, that's why well... That lot thought they were racing there because some drivers, when they, when they saw the false start flag, they started backing out, but other drivers didn't see the false start flag. And that's always a tricky part, isn't it? You're, you're all clear here with, in, in Minimax, so there's only seven of you. But next year, when you're in that pack of what? What we got? 20, 27 carts. You, you're gonna find, it's going to be a bit different for you, isn't it? Yeah, it's a lot different. Just the seven carts, you can sort of spin around and... <laughs> still get on the back. You're still, you're still there, semi. Rather than here, if you spin around, you're losing a lot of points and places. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a different beast. Are you looking forward to being in amongst that lot? <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I know what you're thinking, because I sometimes watch this and I think, I'm yeah. done, I'm sat here. It, it, it'll be interesting. Yeah, I think there's lots of new people moving, moving up to juniors. So I'm not the only one. Yeah, that's right. But I think it's a lot rougher than the Mini Max and all the other categories. And you're racing against kids. How old are you now, Ed? Are you 11 still? I'm 11. Yeah. When are you 12? Uh, December. Right. All right. So you're almost 12. But you're racing against kids who are 15. Yeah. Yeah. Who well, are, I am now. You know, I am now. You are, you are now. Who's 15 in the Mini Max? Uh, Sonny's 14. Oh, really? Right. We've got a cart off, so we've lost one of our runners. Not sure who that was. We'll get that recovered. So we should get this underway. Iron we've, uh, Hughes. Who's that, sorry? Iron Hughes. Well done. Good spot. We've lost Iron Hughes. But we've got the grid nice and ordered. Bruce likes it, and we're getting underway. It's all yours. And we're off. That was a contact between the, number, uh, um, the 80, 88 and 14. A cart off the track there. That's the number 79. Apart from that, they're clean. Nobody is off the circuit. Tremendous. They're clean through there. There's a yellow flag. Yellow flag's being waved. That's because that cart's been recovered, so nobody being able to overtake that, that's going to be a bit tricky for them, Eddie, isn't it? It's tricky because that's one of the biggest overtaking points yeah. of the circuit. We've got carts challenging through that final bend. But very much, Eddie, we've got the 38 leading. Sorry, the 88, Freddie Whirlock. Daniel Davies making a move. No, that was that was Will Swales. So is that Will Swales up in the second? Is it? Can't quite see. We'll wait and see. We'll have a look out the window as they come back towards the horseshoe. We can sometimes find out exactly who's where. It's the triple four of Benjamin Bartlett, who has come through all sorts of chaos and finds himself in the lead of that group. He's not quite in the lead of the race. That's Freddie Warlock's job. He's chasing him down, isn't he? He's after him. Let's have a look at the top ten then. Freddie Whirlock, Benjamin Bartlett, Daniel Davies, Will Swills, Reese Green, George Cade, Taylor Dixon, Levi Earl up to eighth, Mitchell Mulvey ninth, and it's Louis Reese 
who rounds off that top ten. Was that a move? Yeah, I think it was. Number 15 cut, Will Wales. Yeah, so he's up into third now, yeah? Uh, looks like second. Can be third? I think uh, yeah, Benjamin third. Bartlett's gone ahead of him. And I think yeah. that's now third. So that was Benjamin Bartlett. Number 11 is Reese Green. And it was Daniel Davies who's dropped behind them too. So through and into the S's, you've got that battle now between Reese Green and Daniel Davies. That's the one to keep our eye on. There's all sorts of movement. That's the thing with mixed grids, isn't it? You've got movement through the field. So all, all the time during the race, you've got people moving backwards and forwards up and down the order. It's rare you see a driver stay in the position they're starting and just keep it. It's up. Yeah, it's once or twice you see that. Right, who's that then on the... It was the number 14. It was the number 14 of Daniel Davis, who's come through to fifth behind the number 11 of Reese Green. Freddie Whirlock still leading. Benjamin Bartlett still second. That orange and red cart there is showing as the number 84. Justin That's... Taylor. Where is she on the on the order there? I can't see Jasmine Taylor in that order. I'm wondering if her transponder's working. Yeah, she's not on the order. She's ahead of the number 11. So in between... That, is that number 11 there? Yes, it is. Yes. So that's Will Swills. He's showing in fourth. And the cart ahead of Will Swills, that orange and... That yellow and red cart, the number 84, is Jasmine Taylor. And ahead of Jasmine Taylor is the 15 of Will Swills so she's running fourth yeah there's the number 15 so Will Swills Jasmine Taylor there the number 84 is is not showing on the timing screen so that is our that's a bit confusing for you ready isn't it transponder yeah transponder issues for the 84 well that affects where you finished it shouldn't because with a transponder failure we, we, we've picked up the fact that the 84 is behind Will Swills and ahead of Reese Green so the, the timekeepers should uh, also pick that up and she is running in fourth place what that does for us mate in the commentary box is when we see Mitchell Mulvey in fifth he's actually in sixth Yeah. and sixth is actually in seventh who's that dropping down the order I've just seen some movement there Mason Perrin we might want to mention him. He's currently he's he's kind of like the champion elect because he's 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 won the championship. He didn't even have to compete this weekend, and he's won the junior Rotax championship. Because even if this is his stinker of a round, he can you know if he drops this round, he he still won the championship when you consider the drop rounds. Yeah. There's a cha challenge for the lead. This is the lead here, Ed. Always oh, at the inside. Switch back it. He made that look easy. He did, didn't he? And that's Benjamin Bartlett moving up and ahead of Freddie Whirlock. Freddie Whirlock might try the inside here. He's too far back. Yeah. He's got the pace, hasn't he? That triple four numbered cart has got pace. He's pulling away, isn't he? He's pulled a... Yeah, he's pulled. Looks like a five-tenth camp. Let's see where it is when they come through. You were, you were nearly there, three tenths. Three tenths. According to the stopwatch. Into the S's, two and a half minutes remaining. And it looks to me, Ed, as though Benjamin Bartlett has got the pace to stay where he is because Freddie Whirlock has dropped, what, a couple of carts lengths? Freddie Whirlock needs to stick with the, the, the triple four car because uh, Wolf Wales is catching him in the background there right he's gaining that gap will shrink right let's keep an eye on the gap shall we it was 1.8 the last time and it's 1.8 this time so if it is coming down so Will Squeal's last lap was 35.203 35.277 for Whirlock so he is catching him he's catching but very very slightly they've only got yeah. a minute to do it 
what we found here, Eddie, because the, the, the lap time is only 35 seconds, when you look and you see a minute on the clock, you, you know, at, at other tracks where you've got 50, 57 second laps, almost a minute, the one minute to go is very, very, you've got almost no time. But when you get down to a minute, you've nearly got three laps around yeah. here. Yeah. So it's all still to play for. And, and you're right. I think that, that third place cart, Will Swills there, the number 15, the red and blue. He is catching. That cart is definitely catching. It's now 1.7, that gap. Yeah, that's because yeah, it's definitely he's took he's took a chunk out of took took a chunk out of Freddie Whirlock. So the number fifteen on a charge. So you're in third, Eddie. Is it worth really pushing to get that second place with such a gap, even you know, with such a short amount of time on third third place in the heat, solid amount of points to put you up the grid for the final? In a tw in a grid of twenty seven, it's a a good top fo top five. Is a good result. Is that what you're aiming for? Top five. Yeah. It? In a mini, maybe top three. <laughs> Only seven of them. Well, you're, yeah. I mean, you know, you got, it's going to be a different different ball game for you next year, isn't it? In, you know, the huge fields of juniors. Very different. Benjamin Bartlett's got good pace, though, hasn't he? He's keeping that gap eight tenths. Do you think Warlock's responded to Will Swills? Do you think he's aware? I mean, how aware are you of the carts behind? Sometimes when you're on the brakes, you can still hear them behind you. Yeah. Because they're still full of throttle. But I don't think he's got anything to worry about. Even maybe in the next lap he might have. I think if we had another maybe two minutes, or even when it comes to finals, we would have another four minutes after this. Yeah, I think you'd have him. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. Look at the gap coming down. We're into the final lap, Eddie. I'll let you talk us round the final lap and see if this battle comes. Oh, look at how much he's caught in there. Final few corners Taking coming up. Taking loads of curb through there. Just mm. gained a lot of time. The leg breaking. He, he, Freddie Warlock has got something to worry about here. He's gone defensive. He knows he's there. He's right on his bumper. Into the final turn. Is Will's, he going to do it? Wolf Wales might have a really good run down the straight here. There's going to be nothing in it. As Benjamin Bartlett takes the checkered flag right behind. The gap was 73 hundredths of a second there. That is close. That is absolutely nothing, isn't it? And nothing. I think if another four minutes of racing, I think Will Swills would have had the pace to overtake him. He only needed another lap, maybe. One more lap and he would have had him. He was so close. Great stuff then from Junior Rotax. All of these results are provisional. We'll be... We are now going to a lunch break. How long is the lunch break, anybody? Does anybody have any idea? Eddie, do you have any idea how long the lunch break is? Is it an hour? No, oh, I wish it was. Back at 20 past, considering it's 10 to. Yeah, it's usually half an hour. Eddie, I want to thank you very much, mate. It's uh, been a pleasure having you in the, the commentary box this year. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing you back next year uh, with the NKC. Laura, your mum. We need you back in the NKC. For now, though, we're going to go to a lunch break and uh, we'll see you back in half an hour. Well, hello and welcome to NKC Round 6, the final round from Clay Pigeon. And what a difference a month makes. Today, you can see my breath. Only at the last round, I was sweating so much, my pants were soaked. But anyway, back to kart racing. Joe, so many championships have been decided. All the championships have been decided. Uh, one weekend of racing, one day of racing, and by Sunday tea time, we'll be crowning our 2023 Junction 6 NKC champions. And of course, they're all running on those dreaded things, very old tyres. <laughs> well, yes, I mean, all right, so practice day today has been very wet, so we're going to be able to save our dry tyres. Uh, remember the regulation, just remind everybody who, who's new to the series, only two sets of tyres over the course of the season. That's six events. And a lot of the, those events, we've had very little running in the wet. Today is wet for practice, so we're going to be able to go into tomorrow. And the weather forecast, I hope you're watching this in bright sunshine. The weather forecast is for it to be dry, Nick. And always at this stage of the NKC season, it's all about tyre management. How much tyre have we got left out of those two sets? So it, it really is hard to call. And with every single class, every single class championship being right down to the last 
the last final of the day, it's going to be impossible to call it. Remember last year's, the, the 162 Rotax class, we didn't even see who, who, who the, the Simon Keeble won the championship. He came into the final round in like seventh, eighth position. He, we didn't even see him in contention. And that's a very similar situation we've got now. So we've got a whole day of fantastic action, non-stop racing, and we don't know who's going to win anything. But coming up now is Joe's famous pit walk and a very long chat with a very famous racer who's retiring. But that's after a couple of our youngsters have a chat first. So coming into the final round of the NKC Championship, Harry Wainwright here is leading the 177 category and a, a chance of clinching the championship. But I would imagine, Harry, a bit of a mixed emotion as you are stopping karting going into next year. Yeah, this is going to be my last race, so hopefully we can have a good result. Um, it's been a challenging year, but a good year. So we'll see what happens, but hopefully we can come away with a win. So what's behind the stop of karting? Are you, I mean, I remember interviewing you last year when you were 15 and you had to move out of the junior category because you were just growing and you're still growing. You're only 16 still and you're what, six for five? Yeah, six or five. Uh, it's because obviously I've just I'm 16, so I've just started college, yeah. um, and I want to go into motorsport and do motorsport mechanics and stuff like that. Um, so it's more just to focus on my future, um, and I may come back to it at some point. But for now, I'm just gonna put it to the side and focus on my future. Yeah, of course, and that's very sensible of you to do that. And you've got the rest of your life to come back to motorsport, and also you're going to be living the dream if you get a job in motor racing, aren't you? Um, I've got to bring your dad in on this. Mr. Wainwright, come on, Mr. Wainwright. So you've got a big smile on your face. Is that because it's Harry's last race? No, not at all, no. Um, it'll be a bit of an emotional day tomorrow, actually, because yeah. we've 11 years we've been doing this for wow. now. Um, you know, two or three weekends a month at some point. Um, and to be fair, he's moving on to the next part of his life. Yeah. Work, college, weekends away with the lads, that type of thing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it probably would not, not, not doing anything ever again but you know other things will probably move on for him now yeah, really yeah. it's very, very sensible yeah. to be thinking about that yeah. so going into this weekend lads uh championship there up for grabs i mean is that at the forefront of your mind uh yeah obviously that's what we want to be doing we want to win the championship so just gotta have some uh good results um obviously no crashes or anything uh just see what we can do to do the best we can dad i didn't get your name i've called you mr win right what's your name it's simon Simon, you're, you're going to be watching from the sidelines and seeing karting dads and karting parents. It's more intense than his job is, in the, actually behind the wheel, isn't it? It is, yeah. You know, you, 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 you live every lap with them, uh, you know, everything all right, you know, and every good move and, uh, and, and every, every incident that happens, you, you know, you feel it with them, really, don't you? Well, guys, well done. Congratulations. I'm sure we'll see you back in something, Harry. Um, you, you never know. You're going to be working in motorsport. You never know. You might end up running a car or something. A four-wheel. It's going to be a saloon, though. He's going to. He's only 16, and he's still. He's six foot four. I know. I know. He'll be on the mechanic side next time. Yeah. Thanks, Harry. Well done, mate. Thank Congratulations. You. Cheers. Thank you. Senior Rodax 162. We've got the 93 back. That's Jensen Watts. He's already done two rounds of the NKC this year, and I'm delighted to have him back, Jensen. Uh, you came in and you certainly turned a few heads by winning both the rounds. I mean, you know, you, you must be uh, looking forward to this weekend and doing it all again. Yeah, I'm loving it. Um, thankfully to win at Mansell in the dry, Wilton in the wet, so whatever it throws at us this weekend, feeling confident either way. Yeah, right, so you've only done two rounds. Just been chatting to your dad, he said you struggle to get an entry. What's the plans for next year? Are we going to see you go for a championship? Absolutely, yeah, we'll be here next year. Um, hopefully bring home the title. If not, we'll do our best either way. I mean, it's, you know what, a, a racing over a season, there's a, it throws a lot up, uh, doesn't it? And it's like, can you even begin to think about a championship? It's sort of, you know, can you even think about next year's championship and, and be as confident as you are? I suppose looking at your results, yes, you can is the answer. I'm answering my own questions. Yeah, um, just thinking ahead, you know, you can never really take each step by step. But think about the bigger picture going into next season. Consistent points, consistent podiums, wins. That's what makes a title. Not yeah. every win, every win. Yeah, you've, you've won in the wet, you've won in the dry. Are you uh, familiar with Clear Pigeon? Yeah, I uh, did my novice when I was novice racing. I was around here. Um, we went and did X30 a few years ago, so moved away. But getting back in touch with Rotax, yeah, we've done a few laps around here. All right, you going to let us into a few secrets and what's the, the key to going quick around here? Just spray later than everyone else. Easy <laughs> as. Yeah, you make that sound very easy. Uh, can I bring your dad in? What, what's your name, dad? Oh. 
Carl. Carl, um, you run uh, Jensen as a, a dad and lad, dad isn't and it? Lad, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you must get a lot of satisfaction out of being able to see your son not just not just compete, but actually, you know, we'd go on and win races. Well, I do, but it's equally stressful because I mean, at Mansell's, he was in the lead by a long way, but I was just paranoid of a chain jumping off. And I told him to stay off every curb going. I said, please don't break the cart. So it's stressful, but and we do argue. <laughs> yeah, get away. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. no, he's a good lad, and uh, he's driving well this year. So uh, yeah. that's off to. I couldn't do it. <laughs> and it, and it, it's a team effort, isn't it? It's uh, that's what the joy of any kind of motorsport is. But to be. Uh, I think even more so when you've got your dad or, you know, a family member who's, you know, you win together, you lose together is the saying, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, going through years together, um, we've got our own little systems in place. Mm. You know, we, we've ran with teams here and there, but we've always sort of been at just us two. He's always been my mechanic. We have our own little language, work out the setup between us, um, step-by-step -step processes, and that's how we do it. As, have you done any racing, Carl? Many, many years ago, I played about in a Rotex, but I was, yeah. I was at the back. I was, I was yeah. firm at the back in 177s. But uh, you, I, the good bit was, I used to get a race against Mansell down at Dunkswell back in yeah. the day, so it was, yeah. that was quite cool. But uh, yeah, as far as, as far as results, don't go looking at them. Please don't. Yeah. The thing is, though, Carl, and, and Jensen, you'll, you'll, you'll understand this. I've had this conversation with dads before, and dads who haven't raced, and I've tried to explain to them, you haven't got a clue. You have got a clue, though, because you've raced. So you can't be too hard on him, can you? Like I said, he was far, far better than I ever yeah, was. And yeah. uh, now I leave him to the drive. And if he comes back in and he'll tell me what he thinks the cart needs, I'll go with it. I, we don't, there's no point in me telling him what to do anymore. He's, uh, yeah. he's, and I know, I know your dad's been humble here, gents. Uh, but, you know, it, it must help having someone who has done a little bit of racing and understands the perspective from the driving seat. Yeah, totally. When we sort of started racing, we never had like a driver coach or someone to go through the day stuff like that. So it was always his influence on me to make me started. And yeah. eventually that sort of, he sort of took a step back from that bit. And But yeah, he's always been there to help me over the years. Yeah, yeah. Okay then, final round of 2023. What's Jensen Watts going to be happy with on Sunday afternoon? Only a win. I knew he was going to say that, everybody. I knew. <laughs> and he's done it so far. So, hey, hat rick on the way. Yeah, thanks, so. thanks, guys. When I started kart racing, it was in, I think it was in the 1800s. No, it wasn't. It was in the 1980s. And one of the men to beat, one of the, the, the lads to beat at that time was a chap that is standing here beside me now, Paul Ozan. Here he is still racing. He must be mad as a balloon to still be racing all these years later. But Paul, you have been at the highest levels of this sport. I mean, when I came into karting, Paul Ozan was up there, and it was Paul Ozan was like the, the man to aspire to be. Yeah. So, you know, give us a, a, a little brief synopsis of, of back then in the 80s. What, what exactly would you have been doing? Because my memory's failing me. Yeah, okay. Um, so when I, when I started, um, kind of 83, it would have been Junior, junior Britain, um, which then went into, like, Junior Booster. Um, they brought a new, new category out. So yeah, I did the first British Champs 1984 uh, at Risington. Um, that was in Junior Booster, finished fourth in that. And then went through the ranks into Junior Britain. Um, Super One Series, which was like the British Champs. We did have one day events back in the day for the British yes. Champs. Yeah. Um, come well, close many that's times. That's what people forget, isn't it? Yeah. The, the British Championship wasn't a series of rounds. Correct. It was yeah. down to one day. And, yeah. and I also remember qualifying for British Champs. Yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah, we had, to, we had to qualify. In fact, I remember being here at a qualifier, a round that I actually won, but that was an E-final. Right, right. But so yes. that's how many. That's how yes. many people there were. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you, at the time that I started, you, you were the the, the quick kid, the superstar coming through from juniors and into seniors. Yeah. Um, so give me some of the names you'll have raced against people like McNish. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I think that's probably your ear, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. So when I kind of started in juniors, when I was finding my my feet, basically, um, it was Alan McNish, David Coulthard, yeah. Dario Franchitti. Yes. Oliver Gavin, um, yeah, that's just to name a few. That, that you know, they were the they were the quick guys at yeah. the time, yeah. um, kind of out every week, and the ones that I had to try and get get to that level. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. it. I mean, I, I remember you were Super One champion. Remind me of the year. Um, yeah, kind of in the nineties, and my last time was twenty twenty. And, and that was when the Super One championship was the British championship. The Super One championship was over several rounds. 
if yeah. I'm right. And, and everybody's perception was that the Super 1 champion was the British champion, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. I mean, back back then, yeah, I mean, we did have the kind of standalone championships. Yeah. Um, but then the, the series as well. And that's kind of what got me into car racing because the year would have been kind of late, let me think now, 1991, wow. when I was doing 100 Super A then. And so I won the Formula Renault scholarship. Formula Renault were, were actually back in uh, the Super 1 series. Um, I actually actually won the last round at Risington, um, which just so happened was the only meeting that they actually came to. So there was Jason Plato was was there doing yes. demonstrating in the in the Formula Renault and so on, um, <clears throat> and three of us got selected to go through, um, which was a training course in France at the Winfield course at Magny Corps, yeah. and there was me. There was a guy called Daniel Little, whose dad was Graham Little, which was a successful world championship carter in the 60s 70s and a certain christian horner really was it really? um so i kind of went through and won that scholarship so i beat yeah. them two guys to, yeah. to get into formula Renault. um did formula Renault kind of 92 93 94 yeah. um was great but the budget was just astronomical and um obviously kyan was was where it called started for me and we come back into it um, 90, kind of 96, we got the dealership for the gold cart, which obviously we still run today. Yes. Um, and, and yeah, I kind of was involved full time till about 2002. Yeah. I won the O plate, the ABKC O plate, actually here at Clay Pigeon. Mm -hmm. And that's when I kind of knocked it on the head for a bit. Lots before my midlife crisis. Yeah. <laughs> before your midlife crisis, you know what? It's a, I, I've always thought of our sport of motorsport is quite a cruel sport because there you go. You know, Formula Renault scholarship. You're in Formula Renault, and the thing that stifles you going forward is not talent yeah. or ability, but it's funding. Yeah. And that's the problem with with well, I say a problem. It's always been there. It's been there since the very advent of of motorsport. Do you feel kind of any kind of um, I don't know any kind of bad feeling do you feel like sort of you were cheated you know you could have been a contender I, to be honest there's a lot of there's a lot of great drivers out yes. there um you know i was obviously at the top top in carton at one stage but there was a lot of others i was racing against you know what i mean like bobby game he was another yes, quality yeah. driver dean panrocker and um, this is like the top in the you know in the kind of in in the kind of late 90s you know yes. what i mean and there was a lot michael spencer um, there's a lot of great, great drivers, you know what I mean? Yeah, and you know, they had backing and so on with teams and so on. Um, but they're all capable, quality drivers, you know what I mean? Um, you know, and they haven't unfortunately gone on either. And, it, and the thing which would hold anyone back is just that budget, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think there's a lot of great, great drivers out there um, which potentially could be in Formula One now. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Just yeah. never had. Yeah. you know that budget to do it unfortunately it, it's yeah. a long list isn't it uh, Paul what's um what are the changes if if any I mean you know fundamentally that car chassis that we're in front of now yeah. looks aesthetically exactly as they did in the 80s yeah. yes you've got these pretty fairings and side pods and that now but yeah. for you know what changes have you seen in the sport to be honest loads back back in the right. day there wasn't the adjustments you literally bolted your tires on did your tire pressures and, and off you went um now they just it's literally now it's like formula one it's like a little racing car isn't it it really is you've got different different seats various axles um different rims and that all makes a difference to your handling you know to your performance that you got on track back in the day we didn't have that we just had a set of rims with your slicks on and um that's all you could do really and, and i suppose that is why you get people starting in the sport that will come to the likes of Polos and Racing because they're gleaning that experience of all of that that you've just said. Yeah, exactly. I mean, as I said, it has got Carton has got it hasn't got easier over the years. Yes. But you know, kind of in the eighties it literally just turned turned up with your cart, sat in it and drove it. And you just drove it round and round and round. And if you were on the pace, you're on the pace. If you weren't, you weren't. Um, but now obviously there's a lot, lot more to it. Yeah. And obviously over the years and being back in the sport and involved with it again. Um, learning all the, you know, kind of everything, what everything does with the, with the seats, the axles, the pressures, where everything needs to be. Yeah. 
um, and obviously with my previous experience I've got yeah. that I can pass on to, yeah. to help to help drivers yeah it's a massive shortcut so all right you're retiring going forward as a driver however you're still going to have a presence very much in this paddock and I mean you know you're, you're open to customers coming forward and competing with you in the NKC and, and other series yeah correct um, you know I've really enjoyed like being back in the sport running the team again uh, having Jay with the team has been great it's been his first year yeah. um, he's gone from kind of kind of big time in at the deep end to actually now you know in in the top 10 yeah. so it's so it's good and you know hopefully carrying on forward with it, with jay for next year yeah. and yeah look, looking to get a few more drivers within the team um you know on the gold car the gold's always been a great car mm -hmm. we've just always been swamped by tony carts and their products um yeah. but since 1996 when we've been on the car i've never felt disadvantaged against against you know the other brands yeah. if i did we wouldn't have persevered with it but for yes. you know yeah. 96 to now it's a long time 27 yeah. years of of being with this product yeah um it's a strong chassis it's a good chassis um and you know we just hope other people will will realize that well there was your sales pitch paul plenty of owning space with paul Azan racing yeah. for nkc next year uh, come and speak to him um I want to leave you with this question. All right, you're not going to do a Frank Sinatra on us, are you? But what what could possibly tempt you back behind the wheel? Probably, probably gearbox. Probably right. one two five. Right. Uh, I did one two five in the late nineties. So at the time I was doing Formula A, which was to me probably the best category of racing I'd, I'd ever done. But then. We'd, I was helping a driver that year and he went on to win the British Championships in the 125 National category. I jumped in his car, he let me in his car and my first event was at Three Sisters and it was the biggest smile I've ever had <laughs> really? driving anything. Yeah, yeah. Really. So it was almost yeah. 100 mile an hour at the end of Three Sisters, you know, Wigan Straight. And for me, that was the biggest buzz I'd ever had in a car. Wow. And that's something that would tempt me back, yeah. 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 I'm going to get your missus, who's behind Paul with the camera, to remind him just how old he is. He wants to move from Rotax Max into something that's even quicker. Oh, there she is. Can you remind him how old he is, please, for his own sake, really? Paul, it's <laughs> been a pleasure. It was, I was delighted to see you in this paddock when we yeah. first got involved, and I'll be delighted to see you continue in this paddock. And I've got an inkling that I haven't seen the last of Paul Ozan behind the wheel. I look forward to seeing you in a KZ. Okay. Great stuff. Have a great yeah. weekend as well. Cheers, mate. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Perhaps one of the most exciting championships in this year's NKC has been Minimax. It's been the smallest of grids, but it's not small when it comes to drama and intrigue and intensity. And Sonny Morgan here. Sonny, you've just come off the track. It's very wet here. All right, this is the day before the race meeting. Uh, Sonny, the, the, uh, the weather forecast isn't quite as, ex as we've got now, but um, you're covered in mud and wetness. And what's the track like at the moment? Well, the tracks, well, it's absolutely drenched at the yeah. moment, but the problem with clay, it seems to dry up, then it goes wet, then it goes back to dry again. So it's ever got to find setup, the right setups, because we're going from one to another, really, with clay. And, and how difficult will that be then? So you, you're practising on a track that's going to be completely different if the weather forecast is, is to be believed? Yeah, well, it's luck of the draw, really, trying to find the right setup, so, like, you know wet or dry because the track's dried up it's gone wet again yeah. it's been one or another every single session so yeah. Yeah. it's been tough now then last round of the championship yeah. in contention you're in second it's all to play for still being in second is that is that less pressure on you do you think well i mean it's i don't think there's much pressure on me i've just got to come here and do what i do every weekend yes but for colkin i mean he's the pressure's all on him now really but i've just got to do what i usually do and see what happens at the end of it and is that, is that your approach, Sonny? You're going to go into each heat and just think about the moment, not think about the championship? Well, I think about the championship, but at this point now it's the final and I'm behind, so I've just got to try and win as much as I can and bring as much points home and see what happens. All right. I mean, um, and we always talk about next season at the final round of any championship, it doesn't matter what you're driving. Um, so 2024, 
it's the last season of mini max here in the nkc but also you're getting older are you moving will i see you in juniors next year i'll be juniors next year Excellent, yeah 100 right. percent um well i think i might be the biggest mini max driver out there so yeah i think you are and we're struggling with weight we've got the sticker kit stripped off the car right. down to bare minimum everything right, so right. And that's just to get you down to weight. Yeah. I, I, I've, I've always wanted to ask somebody this. You've brought it up, so I'm going to ask you. Do you know what a sticker kit weighs? Well, we think it's about a kilo. Wow, really? A kilo. Right. So if I t what the sticker kit, what we're talking about here is you'll see the different colours of the carts, and that's actually stickers that uh, is applied to the front and the sides of the carts. And that's what Sonny's had taken off his cart. So we'll see you in pure white, is it, or black? Um, well, it's, it's a white bumper and everything else is white. No, right. sorry. Black bumper, everything else white. Black bumper, white side pods. That's what you got to look out for. Best of luck, Sonny. Yep, it's all to play for. Thanks, man. Thank you.
Welcome back to Clear Pigeon. It's the we've got four remaining heats. Hope you had a good lunch break. Hope you enjoyed our lunch break paddock show as well. Some interesting I chats it there. Was one of your best ever. I really loved the chat with Paul Lazan. And yeah, ten minutes. I know it was ten minutes, which is longer than we normally interview people for. But I really that that is a whole podcast Career's in itself. Ten, one, an, an minutes, hour. There's it? lots of anecdotes and and tales of daring do that Paul wasn't unable to tell us in just that short time. Uh, we've got the senior road tax out for their fourth heat. This will be the final heat for the uh, senior road tax 162. Slowing Finley down. Watson and Henry Stratton are the two drivers at the front of the field. And we are going to get things very much underway. Bad start for the 120 there. Stratton, he got, again, got too much curb on that right-hand side, which did happen an awful lot. Break there for Finley. And two, three, four carts have gone past. I think Henry's going to come out in sixth. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, he's sixth indeed. So nice. coming around there were the black plates and the white numbers, which is your senior Rotax. The most oh. basic of plates you can possibly have. I saw uh, Kieran Gifford being the meat in a three-cart sandwich going into the S's three wide, and I thought that was going to end in T's. It didn't remarkably, and he's come out second. in fifth still. Paul Lausanne, the number five, still out there as well, in that position as well. But Kieran Gifford's coming back at him. Down and across the line for the first time then. It's Finley Watson, Kieran Gifford up to, up to second place on the old plate. Louis Ball, Lewis Ball on third, Bryn Hill fourth, Paul is on fifth. And we've got Dan Andrews, Henry Stratton, Sam Elliott, James Wood, John Hobbs tenth. So relatively tidy first lap for these runners. We had a, a lot of movers there, people coming down and going three wide at certain points and it's still happening down the field, but everybody being able to make a make sort of compensations yeah. for one another and that's how it should be done yeah broken into three very distinct pack, pack, factors packs i don't know uh finney watson gifford at the front then we've got this uh, middle pack of basically five and then the whole field behind them. the five itself is splitting into two with led by the 77 of ball and braden hill and ozan ozan who wants to make up for, for taking 10 minutes of your time for the lunchtime show with a with a, with a <laughs> stellar race performance that's the uh the cart the third cart there Blue and white, the number five. Five standing for 50 plus, as he is now. No, and the five stands for his fifth in the championship. No, Come on, give him, 50 his, plus. give him that accolade. Yeah. I think it's better. I, I, if I, do you know what? It's, it's like, it, it, you know, if you think that what he's doing against, he's, and he's up the inside there, takes Braden Hill easily. Yeah, I mean, you know, what, what a, an outstanding career he's had. I mean, you know, he reminded me yesterday, you know, I remember him in Formula Renault. He won the scholarship, went to the Winfield Racing School, ran in Formula Renault. Um, in on the Toka package still back fighting. in the mid nineties, and I'm he's still there. Unfortunately, how exciting this fight is! We need to move to the first and second because they're right nailed together as well now. Watson and Gifford, Gifford the O plate. That means he won the one-off meeting in Wilton Mill a couple of months ago. Coming down over the line, sweeps into the bottom bend, and that comes out, and then it's a move there and up the inside. Classical moves it's turned out today, hasn't it, Joe? Up the inside yeah. of bottom bend. I, I knew that was a great spot for our camera, Nick. I knew that was going to be the position of choice. Of, of where to make the move and it's kind of the nature of the track here of Clay Pigeon and we're seeing that textbook move there Kieran Gifford there showing that he has very much I think he's wrote a couple of chapters actually the all plate winner moving away so let's just drop back to the third fourth and fifth battle I think this one's going to stretch now I don't see uh, Gifford coming back to him and there we are third fourth of it's Ball Hill and Ozan Ozan who got past uh, Hill a while ago They've now spread out very slightly, keeping on the leaders whilst we look at these guys, so we won't miss anything. Through the S's, 
and then firing up the Sturmy straight for the heavy braking into the hands hairpin. And they all take in the drifting racing line. No one's looking to do anything particularly aggressive. We've changed for sixth place there, as I think that's uh, Henry Stratton coming back into sixth, I think. Or could be, there could be a, a double pass in one lap. No, it's the 93 who's moved into sixth place. Jensen Watts, oh, there we go. Jensen Watts moving through the field. There's a surprise, isn't it? Uh, Oli Varney came into this round leading this 162 championship. He's currently in 18th spot. Way down the order. I'm not sure how the championship is going to going to look uh, in this 162 class going into the final. But that uh, we're hopefully going to have some updated championship tables going into that final, so we can actually bring you the dynamic of the championship as it pans out in the 12 minutes and one lap final later on. Just um, a bit of information for everybody that uh, last time round, Ozan was 1.9 seconds ahead of Jensen Watts. I don't think it's 1.9 seconds now. And it's now really how far up can Watts get in this event. He's currently running in sixth. He didn't he win both the first two heats? Yes, he did. So he's now looking to make it a hat trick, which is very hard to do with the mixture and mix and match we've got of the, uh, the uh, grids. We start at 23rd. That's going all right, isn't it, really? Yeah. It's, uh, he's, had a, he's had an outstanding run. I bumped into him in the lunch break, and I was tell, you know, just chatting to him, saying, you really, you really need to do the championship, don't you? And he says, I really do need to do the championship. It's just I'm at uni, and... Ah, uh, so he doesn't, I mean, doesn't, doesn't do any of the championships. Doesn't do British. and doesn't do. No, he's else. done UKC before. Ah, right. He mentioned that. I don't know what. I think he's done British as well. Um, but he, he's kind of dovetailing it with a with a university uh, and, and every, studying. And for everything a that means financially as well. Yeah, yes, I yeah. have none. Yeah, and so getting the Fridays off and stuff has been a thing. So this battle for third, fourth, and fifth heating up. Louis Ball in the seventy-seven. The red cart still uh, holding sway over Braden Hill that's the orange and grey which looks pink from a distance and Paul Ozan in the blue but coming 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 it's Jensen Watts and Jensen Watts goes round buttons always a good line that one we've used it 17 times already yeah these three are about to be joined by Jensen Watts you can see Jensen Watts just getting onto the back of Paul Ozan Kieran Gifford meanwhile has got a, just over a second lead on Finlay Watson who's got three and a half seconds to this battle here mm. Lewis Ball, Braden Hill, Paul Ozan, Jensen Watts now joining in. He's part of that now. You can virtually call that a four-card battle for that third place. Yeah. So third, fourth, fifth, and sixth now. Henry Stratton, who started on the front, he's dropped off the back of the tail of this field. But with only two minutes remaining, Nick, I think it's time for, if there is going to be a move, it's time to make that move. Yeah, I think Jensen will be looking to... Well, he's, he's just been so expert in the times we've seen him so far. My guess is he's going to try and take like one a lap and then end up in third. I think I think beyond third, it's going to be beyond him, to be honest. Is he going to go for one now? Nope. They're all in line, but it's Braden Hill making the action towards the 77 of Ball. The 93, the red-helmeted Watts is the man we think is going to be on the move. Looking, thinking, and he's got the inside there of the hairpin and made a really oh, clean yeah. middle on his arm there. Yeah, very clean. And Paul Ozan showing all the experience there of not needing to close the door on him. Yeah. And Paul will hang on to the rear bumper as much as he can as Watts makes his through. Oh, he's through. got Hill as oh, well. Oh, he's got Hill as well. That, that, I haven't seen a move there all day long. And Ozan has got through as well because the momentum that Braden Hill lost actually cost him massively to Paul Ozan. So Ozan goes through with Watts. Yeah. So they've moved up now onto the tail of Lewis Paul. Hill got moved out, didn't he, really, quite expertly by Watts, and that lost him so much momentum. Now, just so just you know, the lead is very confidently with Kieran Griffith, who's got a second and a half over Louis Ball as we turn around and now going down there Watts now right on the tail of Ball so it's Giffen from Watson Ball in third I think it was more Bryn Hill sliding wide there allowing Watts here he comes oh, up side this. by side it's a drag race across the line and into the first turn here at Billy's Blind and Jensen Watts has made the move another textbook showing and ahead of now ahead of that number 77 of Lewis Ball. He was ahead of the line, actually, Nick. Yep. So the drag out of the final turn yeah. was enough. 30 seconds on the clock. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what he can do. My guess is, as we look at the 77 of Ball, under huge pressure from Paul Ozan, that that gap to Philly Watson of 2.6 seconds is just too much. Here they come again, then. It'll be 13 laps completed for this group. Gifford still leads out to two seconds now. The gap, Finley Watson, still got four and a half seconds to Jensen Watts. And then behind Watts, there's the 77 there with the red overalls. And then Paul Azan in the yellow and blue and white. And then Braden Hill 
in the kind of it comes across as pink as you mentioned it's it's kind of got a very green fine orange, yeah. or a green orange stripe to that cart it's uh, in this light though so these three it's not over yet and it'll be the one lap to go board this time by Kieran Gifford takes that one lap to go board we'll keep an eye on this one though as we go into our final few chances and opportunities Ooh. to up the order and there's Paul Azan taking a tighter line gives him a different line completely into the S's down the Sturmy straight into the hand hairpin or oh, def defensive there from Lewis Ball nearly didn't work for him but I wonder now if Braden Hill can get up the inside of Ozan a kind of four corner manoeuvre but Ozan has the inside oh, he, he had to let it go yeah, the inside had, of buttons let yeah, it go just dropped, and Hill moves out. back into fifth place it's all going on these low positions first second and third though pretty accurate distance they finished the race in fact we so excited we didn't notice that yeah yeah checkered flag flying Kieran Gifford takes the heat. Finley Watts in second. Jensen Watts from 23rd to 3rd. So 20 places. Uh, a 20 place improvement there for Jensen Watts. I suspect we're going to see Jensen Watts starting on the pole position in the year final by mental arithmetic. I think it's uh, a very good chance. Yes, I think so. Uh, Lewis Ball was fourth. Braden Hill fifth. Just getting Both of them just getting ahead of Paul Azan at the final turns there. Paul Azan sixth. Jake Davis seventh. Sam Elliott is eighth ninth is sam wyatt and charlie walsh for st racing rounding off the top 10 we have championship leader ollie varney coming through in 11th ryan mills bobby rosier marcus king 14th adam rogers ethan wyatt kyle dunford lewis berry tommy lee davis grace lee davis 20th john hobbs levi goodyear scott russell uh, james becker joel bowden henry stratton dan andrews and rob statham uh, dropped a lap down, and we lost James Wood after that very very good first lap. We lost James Wood on lap three, and I'm not sure what happened to James that time, but he's had a couple of retirements. I think we're going to see James Wood out in the B final because he's had a couple of retirements out of his three heats. Yeah. We've got a couple of that. Still touch and go. Howarth will be in the B final, but he did win his final heat. So he's got two NFs and a... And a uh, two DNFs and two a win. DNFs and a win, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think he's still going to be in the B final. Well, I think he's going to be right at the back end of the A. You reckon? About, I reckon he's going to qualify 19th. There we are, 20th. Would you be kind enough to pass the... Uh, the what? The milk. I thought you put the booze in, presume. I was, po I was pointing at the... Uh, oh, the, red, uh, the red and white, please. Oh, the red white. No, the red and white. I was very, very drunk. Can you imagine our commentary after red wine? Well, I don't drink red wine, but... I can imagine mine. It'd be just heartburn. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> yes. That would be it. So, it'd be like... Yes. I'd be like, mm, now there's a car coming round. <laughs> it's one of the biggest disappointments of getting older, is heartburn. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm really looking forward to that when I hit 50. Um, well, what, what are you, you going to start aging down, are you? <laughs> the Benjamin Button. We've got the 177s next, Nick, and... This one has been kind of fraught as well. Fraught competition, not just this weekend, pretty Every much the weekend. whole season. Um, well, isn't that really because this is, it's become the de facto national championship, isn't it, really? So it has. It, it absolutely has, yes. Yes, this is where the 177s have come to, um, to, come to live in the NKC. And the good thing to remember is that if there are any unsettled scores at the end of this weekend, they can settle them at the Autumn Cup. Yes, we're having a 177 uh, grid of carts at the One Low Car Club Altham Cup coming in November. We're going to be all live on Karting Live TV. But for now, we're 177s on, seven here. On, on the, the Maxis right. tire Thank as well. Thank you very much. That's the most important thing. Get, come on, come, yes. on, come, on, come on, come on. On the Maxis tire. Come on, come on, you can do it. You can get the well, advert. I know, but I've got come a grid, on, grid of carts. It's fine, come on. Being led out by Joshua Pickford with Alex Thomas alongside. Carl Bryant and Dan Fleckney are on row two. Then we've got Neil Hemming, Tim Darlow, Oliver Smith, Cole Edwards, Dan Milner, Max Zanetti, Steve Gilly. And Oliver Moss are on row six. Then Charlie Dowers, Aidan Hammond, Paul Moran, Patrick Williams, Rohrich, Adrian Smith and Jason Bear, Tyler Fossil, Lawrence Hilton, Alex Jones, Ben Johnson, Logan Edwards and Alfie Williams, Keith Mason and Steve Stewart, Alan Cook and Ian Branfield, Thomas Storr and Zach Bolton, Reese Lowell and James Frost and Simon Wheeler round off the 33 cart field. Who are in very... These have been the best starters. I know. The 177s. Are, have been the best starters. Are By the you, time are you they get a special to Joe Bradley award, the, 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 the Joe Bradley award for the best starters, the best group of starters is the the Rotax One Seven Seven. Who by buttons have got the grid in very good order. They come through the final turn here. This one's called Top Bend. That's so slow. It is. It's walking <laughs> pace. Zach Bolton did the same though in the first heat. Then I can't remember who the pole man was for the second heat that we saw, and it did exactly the same. This is great because we're going to see the red light go. Now we're going to get pick up the pace a little bit. And now we release the field in 
Perfect good order. Ooh. Problems for Zach Bolton at the back there. Didn't quite get things moving, but the rest of the field through turn one and on towards the S's and everybody through without incident. Uh, a little bit of kerfuffling through the S's, but uh, in the midfield with everyone trying to work out who was going where and when. But they roll through. Now, Bolton has the advantage when you get left in the first couple of corners. It's fine because everyone holds each other up and you can catch back up to the back of the field. That is true. So Bolton now is on the end of the field, those Zach Bolton fans. But that's at the back of the field. The front of the field is Josh Pickford, who's leading. Yeah, Carl Bryan slotted in behind him, though. Yeah, it, it, there's, a, there's a real poison chance about being um, on the left-hand side of this, because you can try and get past as you go the straight. People are hitting the kerb and losing all um, momentum yeah. of the kerb, which is, which is effectively just after the, um, the flag-waving box, or the marshal, whatever it is, where they're wearing the check of flag. What's it all about? Marshall's post. Marshall's post, thank you. Post, that's where we're yeah. Box. Marshall's post. We had some side. Oh, and there we go, side by side action coming through the, the horseshoe. Lead. And into the lead goes Carl Bryant on the, the 13. The Jib Tech driver, the Jib, Jib Tech team principal, as well as Jib Tech driver, Carl Bryant, on the number 13. A number I used to carry in my club racing days. Crosses the line, then two laps completed. Joshua Pickford now in second. Mm. Got Cole Edwards, who went round the outside of Dan Fleckney. Now in fourth, Fleckney fifth, Dim Darlow sixth, Matt Zanetti seventh, Neil Hemming, Oliver Moss and Steve Gilly. He's the driver rounding off the top ten, but we've got a battle for the lead, no doubt. It's not over. Joshua Pickford, the audacity of Carl Bryant. How and could he? Here we get, yeah, how, here, here we go again. Out of the hand hairpin, and once again, these two were side by side, but having to slot back inside and onto the rear bumper of Carl Bryant. Thomas in third is absolutely pushing. He was all out of shape as he tried to just gain on the... Uh, the leading two, who of course are slightly holding each other up. It's a kind of a left and a right look. And it's a lunge for the lead, but it's closed off. Bryant closed off Pickford. I, and to be honest, I think if Pickford had been, been a bit more committed there, he could have got through. Well, I'm not sure he had the speed, really. He wasn't going quick enough to get alongside. And Carl Bryant just gave himself enough room not to be squished. Because Joshua Pickford was absolutely on the limit of his braking there. Three cart battlers now developed into a four cart battler. Cole Edwards joins in as well for fourth, and he's got pace. We saw him go around the outside of somebody at the. Mm, I think yeah. that was the the horseshoe. Here we go across the line, and four laps completed. Cole Edwards, uh, got a weekend off from NASCAR. Yes, <laughs> now, I thought that was Carl Edwards. No, he got he got. All, they're all called Cole. They're all called Edwards. It's a combination of the two, right, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. NASCAR Cole Trickle. <laughs> That's so your, that wasn't a real one, was it? That defensive. Was a, that was a, defensive oh, for Bryant. Defensive. Got horribly wide. Yeah, he had to drive defensively. That's compromised his exit into the horseshoe, and that's allowed Pickford through. So Pickford has gone through. It's a visual pencil. Right, so there. He, but Bryant slides wide because he went down the inside. That's allowed Pickford through, who does the switchback into the horseshoe, has to clamber across the curves, but that maximises his, his exit and Carl Bryant slots in behind great move there some great racing here going on in the 177s as ever so that change for position Cole Edwards now in third after I think it was Alex Thomas was it who slid wide yeah it was the uh, the seven of uh, oh, Alex, yeah it was Thomas. Alex Thomas yeah he just kind of like Matt Zanetti now come up into four from the 277 car he actually is just beginning to try to get on the tail of the top three who are Line and stern, bigger gap between first and second, and second and third, but only less than a second covering the top four. I do think Josh Pickford now is trying to make a break for it, and the other three are perhaps now where the the, uh, the intrigue will be for the remaining four minutes. Halfway through the race, that's all. Yeah, don't take your eyes off Zanetti as well, because he's come right onto the bumper of Cole Edwards there. That's the orange and white cart there, the number oh. 277. Uh, uh, he's Pickford, looking for a way through, isn't Pickford he? Pickford made a real hash of the, uh, the entry into the horseshoe and lost probably three or four tenths of a second in doing that or perhaps three tenths of a second he was he pulled out so nicely and then just lost it all again on one corner oh S side by side for Zanetti down the inside of Cole Edwards and Demortes Edwards to fourth so Zanetti has gone through we saw it coming he came onto the rear end of Cole Edwards very very rapidly so he showed massive pace now he's on the rear end of Carl Bryant the number 13 the red and white livery jib tech cart of Carl Bryant the mechanic for TF Sport in sports car racing. Carl was at Le Mans, as were we, Nick. We were. I remember being there. It yeah. Was, it was quite hot. We didn't win the race, though. No. And neither did Carl, actually. Oh, here got, we go. Yeah, here we Up go. the inside, Zanetti, 27-7. Easy pass in the end. He's got pace, hasn't he? And that pace right at the end of the stretch. 
that runs down to the first turn. So Zanetti, I, I get it. Pickford's been pulling away, but I think that's because Bryant was going slowly rather than Pickford was going quickly. Yes. And yeah, now maybe. Zanetti's passed him. Look how much he's gapped. And as Cole Edwards now has a little tussle and battle with Bryant for that third and fourth place. I would think that very, very quickly Zanetti's going to be on the back of Pickford in saying that. Very, very quickly he is on the back of Zanetti. Yeah. It's two orange and white carts now at the front. Yes, that's very inconvenient. Yeah, they're both the same liveried cart. So As they get towards the first turn, that's the battle for third and fourth. Cole Edwards stays behind Carl Bryant. So we'll just move to the two carts ahead of these two. Paul first. will pick them up. Well yep. done, guys. That's spot on. Into the second. Yeah, there they are. That's our lead battle. Now Zanetti, the second cart in that picture has closed right up to Joshua Pickford, who we thought, Nick, was pulling away from yeah, this field, Pickford's but he hasn't. Got, Pickford's got an issue. He's not enjoying the entry to the horseshoe, and he loses a chunk of time every single time. He's just obviously not... Either he's got it where his car's handling, it's not... Or he's just not got the line. But look at this. The Netty really thinking about... I assume it's his teammate, given the fact they're running exactly the same livery. Yeah, but I they come so. through the S's now. The Netty's right on the tail of Pickford, firing up towards... And then they come to the inside. The Netty now makes a move through the hands hairpin, and... It's going to be happening. Not quite. We had yellow flags, I think, and that card's just been recovered, so maybe we did not have yellow flags at the hand hairpin. And it stays the same with Zanetti now making that move stick and will lead across the line for the first time in this heat with under 90 seconds remaining. Patrick Williams Rahaj has pulled off the track, I think. Yeah, he, he was, was the car lost. that caused that yellow flag. But the yellow flag was taken in as he recovered. Oh no, he's still going round. He's, he's there now. He's gathered his composure. The leader's just behind him there. But just look at the pace of Zanetti. It's, he's been right there in this third and final heat, or fourth and final heat for the 177s. Yep. His third and final heat. So we should see, I mean, the intensity going into the final of this round, the final round, going for a championship is going to be able to be the tension is going to be you're going to be able to cut it with a knife so inside the final 30 seconds or so they could get this two more you know yeah I know I know that's the thing with this short lap here they go but in fairness Pickford now is just dropping off Snetty at two or three tenths a lap third and fourth are interesting again 13 and 39 Edwards and uh Bryant really haven't stopped their battle the entirety of the time. The all-white cart of Cole Edwards looking to pick up the final place on the virtual podium for this race. No podium for the heats, of course. And it's all over the shop. He was leaning very heavily on Bryant. And Bryant was all over, kind of trying to block uh, any forward progress by Edwards coming into the bottom bend. He stood well to keep him back because Cole Edwards came back towards his rear bumper very strongly and, and looks very racy. But Carl keeping his composure... Oh. oh, down the inside, just as I say that. But coming back at him, can he? No, Edwards squeezing onto the apex there. And will come through in third place. They're inside the final lap now. The leaders have already crossed the line. But Cole Bryant's coming back at him and gets alongside. Oh, has he? No, he's had a slot inside. He gets oh. alongside there towards the S's. He's going to have the primary line, but he, he can't just keep... He just could not keep the momentum and the speed up to get himself alongside. And now into the hand hairpin for the final time. Meanwhile, just ahead of these two, which we'll steer with to the flag, Matt Zanetti has already pulled out a gap and is heading towards the chequered flag. As the two leaders cross the line to take the chequered flag, the battle for third still rages on. And can Brian pull alongside? He just can't quite get alongside to the flag. So Matt Zanetti takes the win. Joshua Pickford is in second. Cole Edwards takes third by 56 hundredths of a second from Carl Bryan at the lead there uh, at the line there I should say Oliver Smith fifth Alex Thomas sixth Tim Dollo seventh Steve Gilly eighth ninth Alfie Williams Charlie Jowers was tenth and then we had Jason Bear Neil Hemming Ben Johnson Oliver Moss Alex Jones Ian Branfield James Frost Dan Milner Paul Moran 19th Reese Llewellyn 20th Zach Bolton from the back of the grid to 21st and then we had Lawrence Hilton Mike Edwards Dan Fleckney, Steve Stewart, Tyler Fossey, Keith Mason, 27th, Aidan Hammond, Adrian Smith, and Patrick Williams Rahaj did indeed recover and finish the race.
We have got the third and last ever heat for Minimax. Oh, blimey. As far as I'm aware, on a national level, for the very final time in the United Kingdom. This will be the final time, the very last time you'll see these carts in a heat. In national competition. In, uh, yeah, I think, I mean, some... I'm, some I'm not, run, I'm sure. I'm run, not aware. Run, 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 run karting must exist, doesn't it? Yes, I think so. Just Maybe some IKEA somewhere. Yeah, stick anything yeah, into a heat yeah. to, to get someone a race, I'm sure. But this class will be replaced next year for, in the NKC by the Interclass, which is basically a smaller chassis. Basically a smaller chassis with narrower tyres with the same engine, so a restricted certain restrictions on it. Can anyone read the, what that guy's texting on the corner of our screen? I don't know. Is that not uh, Frank, or is that...? No, it's not one of ours. That's, that's, that's the fixed camera. He's ah, over there standing right, okay. in the corner. He's, yeah, he stopped texting now. All oh, right. He might be listening. Right, Minimax out. There's only seven of them, but I tell you what, stand by for action. It's been the field being led round by championship leader Sebastian Corking. Jensen Cox alongside Max Carlton and basically the class of the field all day long has been Leo Basterfield. He's starting in fourth. We've got Sonny Morgan, the other championship protagonist, will start fifth with Eddie Stewart, our co-commentator, starting in sixth place. Zauri Visarek will start in seventh and final place. So great job being done by Seb Corking. He's with LRG Motorsport and he's in contention for the Minimax Championship. And it'll be the first time LRG has taken a national championship. The first season of racing, actually, LRG came into this. Uh, I'm not sure whether they're going to be back to the NKC for next season, but we'll wait and see. Louis largest team, of course. Here they come then, across the line very, very readily and very calmly. And composed all seven carts. And Seb Corking, oh, as the second place cart of Jensen Cox get a, gets a, a little bit of wheel spin and goes sideways, that's allowed Mark, Max Carlton. Oh, and who's that? Is that Basterfield? It is indeed Basterfield. By the time they got to the S, is already past Max Carlton and charging after Seb Corking. Ooh, coming out wide there was Sonny Morgan as well. So they're all having a bit of a, a scuffle around, but a really good opening uh, couple of uh, stanzas by Sebastian Corking. He's got the problem, he's got Basterfield behind him, though. And they come round top bend for the first time. As far as far you know what, as far as Seb Corking's concerned and the championship's concerned, he can let Leo Basterfield through. As long as he finishes ahead of Sonny Morgan and continues that, that's all he really needs to do. Mm, so Corky from Basterfield. Red and white from just pure white, as we said before. The reason that uh, Basterfield's running a plain white set of uh, pods and a nose is because it saves about a kilo. A kilo of stickers. Because even though Basterfield is in mathematical contention, as long as Seb Corking finishes on his bumper, um, he doesn't have to fight too hard to take this heat win. Even the drop scores? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's why it's so hard to contend with, because you don't know who's, you know, whether this meeting will be someone's dropped score. But um, Basterfield has clearly got the pace here, a clear pigeon, and moves on to the rear bumper of Seb Corking. Is he going to have a look down the inside? Not quite this time. Behind him, Max Carlton, Eddie Stewart, Sonny Morgan. I think it stays the same there through the S's. It does indeed. Sauri Viserek just being dropped off the tail of the fifth place cart of Sonny Morgan. As I say that, he was right with him at the hand hairpin. Yes, he is. He's still, he's still there. Jensen Cox in seventh place. And it's Basterfield following Sebastian Corking. Maybe Around looking, the final turn, Nick. Maybe and across the way light. through, probably he the is. end of the straight. Wants to make it three out of three. And he's got a good chance. Moves to the side. Is Seb going to let him go? Certainly is. Absolutely no attempt to fight that one from Corking. He's got Louis Large on the side of the track, giving him instructions. See him waving at him several times. That's what a team manager is supposed to do. Yeah, he's kind of giving him hand signals that mean, you know, the gap behind you, the gap in, you know, didn't have a gap in front of him. He has now. But he can see that. Seb just has to stay ahead of the rest of the field, really. And as long as he, he only he only loses two points to Basterfield by finishing behind him. And that could be by being connected to his rear bumper or being 30 seconds behind him. It's still only two points def mm. difference, you know. So, thinking championship, I'm pretty sure Seb will have had a pep talk from his dad, Graham, who tends to the cart inside the LRG Motorsport awning. And his man, Mandy, will be pacing up and down like a caged tiger, no doubt. All the way to the final moments of the final. There's a challenge for Sonny, from Sonny Morgan yeah, on got, Eddie Stewart. Past, 
Eddie. Yeah. So Eddie Stewart, he's been lining that one up, hasn't he? Mm. So he's got through. He's got a gap now. It's fourth place for Morgan. Stewart fifth. It's Cassie Viswick in sixth and Jensen Cox in seventh. But third place is Max Carlton. We've not seen much of Max during the season. So solid third place for him in this company. Yeah, he has. He showed, he showed a bit of pace this weekend. He has. He's not sort of... He stayed in and around the, the, the field that he's been racing with, which is all you can ask for. And pretty much all of these seven carts have stayed relatively together. There's only, what, seven seconds in it. I think, yeah, what you've got in this situation is, is, is various carts at the completely different stages of their, yes, of, their, of their hobby or their career. Because some of the guys, this is their, what they've been doing this since they were doing you know, Bambino. This is their sixth or seventh season. Yeah. Other guys and girls, it's the first year. That's right. And there's a huge That's learning right. experience. Not just how, yeah, I'm going to learn how to get around the track. You've got to learn how to race. And it's two completely different things. That's right. Uh, I mean, I, I would like to think that the interclass will be bolstered by the fact that they are, the NKC is moving into line with the MSUK mm. uh, formula for this class of racing. So that gives you scope of, of bringing in uh, people from, you know, other championships and other series, even your local drivers who are running to interclass, smaller chassis, narrower, narrower tyres, but same engines. So they're very fast down the straight, but they're a lot, uh, they're a lot slower which was the point of changing the regulations for this intermediate class between cadet karting and junior Rotax karting. Uh, the cadet Rotax is, of course, Micromax, which is a heavily restricted, same engine, just more, more restriction on it. And there's down the inside has gone Sonny Morgan on Max Carton. And there is now Sonny Morgan on the tail of Sebastian Corking. Sonny Morgan's job is to get ahead of Sebastian Corking and gain points back at him because if he finishes behind, he's not gaining ground, he's losing ground in that championship fight. Yeah, and he was already several points behind him as he came into the season. And of course, the biggest problem is that it's, it's much harder to get a positive swing because even if he wins a race, the worst that can happen for Corkin is seventh. So the most that, you can get yes. is eight points. Yes, that's and correct. And it's, it's obviously 16 points in the final. The, so if, Cork, if he's more than 16 points behind before we hit the final, then already Corking would have won. But I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not surprised that Mandy sort of paces up and down. <laughs> um, thank you. I'm not surprised Mandy paces up and down because it's all about, it's, there's a little bit of attrition comes into it as yeah. well, doesn't it? Isn't well, it? all these carts have been done a whole season. I know bits are regularly replaced. But there are some things you just buy for the year, aren't there? And you, and you then replace them over the winter. Yes, yeah, yeah, very much. You know. You're yeah. always on the edge of reliability. These carts, any, any racing machine is tuned to the point where it can be as quick as it can be and hopefully make the distance, but sometimes you get those two things well, slightly out of whack. They, they tend to be racing stuff is throwaway components, isn't it? Mm. You know, we, we do, there's a lot of throwing away. Sort of just lifing to, stuff, isn't it? You know, yeah, chains like and stuff. Three you know, hours, one, three, one, one, three meetings we have made there, yeah. I used to change me, change me chain every heat. Really? Yeah. Just, a, a lot of just, a, just in a gate. Yeah, ridiculous. Yeah, isn't a lot it? of money. I'll be very rich. Do you know, what? I broke, I broke down in so many ways, but I never remember snapping a chain. <laughs> Trust me, I've, I nipped up. You I broke down. I did. You weren't using the curbs enough, mate. Uh, well, there I don't. You go. I don't think. The in fairness, I don't think there were particularly vicious curbs at uh, the tracks I went to. But I'll part of them particularly vicious curbs. Things settling down now in this Mini Max E3. Did you have a chain break, by the way? Yes, cost us a win. And it's, what is replacing? It still at, broke at Langbar. Yes. Oh, it will smack the curb and it came off. Flipped the chain. Chain didn't break. It just flipped off. Love the fact and it cost this. us the lead of a. Love of the, the fact that really it cost this. us the lead in the whole street race as well. Oh yeah, you told me that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, lead of a heat that is. Yeah, that's the chain. And it cost Hang us on. a heat. Hull, Hull Near street Sunderland. race. Yeah, Hull, <laughs> Lee Sunderland. Yeah. Uh, we are oh, inside okay. the final minute, and the Mini Max third heat has settled down. And as I say that, Sonny Morgan's going to prove he's me to go. be he's talking about, rubbish. Yeah, absolutely, because he needs to Because he's now on the bumper almost. If, if he could get past talking in the next two laps, it would give his, ch his championship chances a massive boost because it would be a two-point swing. A two-point swing. Nick, what's that going to do with it? Well, with any seven cards, a two-point swing is massive. Hmm. That's like getting a five or six or seven-point swing in uh, any of the other classes. Comes down, and he's going to really have to push. I think really now it's a bit of an S or bust really for for, for uh, Sonny. He needs to get past Sebastian because otherwise it doesn't really matter what he does. He's going to be too many points behind when he comes to the final. And you can't rely on a, a well, 52 cart breaking down. Remember, it's double points in the final. Even so, it's the maximum, maximum change is 16. And that doesn't mean the fact that he could drop the mm -hmm. score. So it's, it's really, it's already hard. 
but without getting past, it's going to be probably almost impossible. Well, here comes Leo Basterfield, who will come round to take the one lap to go board, and Leo has clearly been here before because he's been outstanding this weekend. Mm. As Sonny Morgan challenges, oh, it's a bit, uh, it's a bit tight there. He took Eddie Stewart out there in the previous heat. Sebastian Cork with a bit of heads up driving from him. He's Trying driving defensively. defensively. Oh. Oh, and he goes wide. Let's not get naughty, boys. Please keep it tidy. As Seb Corking hangs on to that second place. Leo Basterfield coming through buttons there. And Seb Corking through buttons as well. Sonny Morgan's tried all he can. He did, he did try to intimidate, didn't he? It didn't work, though. He's going to have to finish behind Seb Corking. Using all of the pace and all of that curb He's to keep the going. momentum. Yeah. Leo Basterfield takes his third heat win, 100% finish record. He will start on the pole position for the A final coming up later this afternoon with Seb Corking finishing in second place. That's going to, I'm not sure what the championship table is going to look like going into the final race of the year for these two. Um, Sonny Morgan finishes in third and he also takes fastest lap of the race uh, with a 36.656 for that card. Uh, Max Carlton took fourth. And then we had Eddie Stewart coming through in fifth. Zauri Visarek was sixth. And Jensen Cox, seventh. It's like, you know what, being in here with you two, it's like being in the TB ward. <laughs> I've, got one of, I've got one of you coughing and slutting. And you, you, you're constantly sniffing. And it's like, honestly, the fact that I've only recently got better from bit, I can't, I'm actually certain I'll have something disgusting next week. This is a sickness. I can assure it? you, mate, being in this little box with me and Paul, who are suffering from some sort of lurgy autumn cold lurgy uh, you're going to be you're going to be catching something well hopefully if you have the like, if I gave you that one it's fine I, think I, can't, I, can't, this one. I can't hit back so that's alright I spent all day in a car with you on Monday that is true we went to a car circuit we did we went to the Atlanta Motorsports Park and but more of that later because the TKMs are out for their final heat with Louis Bevan on the pole position with the flex driver Callan Lamont alongside Tom Johnson and Charlie King championship leader are on the second row with Matt Slate and Ben Watson on row three row four is Matthew Horton and Chris Whiteside row five is James Hull and James Workman with Leo Crabtree and Ryan Layton on row six row seven Gordon Smith Ollie Milner Mitchell Ball is on row eight with Jason Lovett and then we've got Will Cregeen and Molly Nicholas Biles Row 10, James King and Joseph Jakes. And then Alexander Lehman and Matthew Temple Purcell round off the 22-card field for this TKM. It was threatening rain earlier, Nick. It's, uh, yeah. It hasn't rained like we predicted it wouldn't. So, Laura Stewart, you were wrong. Oh, blimey. Change your app. A bit aggressive. Yes, she was wrong. <laughs> she was wrong. How could you? No, nope, it's, nice ra- it's nice to finally have a round without any sort of rain. Because <laughs> we've been mizzled yeah, on every single time. We haven't always had massive rain, but we have mizzle and drizzle. And we had a couple of... Have a, uh, um, but anyway, final TKM... He obviously is underway, and it's a good start from the one of our reigning champion, Louis Bevan. He's doing not to retain that. Can Lamont I think he's going to drop into third, actually, and it's going to be Tom Johnson in second. Lamont won the first heat, and then effectively DNF the second one, so he's halfway house in the whole thing, so he's not going to be that right at the front of the whatever happens. And indeed, it is a good lead early on for Bevan and behind him. It is the 42. Johnson and Lamont again that second that position on the left hand side you just don't want it you don't want to get involved with it it's Matt Slade behind him it's Matt Slade behind Callan Lamont it's Tom Johnson though chasing down Louis Bevan as they cross the line to complete one lap one lap completed it's Bevan Johnson Lamont Matt Slade Charlie King in fifth Matthew Horton sixth Leo Crabtree Ben Watson Mitchell Ball up into ninth already he started in 15th so that's a great first lap for Mitchell and it's Gordon Smith who rounds off the top ten. Yeah, the red and white helmet of Mitchell Ball goes into the hands hairpin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eighth at the moment. The rest of the field relatively settled. Near Crabtree in the 44, still seventh. So that'll be the next target for Ball. But we're looking on the screen at our reigning champion, Louis Bevan, in the red and white cart. And he's followed down as they all streak by. Not too much ducking, ducking and dicing at the moment. One cart left behind, which is the 91 of Alexander Lehman. He had think, a problem early on. I haven't said it today, have I, Nick? I haven't said it. You're say this it. is a high-speed <laughs> game of chess we were seeing here. I didn't, do you know what? I think because the track's so short, yeah. it's not quite... Because you think about it, if you've got a circuit and so it's got two overtaking opportunities, but it's 50 seconds long, 
and this track's got 200 minutes, it's 35 seconds long, you've got a lot more chance to get past in a, yeah, in a I timed heat. I, I also and I think, think that's why people are constantly attacking. I also think, though, that, that certainly in TKM, the level of driving is so high in this championship that there, there was very little opportunity and as I say that Charlie King oh. just, made, just uses a tin opener to open that gap to Matt Slade and get by him so now we've got Charlie King who's now behind Callum Lamont on the road got a little bit of a gap to make up but I'm pretty sure he's going to make that up very quickly yeah and that's going to worry Mitchell Ball isn't it because that's the man who's fighting for the championship and Ball currently stuck in eighth has been there for a couple of laps so he needs to try and start moving forward because his main rival, Charlie King, has moved forward to fifth and is now trying to close down, that, sorry, to fourth, and he's now trying to close down the gap to Carl Lamont in third as they go round the bottom bend again. Into the S's then. And Bevan not really losing Tom Johnson and Carl Lamont. And Charlie King not gaining ground as rapidly as I thought he might. That just shows the pace of the top three. Matt Slade behind, not dropping off the back of Charlie King either. Matthew Horton 6th, Leo Crabtree 7th, Mitchell Ball 8th, Ben Watson 9th, Gordon Smith still 10th. And it's pretty much line astern all the way through that mm. top 10. Here they come then, five laps completed. Tom Johnson getting right behind that steering wheel to reduce the airflow. But he's not really gaining any ground. And Charlie King gains a little bit to Callum Lamont, but not a massive amount. He pulls away from Matt Slade. So Charlie King is coming back. We're not even at half distance yet. We're about two laps, maybe a lap and a half away from half distance. So still very much all to play for. And if anything, Callan Lamont looks like he might be getting towards having a go Tom Johnson. As Louis Bevan completes six laps, he's pulled out perhaps the biggest gap we've seen. Four it tenths. Was, yeah, it's no, a, half, no, sorry, it's, six it's tenths. a half a second. Six yeah. tenths, yeah. Guess who's fastest on the track, though? Uh, is it Callum Lamont? It's Charlie King. Okay. 36.6 his lap time. So he's gained... Look at that. Look at the gap he's gained to Callum Lamont. He's right on his bumper now. Yeah. So the yellow and blue... The yellow and white cart is what we're talking about there. That's Callum Lamont on the 23. Now, behind him is the number 26. Ahead of him is the 42, Tom Johnson. But behind him is the 26. Now, Charlie King has been... A very, very hard driver to beat in this class all season long. He's had some cracking results. He was, at one point in the season, I've yet to confirm whether or not he's won the British Championship in TKM. But he was certainly leading the NKC. Callan Lamont looking down the inside of Johnson. Yeah. Yeah, Callan Lamont's getting a bit impatient now. Yeah, Bevan's he's getting in, Oh, away. there he is. There he's he gone is. down the inside into the horseshoe. So you can see Bevan getting away. And he knows he needs to get some points in this race just so he can get himself up the grid somewhat after that DNF in heat two. He's now fighting hard with to try and stay ahead of Johnson. But Johnson, I think, is probably going to lose that third place to Charlie King any second now. And that second being now. Oh, and that was just, again, Charlie King forcing the issue into Billy's blind and then keeping that issue being forced all the way to the S's and just making himself, making space for him. And now he's past Tom Johnson and after Callum Lamont once again. But the key thing is that Mitchell Ball's also making progress now. He's been stuck in eighth for a while. He's now up to fifth. So this is the battle of the points. They're now uh, not quite lying the stern because, of course, King's now in third. Ball in fifth. So it is a points drop. It's two points he'll be losing on King, who is obviously still very much the favourite for this class. As Lamont comes under increasing pressure from King. A watching brief from Tom Johnson, the 42 car, and then the red and white helmet, red overalls of our number two man who came second championship last year, Mitchell Ball. So our championship, uh, our reigning champion is out and leading, but you say he's got very little chance to retain the championship for a third yeah, time. Yeah, not the way Charlie King's going. Charlie King has had three strong heats. He's having another, his third and final heat of the season is, again, it's very, very strong. He's, uh, he's, he's gaining on Callan Lamont, and I'm not sure... Whether, I mean, there's plenty of time. One, you know, one minute and forty seconds around Clear Pigeon. There's plenty of time. We saw how he he gained and gained and gained on Tom Johnson, and then made the move. He, he's lining Callan Lamont up, isn't he? And here we go once again, trying to see. Just he's lining him up. He's just seeing where he can make that move. And his favourite place is through the first turn of Billy's blind, 
and then into the S's. Let's see if he can shape him up here through the final turn and across the line. It'll be 11 laps completed, will it? Yes, it will. And this point here, this is where he makes move. He makes the move there, and then he continues that round the inside, which sizes him up for the ideal line through the S's. And again, that's how he's made the move pretty much this whole race. And that's another point further away from Mitchell Ball, another point nearer the championship for Charlie King. Eases him out of the way there. Karen Lamont, he's been a good run this time here at Clay Pigeon, but couldn't put up with the sheer force of pressure. I don't think at this point that King is going to be able to get to, uh, to Bevan. It's too far to go with two or three laps. It's over a second or just actually on a second. Three now with the Mitchell Ball can make some places up as Karen Lamont gets kind of all kerfuffled up with the 42 of Johnson as they go around the bottom bend. Ball's waiting to pick up the pieces in this, this third, fourth and fifth battle into the hairpin. I think Ball needs to be a little bit more aggressive. He's going to make the point. He's looking up the inside of the horse. He's made He's a gone. place on Johnson. Can he hold it? Can he hold it? Yes, he has managed to hold it in. He didn't go drift wide. Got Johnson right in his wheel tracks. And now he wants to see if he can get past Lamont as well. That will reduce the damage. But in fairness to what I said earlier, uh, King is really gaining on Bevan. I think he's just not going to have enough time to do anything about it. So I think he will remain in second. We're on the last lap now. Can Bevan, who's actually a little bit wide, just trying to creep across and therefore keep Lamont behind him and Troy Johnson behind him. And in fact, it's actually uh, Matthew Horton is also getting involved with that one right now. But is, is Mitchell Borg going to be able to make one more position? Or is he going to lose those one, two, three points to his championship rival? And it looks to me like he is. Okay, okay, coming over the line any second now will be our leader. And it is going to be our winner, Louis Bevan. But he got the lap and Charlie King would have got him. And here's third and fourth as well. And it continues that way. And Ball loses yeah, maybe, a couple of points. Maybe another two or three laps, Nick. And Charlie yeah. Charlie King would have had him. Um, at, but you know what? Another two or three laps would give us the length of time for our uh, heats coming up later. 12 minutes and one lap for our, for our finals, I should say, not heats. Um, these heats are slightly shorter. Louis Bevan took uh, a very much a lights to flag win there with Charlie King gaining ground. The gap at the end was just four tenths of a second there at the end. Callan Lamont hung on to third place, kept Mitchell Ball back in fourth. Matthew Horton came through to fifth. Tom Johnson ended up sixth. Ben Watson seventh. Matt Slate eighth. Ninth was Leo Crabtree. Ollie Milner was tenth. Joseph Jakes up from the back of the grid was 11th and then we had Matthew Temple Purcell, James Hull, Ryan Layton, Molly Nicholas Biles, Chris Whiteside, James Workman, Will Cregeen, Alexander Lehman, James King and Gordon Smith rounded off the 21 cart field. We are we have concluded our heats for the no, season, Nicholas. No. How that, could that have happened? That is the last heat of the 2023 Junction 6 NKC Championship. Well, well that means what happens now? Uh, what means what it means now is we go into our heat. Uh, no, sorry, no, sorry. No, let's sorry, do that again. Hang on, a second. I'll come in again. So what happens now? We go into our finals, <laughs> oh! Nick. The first one being <laughs> brilliant. The first, not like playing up your part, is it? <laughs> the first one being junior road tax. Yes, B four qualifiers. Yes, four bump up. Yes, four four qualifiers up. I like we've, bump up. That's right. We're bump up, right? Okay, so we've got seven carts qualified for the. Um, for the B final and interestingly it's Levi Earl on the pole position in the B oh final dear. he's had an absolute nightmare hasn't he um, the championship by the way is pretty much settled uh, our champion elect is Mason Perrin Levi Earl however currently at this moment lies second uh, and he's he's on a, a you know damage limitation exercise now starting the B final from pole So, just the seven carts, we said. And if Joe passes me the grid, I will read it out, but he's, just, he's got fat fingers. Uh, in the other own pole, Jay Levitt in second, Jamie Salter, who uh, is in third, George Kay is in fourth, uh, Daniel Davis is in fifth, Yoan Hughes is in sixth, and uh, Lucy Love is in seventh. We've actually only got six carts running, so I'm not sure who's not there. So, only six come out for the B final. So um, it's a, a two-thirds chance of bumping up. Jamie Salter. Jamie Salter's there. You've got Leverton Salter. George Kay. Kay's there. It's Levi Earl is not there. Levi Earl is not there. Uh, you must have decided to date his drop school. Ah, right. Okay. That could be. 
And uh, but that's his season over then. Levi Earl's season is done. But the season. Cumbrian driver yeah. is done. You're looking forward to the Rower at O-Plate, that's for sure. Oh, he could Thank be you. looking forward to our Autumn Cup. Here we go then. Absolutely. B-Final. Four drivers can qualify. That means there's only two going to go home after this one. It's another eight minute and one uh, eight minute and one lap length of race and they're already out of the S's and all six carts remain in the race they all fan out into the hand hairpin and then sort themselves out towards the horseshoe for the first time it's the number 44 G11 Ooh. he's with uh, Paul Ozan's race team Ozan Racing took way too much curb there on the uh, exit of uh, the middle part of uh, first season horseshoe, yeah. first season for G and he's had uh, he's had a cracking season really he showed he showed promise in some very intense and pressured situations and he is in another intense and pressured situation leading this B final round. Mm. The first four pulling away from Lucy Lovell and Ian Hughes. As he go through the hand hairpin and on towards the horseshoe. Into the left hander. No one being dropped at the moment. Battle really at the moment the closest is fifth to sixth where Lucy Lovell is trying to get past the Iron Hughes I think she's done it so the 16 cart so it's Daniel Davies who is the fourth cart in that frame yep and that's four the, and five is where it's all about yeah that's the um, that's the last of the qualifiers so Lucy Lovell and Ian Hughes need to absolutely need to get on terms with Daniel Davies and maybe challenge as they continue on then. Jill Everton looking very comfortable at the front of this field. George Kane second. Jamie Salter is in third. Let's just drop back to that second place, Paul. Thanks, Ash. Well done. That's the battle that we want to focus on there because there may be some changes. And this these five carts out of six. Mm. Second, third, fourth, fifth and sixth. With fourth place being the final qualifying position. And now coming together, and there's a move by Ian Hughes yeah. down the inside. Did it come off, Nick? I'm not no, sure. No, he didn't. No, he stayed in uh, in in fifth. He's got Lucy Love behind him in sixth. And she is certainly not being dropped. She's going snapping about. But that attempted move has dropped him, uh, dropped Ian off the back of Daniel. So Dan Davis now is happier in fourth. But the, as you see, second, third and fourth having a right old go at it. And the key thing here is not to take each other off. Yeah, that's the key. Well, there's a challenge for that final yeah, qualifying position. Not quite. Ian Hughes does come onto the rear bumper through that first part of the track, uh, the first part of the lap here, mm. and then around the, this part of the lap, he seems to drop Whoa! off the back, and we've got a lost wheel. Who's that? I'm not sure whether that was. That's a 79 oh, of George K. George Let's see K that again. Out. See what happened. Did he get the wheel knocked off? The wheel fall off. I think he started to lose. He started to lose the wheel here. Oh, it has been and, hit. And, yeah, but that it was hit because the wheel was coming right. off. Right. Okay. You know, you got your you flat out, your foot's on the right. and, and if the cart ahead just stutters, which I think was happening there when the wheel was coming off. Is it sheared off? Looks, it yeah, it looked like the uh, the stub axle was still attached to the uh, the, the the rear axle. So it's unscrewed uh, itself, which is weird. Well, it's we've got a, we've got a race now because. There is the number 14 of Daniel Davies, who's moved into second. 37 is Jamie Salter. Lucy Lovell is now the final qualifier. Nope, she's not. She's, she's not, because Ian Hughes is ahead. Got again. Yeah. So these four, th per many three from four, as I used to say, we did the pools back in the, well, before everyone's time was watching, really. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. And they come, oh, way too much curb for Dan Davis there. He was all over the shot point in the wrong direction. He's lost all the momentum. This is what's happening. They're making one mi they're all making little mistakes and it's just keeping the pack together. It's a great fight for the final and qualifying position though. Lucy's now back into a, a, a qualifying position because the 37 of Jamie Salter's dropped down to the non-qualifying position. Jay Levs is missing out on all of this. Yeah, he, none of this he, he'll be happy and Paul Lausanne will be happy to see him do that and qualify to the year final. Looking uh, both ways now into the bottom bend. Just dropping um, yeah, they are. a little bit. Yeah. But I think that maybe the sort of obviously the advantage he has is that the last card as they battle all around this uh, more twisty part of the track as it up the inside came Ian Hughes, oh, I did think. He, did, did he weave him through there? I did he weave him through there? They're all four come together. Well, Lucy's it, now, now to, ahead of um, Dan Davis. 
Yeah, yeah, that was always the case. And yeah, yeah, 37 gyms. No, 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 Lucy Lovell's there. No, she's the 16. All right, yes, yeah. so she is, yeah. <laughs> How did that happen? I mean, I saw just I mean, four cards come together. Um, and, then, and then just, just like... Yeah, Salter needs to find a bit... Out of Salter needs to find a bit of pace, actually, because he's... Despite... He was being dropped. They admitted the mistake there by Dan Davis has, has pulled him back forward again. So it's Lowell from Davis. Lovell, Davies, Jamie Salter beginning to draw and these two are beginning to pull away aren't they it's Ian Hughes got Lucy a bit Lovell stretchy now isn't it yeah it's got they've, a little they've bit spaced stretchy. out a bit they've stopped mucking about with each other and it's like that's not a, that's not a great line that's too wide people get away with it though that was a bit of a metaphorical fist fight that lot yeah well, settling down two and a half minutes remaining yeah the fourth and fifth is the key point though, obviously um let's see what these two because this is, this is where there may be a change but not wishing to, to cast aspersions on Jamie. He doesn't really appear to have the pace at the moment. Lucy Lovell got really sideways coming out of the S's and that's allowed, uh, that's allowed Daniel Davis to get back on terms. Sorry, it was Daniel Davis who went sideways and Jamie Salter yep. coming back you, at him. You're having a problem with your purple cards, aren't you? I'm, I'm, I'm having a problem with my 16s and my 14s. <laughs> <to be honest. laughs> yeah, Lucy Lovell's gone. That's, that's, Jamie, uh, that's Daniel Davis there and Jamie Salter in the, uh, the blue and green. Livery card, the white nose of the 14, quite distinctive. Four and five. He lost George K a while ago with that uh, issue with his wheel no longer being attached to the cart. Uh, so these two now, Jamie Salter, if he wants to make this A file, is going to have to start putting a push on because he's just looking like he's lost pace. You know, this is la he's done several meetings on these tyres. It the, could be the last few laps for them, but he's just just eking backwards if that's possible to eke backwards <laughs> eke backwards um, and it's looking quite good for Dan Davis at the moment yeah I'm not I'm not sure whether well, I'm not sure whether Jimmy Salter has, has got the pace to be able to get on terms with that cart ahead of him I'm not sure whether that is the case um, with only one minute remaining we're getting towards the very much the final stages Jill Everton has got a two second gap and he may be now in a position to just pace himself and save a bit of life in those tyres. They've had a hard season, only two sets per season in the Junction 6 NKC. Oh, and there, as I say that, Jamie Salter gains an advantage because Daniel Davies had that cart absolutely sideways at one point coming through oh. the final turn. And it looks like, talk about tyre life, I think that was a tyre limited situation there. As Daniel Davies slid wide going through Billy's blind, the first bend. And Salter's now qualifying. Salter has now got himself into the final qualification Incredible. position. Incredible. Looking Jim. out of it, looking out of it pace-wise. Now, that what happens now is Dan Davies has really got to put on his big boy pants and push hard and see if he can get a grip. I think he's got the pace on Salter if he's, if he's got the grip. That's the question. Yeah, 33 seconds on the clock as Jay Leverton came through they're lapping in 35 so it's going to be the one lap to go board next time by so they're on the penultimate lap so Jamie Salter who is now ahead of Daniel Davies has to do it for one and a half more laps it's just we've lost timing I think Nick oh right okay let's count down for me it's fine let's count down you know we've got that oh, right, okay. updated yeah oh, right. 14 is the 37 is now ahead of the 14. It's not a there. It's a problem. It's 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 a pro we've got a yeah. problem in the, in the, in the uh, last in the lap area. board out. I'm afraid there's an issue with the timing in the... In the uh, well, the last lap board is out, so we know we've got one more lap, so we can we can monitor this. As Jill Everton, Ian Hughes, Lucy Lovell are off in first, second and third, and this battle for fourth now. As we see, Jamie Slater ahead of Daniel Davies. Just lifting that inside rear wheel perfectly there into the horseshoe. And now the final stages into the final turn. And it'll be Jamie Salter who will be the final qualifier into the air final along with Lucy Lovell in third, Ian Hughes in second and Jay Leverton in first. Uh, commiserations to both Daniel Davies and George Kay. I hope they've enjoyed their 2023 Junction 6 NKC season. And I hope indeed that we'll find them back here on the grid for the 2024 championship. That's where that's where Daniel Davis kind of lost out. And he, he'd gotten sideways at the uh, at one point on the track earlier. And then again, just trying to 
eke a bit of pace into that final turn in the car, just giving up the ghost and giving up the grip. So a little bit unfortunate for them. We're in our next B final. It will be our senior Rotax B final. We've got uh, 11 carts qualified through. Uh, James Wood running the running Venator engines. He's had a bit of a bit of a, a, a dire uh, three heats phase. Uh, two retirements and then a pretty strong finish in the top ten. I think if my memory serves me right. It might be wrong there. He's got Joel Bowden alongside him. Jody Fox and Henry Stratton are on the second row. Dan Andrews and a character building day for Ethan Wyatt alongside him on row three. Grizzly Davies and Matt Lewin are on row four. Liam Deedman and Rob Statham are on row five. And then James Burgess and Luke Evans. Luke Evans, number three. Um, third in the championship last year. And uh, with it all to do, not having a very good day to round off his season. The championship going into this B final in senior Rotax looks like this. We've got uh, Kyle Dunford leading the championship going into the A final from Oli Varney. Uh, 1,066 points to 1,059. So literally seven points in it between Dunford and Varney. Finley Watson's third on uh, 1,026. And then just two points behind them, Bobby Rosier and Charlie Walsh. On 1,024 and 1,014. 984 for Adam Rogers in 6th. 7th is Kieran Gifford. And Paul Lausanne is in 8th. 9th is Matthew Lambert. And 10th, rounding off the top 10, is Braden Hill. They are the seeded drivers at the moment going forward into 2024. However, we have got the year final to get through. So there's still plenty of action and drama left before we can crown our champions. Just talk amongst yourselves while I sorry, I'm just sorry. sort I'm out I'm some sorry, paperwork I'm sorry, the for, for the grids. I know, I know you are. Uh, we've got uh, situations in all of our classes now, thanks to Will Wren, our timekeeper. He's been he's managed to keep a tab on the finishing positions, um, which gives us an idea of what the championships are looking like going into the final, which is excellent, br brilliant job from Will. So we've got a senior row tax again. It's the first four that counts. And the first four on the grid, James Wood, Joel Bowden, Jody Fox, Henry Stratton, will not want to get involved with anybody else other than what they have to. And will come through. They'll want to be part of this A final going forward to this afternoon. They've got six starters. Well, there was 11 qualified. <laughs> there are six running at the moment. So we've got a problem with timing, Nick. Yeah, I, I think that's because you haven't got timing. I haven't got timing. I think timing's broken from the uh, yes from here again. Yeah, it's going to be a bit tricky then. Oh, we've got we've got something back. No, no. Uh, senior B formation possibly. Is this senior Rotex formation? Or is this, this is senior? Rotex? Yeah. Don't know. Um, there's. A, yeah. Sorry about this. It's, it's not anything to do with us this time. It's actually just to do with that the fact that the timing's not going into the ether in the first place. Well, we've got Joel Bowden, Dan Andrews, Grace Lee, Davies, Henry Stratton, Ethan White and Rob Statham that have come out to try and qualify into the final uh, of Senior Rotex, the year final, that is. Joel Bowden is currently on the pole position uh, with Dan Andrews alongside. Grace Lee, Davies and Henry Stratton are on the second row. And then Ethan White and Rob Statham. So there's quite a few drivers have called it a, called it a year. Yes. Called it a season. I've called it a year. Yes. I've Here we go. Then. Year, I've called it a year. I remember top four qualify through to the year final. Oh, and we've got contact oh, already. Oh, dear. And that's the first three carts have gone off. Who is that that's uh, inherited everything? It's Ethan Wyatt. 34. Dan Andrews had the problem. Let's watch that one again while we can. And they're just outbreaking themselves. The oh, 34 of yeah, Dan well, Andrews. In just fairness, the 34 was causing that problem. So the yeah. fact that he uh, ended up sort of bite a bit isn't quite such an issue. Yeah, but a bit unfortunate there going in. Like I say, that's a very, very tricky part of any kind of track when you're turning and braking with the, the brakes only on the rear axles on these carts. So it's very, very... You need a very delicate left foot to squeeze that brake pedal and just feel the grip and the cart slow down. So Joel Bowden is our leader. Cart... Is that cart 13, Nick? 
as we continue round then it's not cart 13 in the lead it's uh, Ethan Ethan Wyatt is in the lead I'm gonna have to keep a, a handwritten lap score here Paul back to old school we're still we're still sorting out maybe the internet has fallen out here at clear pigeon again so Ethan Wyatt then the number 13 of Joel Bowden that's the first two the last of the qualifiers is the number 120 of Henry Stratton well now we've got something appearing Ethan Wyatt Joel Bowden Henry Stratton Grace Lee Davies is number 16 Currently in fourth, Rob Statham and Dan Andrews. Dan Andrews that with that off at the first turn. Cart 13 there, Joel Bowden chasing after Ethan Wyatt. If we drop back, another two guys. We can pick up the number, I think it's the number 16 of Grace Lee Davies. She is our, Grace is our final qualifier. We'll qualify through to the air final. The 120 is about to get a mechanical for oh, a really? rear bumper drop yeah oh dear right and I was down to sort of the timing people I think we sort of back with the timing it's having a bit of a time but it was supposed to be back yes we are we're back sort of frozen-ish <laughs> yes we're back it dropped out again mm. it happens we're in rural Dorset yeah and there's the mechanical uh, that <laughs> really was a drop bumper as well the rear bumper had basically fallen off it was in that first corner melee of, uh, course. of course yeah yes that was what did that so that's going to change things up. We've now got qualifiers. Ethan Wyatt, Joel Bowden, Henry Stratton. Oh, that's gone again. Just as I was beginning to get mm. back. Henry Stratton's the one that's pulled off. So Grace Lee Davies and Rob Statham will be the final two qualifiers in four. Dan Andrews currently in fifth. Yeah, I think we lost time again, haven't we? Yes, we have. Difficult. Yeah, this is... Not Hopefully we'll get that sorted for the finals or else it's going to be uh, mm. a bit of an underwhelming um, end to the season. So the, the race here, the B final, being led by Ethan Wyatt. Just in the background there, just coming through. Joel Bowden in the, on the number 13 is second. Henry Stratton has gone off and into the pits with a mechanical flag. So it's Grace Lee Davies in third, Dan Andrews fourth, Rob Statham currently fifth. So Dan Andrews has indeed taken over that position for Rob Statham as the final qualifier. So see if we can find number 34, Dan Andrews, uh, guys, out there. As he is the fourth place cart and the final qualifier into the year final. Just there wait for the rest of the field come through. Yeah, he's the red one. He's just coming through buttons now and into the final turn. That's him there. He's got uh, uh, quite a healthy 11 seconds, so I'm not quite sure what happened to Rob Statham, who was ahead of him at one point. So Dan, after that, he'd be relieved after that off at turn one at the start. He's now able to start the year final coming up later in the day so all he's got to do Nick is continue round and continue fighting on he's got a gap towards Grace Lee Davies that seems to be coming down mm. but I'm doing it visually I'm not using yeah, it so I'm not using the, the timing is coming and going in the worst possible way yeah I'm not using the timing I'm not using a stopwatch I'm just using it visually um, you still got a bit of ground to make up but uh, it is slightly coming down you can just see the pink helmet of Grace Lee Davies there just in the foreground just ahead of him and Dan Andrews just getting his head down just very composed in the seat there. Into the final turn. There's the pink helmeted Grace Lee Davies. Currently in third. Grace there just uh, will know that she's in a qualifying position. No need to push too hard. Doesn't really need to close the gap to Joel Bowden ahead. And equally, Joel Bowden doesn't really need to close that 4.8 second gap to Ethan Wyatt. So we'll see these 
Drivers just uh, eating the clock up with just under two minutes remaining. We have got, after this senior all tax B final, we've got one more B final left. 13 carts have qualified for the B final. We'll see how many carts actually want to come out and compete. As we've seen, there is, uh, there's been a bit of a difference of opinion as to whether or not they want to continue their season or call it a year, call it the season and finish at that point. We'll have a look at that 177 grid in a moment as we are just a few seconds away now or inside the final minute of this one. Ethan Wyatt has extended the lead to 6.1 seconds. Ethan here being run by his dad and his brother Sam. Sam, El Sam Wyatt, our current 2022 junior Rotax champion, actually. Hmm. Moved up into seniors. We'll see him out later in the senior Rotax A final. Now racing with Ethan, who's just moved up to juniors a couple of rounds ago, if my memory serves. Oh, and there, there's, the, there's the gap coming down. We're inside of 40 seconds I've got some now. rain. There's rain. We've got rain. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's marvellous. Well, well, that can't wasn't get any forecast worse. at all. <laughs> <laughs> Timing's gone glinch. That, that rain started. Yeah, that wasn't forecast at all. So I'm not sure whether we're going to see this uh, little splash of very light rain coming down at the towards the first turn here. Whether or not that will affect the track conditions. We're inside 20 seconds now. So there's Ethan Wyatt just going into the braking area of turn one. And you know what? It does look like it might affect. Uh, we'll, we'll see on the lap times. And we're, seeing, we're actually seeing a change of lap time. 41 seconds for Ethan Wyatt. So it is affecting the track. So conditions changing for Ethan Wyatt. Joel Bowden in second. Grace Lee Davies third and Dan Andrews now right on Grace Lee Davies tail but does not Grace doesn't really need to fight for this and she hasn't no. she's let him through or she comes back through <laughs> doesn't let you know fighting in the most sort of passive sort of way passive aggressive these fighting. two yeah because Grace is qualified <laughs> qualified on the back on the, the grid for the year final. Is the rain coming down any area or is it blue over? Stopped here, I think. Yeah, we have dampened the track though. Certainly into this part of the track there, the first corner. Can't well, do an def def can't do a race. Down. Can't do an NQC without any rain, can we? That'd be no, fine. That's a good idea. Yeah, definitely change it's just the a tiny, track conditions. Yeah, it's a tiny cloud that's blowing over to the left hand side. I mean it's got quite a bit of rain that you think if it doesn't come across, but you know. Check it flag flies then for Ethan Wyatt. Who has taken the win in the B final? There he is there. Oh, this is, slides very wide. Lift his hands off the wheel. That'll be a great photograph for Gaz Bury to put on the social media pages of the NKC. Joel Bowden finishes in second. Dan Andrews third. Grizzly Davies the final qualifier in fourth place for the year final. Rob Statham will come through in fifth. And then we had Henry Stratton pull off with that mechanical problem. The rear bumper coming off after that first corner incident at the start of that race. We are now going into our very last final, B, very last B final of the season. This time it's for the 177 class. We've got 17 carts, sorry, 14 carts that have qualified. Um, Dan Millward, qualifies on the pole Paul Moran alongside Zach Bolton's had a bit of a nightmare today he's in uh, on third place on the second row alongside Patrick Williams Rohaj uh, Alfie Williams and Oliver Moss are on row three Dan Fleckney and Michael Mallett are on row four row five is Brendan Smith and Adrian Smith with Tyler Fossey and Aidan Hammond on row six Alan Cook and Simon Wheeler are the drivers that round off on row, so, row seven with 14 carts qualifying, let's see how many we get out. There's quite a few. There is quite a few. Nine carts have popped out in front of us and have taken to the track. Sorry, 11. Just letting the timing catch up. Dan Millward, Millward and Paul Moran. 
Zach Bolton is there. William Patrick Williams Rahaj is there. Alfie Williams is there. Oliver Moss. Adrian Smith, Michael Mallet, Tyler Fossey, Aidan Hammond and Simon Wheeler are there. So we've got 11 carts that are going to squabble over the first four places. So Dan Millward on the number 22. We've got Paul Moran on the triple seven number. Hello to Helen, his wife. I think it's his wife. Did he get married? I don't know. Look, he's got another court correspondent. his wife. If he's not married, he might as well be. Makes his Sunday dinner. Here we go. All nicely ordered as ever. The 177 certainly know how to do this properly. And Dan Millward shows that he knows too. As we get things underway into turn one. It is the number 22. We have got a slippery track there. We see carts being very, very tentative. And we've got Millward, Moran, and then Zach Bolton. Patrick Williams, Rahaj, I think, behind Zach Bolton. Down the inside, and Moran has gone. Moran Ooh. has spun off. He just outbraked himself. The car slew well, sideways, then. and he just lost it into the hand hairpin for the first time, and that will put Paul out of contention. This might be his last heat or last race of the season. There, just challenging. Look, Ooh. oh, and he's, does he? Did he put the leader off? He has. That's left. So he's took the leader out, Dan Millward, as well. So that has allowed Zach Bolton through and will lead the B final. Patrick Williams, Raw Hutch second, Oliver Moss third. Alfie Williams fourth, Michael Mallet fifth, Tyler Fossey, Aidan Hammond, Simon Wheeler, Adrian Smith, and it's Paul Moran and Dan Millward who was taken out by Moran, who just lost his lost his composure completely there, didn't you, Paul? I'm pretty sure he'll be slapping himself when he sees that one back. I've done that. I've yeah, done that yeah, before. We've all, done we've all done that. Here come the leaders then. It's Zach Bolton, Patrick Williams Raj, Oliver Moss, and Alfie Williams, the final qualifier into the air final there in the white and purple cart at the tail of the field down into second goes Alfie Williams and almost hits the back end of Zach Bolton and with Patrick Williams Rahaj getting hung out to dry a little bit losing momentum he's found himself in fourth and now being challenged by Oliver Moss that's all happening in this one okay it's 177b and they're trying to get those top four positions. Oh, that's Oliver Moss ahead of Patrick Williams. Or it's Michael Mallet, I think, or Tyler Fossey was the challenge there coming through in fifth place. What number is that? 115. 105. Yeah, eight. Tyler Fossey. So Williams Rahaj is now going to come under pressure from Tyler Fossey for that fourth and final qualifying position. <coughs> As I say that, Williams Rahaj looking down the inside of Oliver Moss. Not quite able to make that happen, though. Has to slot in behind. Meanwhile, at the front, Zach Bolton has Alfie Williams right on his bumper. Coming through the final turn. There they are there. Into turn one, Alfie Williams takes the lead of the B final. From LRG, Zach Bolton behind these two. That's the important positions. The yellow helmet and the white helmet there. The KR Sport, the Cosmic livery of that number 144 of Oliver Moss has got Patrick Williams Rahaj right on his tail. Now, Williams Rahaj, Nick, will want to get ahead of Oliver Moss and leave him in, him in the vulnerable position. Yep. Oh, and there he goes. That's what he wanted. That's what he wanted to do. And now he's got Oliver Moss with Simon Wheeler has come up to be the first challenger. So both KR uh, Cosmic livery cuts. And there's the move. Into fourth place has gone Simon Wheeler. So it's Williams from Zach Bolton, Oliver Moss, Patrick Williams, Raj. Bolton unlucky to be in this one after running in a good first heat but breaking down. And they swoop around the bottom corner. 95. For the first two are away. And there's just three, four, five and six. We're currently in that bogey position, Oliver Moss with a 144. 
And up the inside. I don't think that's, 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 he's got the fact that 115 now of, of uh, Tyler. If we've got 114 and the 155. It's all a pain in the backside. 144. Too many. Why do these three numbers come from? I don't know. I don't know. Tyler Fossey it is. Name it 1 to 35. It's fine. <laughs> that's right. I know. Yeah, yeah. 1 to 50 will do. See, the driver's going to be decided this afternoon, of course. Like me. Going into 2024. Uh, the current four qualifying positions are Alfie Williams, Zach Bolton, Patrick Williams, and now Simon Wheeler. But Tyler Fossey wants to make that uh, change, doesn't he? Tyler Fossey moving right onto the rear bumper of Simon Wheeler. This is the race. We've got uh, just over three and a half minutes remaining in this one. So still plenty of time. And with that rain having doused the track ever so slightly, making conditions into turn one this corner here uh, Billy's blind very very tricky indeed the, wi the wind has blown away the rain and now we've gone back to full consistent conditions with lap times of 35 seconds which we're more familiar with it certainly had uh, a, a very quick influence on the track did that little splash of light rain so it just shows on slick tyres it takes absolutely nothing to uh, to do that Looks like it's settled down for fourth place inside the getting inside two two and a half minutes remaining. For the number one one five Tyler Fossey. He's dropped off dropped off the back bumper of Simon Wheeler. Simon Wheeler's pulled out a cushion. And I'm not going to say comfortable because it's never comfortable driving a cart around any track. And especially here, the fast sweeps of Clear Pigeon are very, very tricky indeed. Lots of braking and turning at various points on this track make things very, very difficult indeed. So it really is lots of G through this part here and then switch back to the right hand as a very fast corner to finish the lap at uh, top bend there out of there and across the line that's Tyler Fossey doing everything he can trying to get some uh, trying to cool that engine down they've got a dashboard of these drivers that tell them what the water temperature is the cooling temperature on these 125cc Rotax engines and when they see the engine reach a certain temperature usually 75 degrees they will open the flap on the radiator does that, let does it that cool give down. you more power or do you just stop thinking it starts melting? losing power if it stops right. if it stops uh, if it gets too hot right you've got to keep it it's very narrow window of, of, of heat range that you have to keep it at relatively narrow you know yeah. so now down to just over a minute to go So we are in the throes of having four qualifiers into the year final. Zach Bolton's, Zach Bolton's season's not quite over. He's uh, coming under pressure from Patrick Williams Rahaj again. Zach at the moment qualifying on the penultimate row of the year final. If he lets Rahaj through, looks over his right shoulder. He's not there, but that's because he was over your left shoulder, Zach. <laughs> over my shoulder goes one care. <laughs> sliding very wide at the final turn through the S's. This is second and third in the B final. Leading is Alfie Williams, who made his way through very calmly, very composed. Inside the last of the few last few seconds. Now then, can Alfie Williams get through? I think he will. There's going to be two more laps when he comes through here because we've got about a few seconds on the clock. Seven seconds to be exact. So it'll be one lap to go by next time by. So Patrick williams Raj wants to get one row ahead. Now, he doesn't want to be silly here. Neither of these drivers want to be silly because they've qualified. They are into the air final. Patrick looks over his right shoulder. There's nobody there. He follows in Zach's wheel tracks. <coughs> and penultimate time through the horseshoe. He's got right onto the rear bumper of Zach Bolton. As Alfie Williams comes through, Patrick Williams Rahaj almost side by side with Zach Bolton. And there's uh, these two have qualified. There's no reason to uh, to fight over this place. You can do that in the year final. So Alfie Williams on the number 96 leads the race. This battle here, Zach Bolton, the car number 69 with the number 95 of Patrick Williams-Rahaj, just ahead of Simon Wheeler, who's 
got quite a comfortable 1.7 seconds to Tyler Fossey in fifth. It's check and flag time though, and it's Alfie Williams who will qualify to the year final along with Zach Bolton, Patrick Williams Rahout, Simon Wheeler, and then ending their season will be Tyler Fossey, Oliver Moss, Aidan Hammond, Paul Moran, Adrian Smith, Dan Millward, and Michael Marrett. So kicking things off then to finalise the 2023 Junction 6 NKC will be Minimax. And going into this final race of the season, the championship looks like this. We have got, with drop rounds taken, taken into consideration, we've got Sebastian Corking on 1,175. Zari Visarek has taken second place going into this final race on 1,135 points. And then Sonny Morgan in third on 1,129. Leo Basterfield on 1,043. Eddie Stewart's on 1,038. Max Carlton's on 1,023. Jensen Cox in eighth place on 732. So I would suggest, Nick, with a gap of 40, second, uh, 40 points, they only have to start the race. That would seem about and, right. Yeah, they only have to start the race. Oh, we've got people spinning off. Eddie Stewart has spun off. Not started yet, has he spun off? Uh, I think that was Ari Viserek has spun off. But on pole position, as we thought it would be, Leo Basterfield, championship leader, Sebastian Corking alongside Sonny Morgan and Max Carton on row two. Zauri Viserek on row three with Eddie Stewart and then Jensen Cox. So we might get them to have to do another lap if everybody doesn't catch up after that. Uh, no, everybody has caught up. So we should get the, this race underway. Everybody in their rightful positions on the grid as well. So that's a good sign. Here they come then. For the final time ever, Minimax in the NKC, Minimax in the UK, in fact. And into the first turn, they blast, having taken the red light. Through turn one, and we've got a cart off into the gravel trap, as into the lead has gone Basterfield. Leo Basterfield has took the lead. Seb Corking is in second, and it's Eddie Stewart up into third place. And I think that was, would you believe, Sonny Morgan, who I think ended up off at the first turn. No, I'm wrong. It wasn't Sonny Morgan. It was Max Carlton who ended up going off. Here they come then for the first time. Remember, it is 12 minutes and one lap for the finals. So a long way to go. Big early lead between Basterfield and Corking as they pull away. Yeah, Lee Stewart Leo, holding third off that kerfuffle on his first lap, or his warm up lap in 27, which is, of course, uh, Sonny Morgan starting way down. Now he's currently three in, in coming into fourth. Eddie Stewart will want to finish his season with a podium place at the final race of the season. He's got a big job in hand, though, as Sonny Morgan. Chases him down. Zauri Viserek is right on his bumper as Sonny Morgan slides wide. Viserek goes to the side by side into the S's and makes the move. So Viserek up into fourth place. Sonny Morgan has just not had it right. Sonny Morgan comes back at him at the hand hairpin. But side by side out of there and into the horseshoe. Viserek trying all he can to get by Sonny Morgan and not being able to make that happen at all. Meanwhile, here comes Basterfield, Corking and Eddie Stewart, first, second and third. They're well spaced out, Nick. Yep, running down into the first corner now. Not particularly active aggression. I'm surprised to see how far back Sonny Morgan is. He's not actually gaining on Eddie Stewart or Sebastian Corking. He's kind of like staying equidistant behind them. Currently, the gap is about uh, just over a second from first to fourth. Yeah, Sonny Morgan. Has, sorry, for uh, three seconds from first of all, sorry. Well, Sonny Morgan has, has kind of dropped, dropped off the pace a little and has struggled, really. 
to uh, to get back on terms with the cart ahead of him. Things are settling down though, and he's got uh, he's pulled a gap now to Viserek. Let's see if he can pull up towards Eddie Stewart, maybe f end his season with a podium. But Eddie Stewart wants that podium as well, so it's going to be quite a battle. Meanwhile, ahead of them, Sebastian Corking heading towards the Mini Max Championship for 2023. In second place, Leo Pasterfield is heading towards a 100% finishing record and certainly bringing himself into contention for Corking. Coming down, Pasterfield, you say, how, how high can Pasterfield finish with this kind of perfect weekend? Let me just work that out, Nick. Stuart. And under pressure now from well, so we'll soon be under pressure from Corking. Not quite yet. As the sun comes bright, oh, that brief flurry of rain. We've now got the sunniest sun ever, and it's uh, coming through. Right, so Stewart now battling for third and fourth. First and second, kind of equidistant away. Basterfield's got a lead of around about 1.1 seconds, and it's uh, Bernard second and two back for uh, uh, Corking. And now Stewart, who's in camera, in third, with fourth place. Sonny Morgan. Morgan, obviously the man who was uh, there or thereabouts for a chance at the championship. And Joe has looked at the scores. Yeah, so Leo Basterfield, if they finish as they are now, will score 100 points. Oh, that's not the track. That wasn't the track at all. He waves at him to say, oh, no, it wasn't the track. Can we see that again by any chance? So what happened there? I'd it's going up the inside, but there's, no, there's only so much inside you can go up because at that point... There isn't any track anymore, and that's not the track Ooh, here on. So yeah, Morgan, I think he was. I think he was. I think he thinks that uh, Eddie closed the door on him, but I think Eddie didn't really know he was that far. He was near him. No, no, he's. Um, he's gonna have to be a bit more careful. He's moving up into juniors next season. Is on most of these mini max drivers. Uh, Sebastian Sebastian Corking moving into junior TKM. Um, hopefully we'll run with the NKC. Not sure what series he's uh, got planned for Junior TKM, but we have got Junior TKM as part of this championship. Sonny Morgan trying to muster some sort of performance to get past Eddie Stewart for the final podium position of third place here. He really is all over the back end. We've still got seven minutes remaining, so there's still plenty of time. And the drivers know this, of course, as they come at this point here, they run underneath the start gantry, which has a, a, a timing clock, which tells the drivers just how long left in the race. So that's why we see drivers pacing themselves towards the finish. Eddie Stewart having to drive defensively around the outside of the hand Ooh. hairpin goes Sonny Morgan. And oh, Sonny Morgan, <laughs> yeah, around the outside, uh, Zari uh, Visarek has said thank you very much. I don't need any more invitation. And he goes through and ahead of Sonny Morgan. And now he is on the tail of Eddie Stewart. Eddie Stewart under immense pressure here. And Viserek alongside into Billy's blind. And who's going to have the Viserek's line got it. Got into it. the first turn he has. And Sonny Morgan's trying to squeeze through as well. Oh, and, and again, again he then. uses that off-track off track line. Does he know that's not the track? I'm not sure. <laughs> he's, trying all, he's just running out the road when he's trying to squeeze down the inside. Yeah. So there they go round. Viserek. Viserek into third. Yeah. Eddie Stewart coming back at him, though. Morgan just not showing in this final at all, which is really weird. Yeah, yeah. Sonny Morgan's had pace on and off this season. Mm. Very wide there. And losing out a little bit of ground to Eddie Stewart. Meanwhile, Eddie in the set in, on the 45 there both on blue and yellow carts there in third and fourth Viserec slightly different livery to Eddie Stewart's Momentum is the team that Eddie Stewart runs with not quite sure who Viserec is with as they go into the horseshoe and if anything Eddie Stewart's dropping back Basterfield continues to lead crosses the line Corking second Still heading towards that championship. He's five minutes away from being crowned the 2023 NKC Mini Max champion. But we'll uh, not count our chickens. I'm not sure he can be caught at this stage with Viserec and Sonny Morgan finishing where they are. There's only a difference of four points between first and second. As we've got uh, 
Zari Visarek pulling away from Eddie Stewart, who's now under pressure again. Four and a half minutes remaining then. Basterfield through. The gap to Corking is 2.2 seconds. Leo Basterfield has been absolutely unbeatable here at Clear Pigeon this weekend. He's won the, all three heats in a very, very dominant style. He certainly knows his way around Clear Pigeon. And Seb Corking has had a job to do and finish well without any mistakes and finish all the heats and finals. And he's heading that way to do that. He knew what he had to do and he's certainly trying to achieve that as the clock ticks down. Behind Corking, Zari Visarek pulling away now from Eddie Stewart and Sonny Morgan who are still going at it, hammer and tongs. In the turn one, Billy's blind. And once again, Sonny Morgan just trying to find a way up the inside round that sweeping right-hander into the S's, the right-left of the S's. And once again, Eddie Stewart defending well into the hand hairpin. That's going to put him wide. Morgan comes back at him. Stewart's having none of this, is he? No, he's not. Yeah. He's driving really well. He's having to drive a very, very clever and defensive race. And so he's making Sonny Morgan's job really, really hard. He's obviously decided not to go into commentary next season and carry on racing. <laughs> he's carry on racing, I hope so. Still got a lot. Close they can be. Nose to tail. This is the battle for fourth and fifth as they sweep down into the bottom bend. Morgan tries the over and under, and that might actually work this time. To the track. Yep, he's on the track even, mostly. Yeah, yeah. That's what he's trying to do. Oh, they get, oh they he's, he's out slid there. wide. Well, yeah. slid out, moved out. Well, he was. He, I think he slid. I, I actually together. think he slid, but he still held on to it. Great driving from Sonny Morgan, using all of the road and more. Ended up on the grass, but kept the momentum. And he's made that move stick for fourth place ahead of Eddie Stewart now. Yeah, now he's got to try and find a make-up a gap of something in the region of uh, about, well, not too far, about uh, two tenths of a second yeah, or so. That's a couple of seconds, I'd say. Yeah. 1.6. 1.6. Yeah, 1.6. Yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, Leo Basterfield's extended the lead to 3.3. We are inside two and a half minutes remaining in the Minimax season here in the Junction 6 NKC. As Basterfield comes out of the final turn. Let's try and pick up our leader for the last couple of minutes and then we'll... Uh, oh, let's try and pick up second place, Seb Corking. There is he? He's heading to... He's just heading into turn one. There he is, into the S's. Seb Corking. He's come here with Louis Large's team. He's come down from the Dalek area of the northeast of England. And it, uh, he did dabble in the NKC in 2022. And then he's done a full season. And he's on his way. He's only 90 seconds away from being crowned the Junction 6 NKC Minimax champion of 2023. There's Leo Basterfield, our leader, who's been very dominant here this weekend. And there is Corking there on the 52. Just getting by a couple of backmarkers, which I think is Eddie Stewart, is it? Who's obviously had a problem there. Maybe a little spin. As Seb Corking with coming up to the final minute of the season for Minimax. In fact, the final minute of Minimax in this form. It will move into the Inter era, the Intermax era, next year with slightly smaller chassis, the 950mm chassis, with the same engine, with the same restriction on it, and the, but the narrower tyre, which will give the cart less grip through the corners. Slow them down overall, which was the uh, always the idea to change the formula. And as we head towards we're about 40 seconds away from the one lap to go board being considered it will be two more laps of racing for leo basterfield two more laps of the mini max season coming up into the final turn let's just stay with leo the number 10 to take the win as he's got two more laps of racing and that's very very swift indeed here at clear pigeon with only only takes these carts 36 seconds to get around and Basterfield, uh, I've got to say, he's absolutely driven very dominant. He's certainly got that cart set up. The local knowledge, I think, has come to the fore here. I'll be amazed if this isn't Leo's home track, as he showed very, very dominant form. Nobody's been able to catch this young man here this weekend. 
and he's certainly finished his 2023 Junction 6 NKC in very fine style with three heat wins and now the air final about to become his he's got three more corners four more apex to hit these are, that's two gone at the horseshoe and now he heads on to buttons and then the final turn of the season for him so the final check and flag for the mini max class sees leo basterfield take the win but behind him on the road and second, let's have a look at our champion. It is Sebastian Corking, the NKC, the Junction 6 NKC Minimax champion. To the delight of the LRG team, Louis Large came here after racing in the NKC as a driver in the 177 class, came second in the championship, and then he created LRG Motorsport, a customer race team. And this is his first championship in his first season of NKC. Plans not quite settled yet as to what they're doing next year, but it would be ridiculous for Louis and LRG Motorsport not be part to not be part of this championship. All right, we we will see Sebastian Corking moving on uh, with plans, according to his mum, Mandy, to move into the junior TKM category. But we've got Seb Corking, our champion, coming second. Zari Viserek will stand on the third step of the final podium for Minimax this season. Sonny Morgan had a very character-building day, I think, as well as a very character-building final. He finishes fourth. Eddie Stewart will finish his season in fifth. And Max Carlton finishes sixth. Jensen Cox finished in seventh. Senior TKM out next. We've got them straight on. And the championship. Well, the championship. Where do we start? We've got Mitchell Ball on 1,117. Louis Bevan up to second with 1,112. Charlie King on 1,102. It could go the way of Mitchell Ball or Louis Bevan once again. Can he make it three on the bounce? Mitchell Ball has been very dominant and will start this race. The final TKM race of the season on the pole position from Callum Lamont alongside Charlie King and Ben Watson are on the second row Louis Bevan and Leo Crabtree are on row three Tom Johnson and Ollie Milner are on row four Matthew Houghton and Alexander Lehman are on row five and Matt Slate and Joseph Jakes are on row six then we've got Matthew Temple Purcell Gordon Smith James Hull Will Cregeen Molly Nicholas Biles Ryan Layton Chris Whiteside James Workman James King and Jason Lovett here they come then for the final time in 2023 Mitchell Ball will want to win this on the road. And if he does, he will become the TKM champion. But there's a, a long race ahead of us with 12 minutes and one lap for this TKM class. With them all getting through the first stages of this clear pigeon track. Mitchell Ball down the middle of the trap there into the hand hairpin for the first time. Everybody out of there and towards the horseshoe. Again, more defensive driving. But who's that behind him? It's Charlie King. There's only going to be four points gap. I think Charlie King, even if he gets ahead of Mitchell Ball, he hasn't quite got enough points, deficit or difference, to take the championship from Mitchell Ball. And Callan Lamont is in. I'm having none of that. And there's Louis Bevan as well, the number one. This is not just a race on the road, everybody. This is the championship coming down to the final few corners of the season. We've already had a minute of this final. 11 minutes to go. Mitchell Ball, Callum Lamont, Charlie King, Louis Bevan. You can never discount Bevan. He's carrying that number one because he was 2022 champion. He carried the number one in 2022 because he won the championship in 2021. Can he make it three on the trot? It's a big ask. But he's only got a five-point difference to Mitchell Ball ahead of him. So it really has come down to the final laps of the season into the hand hairpin ball leads Callan Lamont second Charlie King Louis Bevan incredible racing to think we started all that time ago back at three sisters for round one nobody has been able to dominate any of our classes here 
as ever the Junction 6 NKC Championship being one of the most intense karting series on the UK karting calendar and it will continue to be so moving forward into 2024 there's no doubt about that if you're watching and you want to take part then have a look at the website and get your registrations in because they'll be going thick and fast the racing is phenomenal and it's not just about the front of the grid as well is it it's all the way down the field there are private battles going on which we just simply can't keep a handle on because there is so much happening right now Mitchell Ball leads nine and a half minutes we're inside the final nine and a half minutes of the NKC TKM season and it's Charlie King who's gotten ahead of Callan Lamont Callan Lamont coming back at him though and Louis Bevan he's taking a watching brief he's watching that clock tick down if these well there's four carts now in a train with, with Mitchell Ball pulling out a little bit of a gap Louis Bevan looking like he can challenge there but sitting back Charlie King will want to overtake Mitchell Ball but if he finishes ahead of Mitchell Ball and takes the, the there's only a four point difference between first and second here for the year final and that's just not enough for Charlie King to take the championship Mitchell Ball will be fully aware and look at that he's come out he's come out of the stocks he's come out of the starting blocks I should say with intent hasn't he his head has been down from the very outset started on the pole Mitchell Ball through six laps completed the gap's just over a half a second and there's Callan Lamont Charlie King going wide and Callan Lamont coming through and will take that second place at the S's this is all playing very much in the hands into the hands of Mitchell Ball with them having to drive and squabble over those places behind Callan Lamont now back into second place Charlie King aware that Louis Bevan's behind him so where's, where are we now with the Mitchell Ball versus Charlie King championship then? oh Mitchell Ball's in, in the lead of the championship on, on 1117 Louis Bevan second on 1112 and then 1,102 is Charlie King. So it's Mitchell Balls if it stays like that. Okay. For, for Mitchell Ball has got a non-finish. Oh, oh somebody's not finishing. Who's that there? I can't quite see the number. We'll find out in a second. I'm sure we'll get a replay. Who was that? It was... Ooh, oh, out. it was the number 23 of Callan Lamont. Oh, oh he can't believe that. it. Charlie King. Had a coming together with Callan Lamont, and guess who's gone through? I can't quite see. This is this is brilliant news for Mitchell Ball. Mitchell Ball is leading now. Louis Bevan is second. The number 42 of John Tom Johnson is up there. Charlie King down to fifth. This is drama before our very eyes. Louis Bevan is only five points behind. Mitchell Ball in the championship and if if anything happens to Mitchell Ball Louis Bevan is in the very expensive seats to reap the benefits it's a big ask of course and nobody wants to win a championship that way because Mitchell Ball if anything he's been the number two for two years running behind that number one of Louis Bevan maybe it is indeed Mitchell Ball's turn we're going to see we've got just under just over six minutes of the season remaining so half distance in this air final into the hand hairpin Mitchell Ball personal best lap times for him that's all you can ask 36.8 he's the quickest car on the track still can those tyres those worn out sets of Maxis now towards the end of this season he looks over his shoulder keep the focus Mitchell it's Louis Bevan your old mate from the flex days behind you and there's Charlie King down the inside of Tom Johnson so Charlie King back into the mix here into the hand hairpin Charlie King he wants that second place he wants to be on the podium well he's on the podium but he's on the wrong step according to him we've seen how quick Charlie King can be can he get by Louis Bevan the clock is ticking all the time we're down towards five minutes remaining Charlie King pulls alongside 
into turn one he slots back in behind Bevan out of turn one Billy's blind and towards the S's through the right and left and then onto the Sturmy straight towards the Han hairpin they're already through it and now back towards us into the horseshoe through buttons and towards the final turn we know how quick Louis Bevan is. We know how cool and calm and composed he can be. This is the very finest in TKM race driving that we are seeing here in the Junction 6 NKC. And coming right to the very final few minutes of the season, the championship yet to be decided as Charlie King goes down the inside of Louis Bevan. Louis Bevan comes back at him. Charlie King... Oh, and Bevan comes back. Charlie King had indicated, let's let's fight, let's not fight, and let's catch Mitchell Ball. But Louis Bevan says, no, nope, not having any of that, mate. Give me that position back. All this squabbling over position, of course, as Charlie King goes down the inside of turn one. Can Louis Bevan go back? No. Nope. King holds a tighter line. The gap to the leader is three seconds from this battle for second. And with three and a half minutes remaining. It's going to go right down to the wire, isn't it? The tension is incredible. Just looking on the paddock, on the fence there at the paddock. And on the balcony of the cafe area. It is an incredible tension that is mounting in the world of TKM and the NKC. Charlie King. Oh, and it's contact there with Bevan. Just ran out of bricks. That's put him back into the clutches of Matthew Horton, the number seven. On towards the hand hairpin. He's now dropped off the back of Charlie King with that little, that little issue. A bit of unavoidable contact there. inside the final two and a half minutes of the Junction 6 NKC for 2023 TKM class and it's Mitchell Ball who is leading by now four seconds he came into this final from the pole position and from his body language there was nobody going to take the lead from him he just got his head down and while everybody else was tripping over one another, he's pulled out that gap that's going to be very, very difficult for anybody to claw back. He was faster than Charlie King last time by. Charlie King, we know he's quick. He's got the fastest lap of the race so far, 36.670. Mitchell Ball's best lap, 36.749. There's nothing in it. That's the battle for second, third and fourth and fifth there four carts being spaced out Mitchell Ball just absolutely willing that cart inside the final 90 seconds we've got probably about three laps potentially four of the TKM season left the gap 4.2 Mitchell Ball's best lap personal best 36.731 Charlie King's 36.727 literally hundreds of a second quicker was Charlie King but with right on the 60 second mark to go that's not enough for Charlie King he's going to have to rely on a mistake from Mitchell Ball 36.8 lap time there the gap 4.1 it's come down a tenth we've got two more laps after this one That's the number seven, Matthew Horton. Let's go ahead, Paul. Let's jump ahead and just follow Mitchell Ball round these final couple of laps. We're looking for the number two, just coming into the final turn now. Just coming out and underneath our cameraman, Ash. That's him there. That's Mitchell Ball. Two more laps remaining. 15 seconds on the clock. So the final two laps of the Junction 6 NKC 
TKM Championship is what we've got in front of us now and that's the number two Mitchell Paul started on the pole position into the horseshoe for the penultimate time it'll be the one lap to go board next time by here he comes then out of the final turn his head will go down it has gone down every time little shake of the head there he's into the final lap of the season he's heading towards the TKM Championship as Mitchell Ball goes through the S's for the final time we are heading towards we are looking at our champion elect Mitchell Ball into the horseshoe for the final time he's got two more corners buttons and then top bend he's into that already and heads down to the checkered flag and a championship that's our champion right there Mitchell Ball takes it he'll be carrying the number one in the next season he's carried the number two for two consecutive seasons and he takes it in very very fine style an absolute dominant win there in the final started on the pole he's had a fantastic day he's done everything right and our Junction 6 NKC champion for TKM in 2023 is Mitchell Ball incredible finish to the season and by my uh, simple mathematics in my head I think we're going to see Louis Bevan and Mitchell Ball swap numbers. It'll be Mitchell Ball carrying the number one and Louis Bevan carrying the number two into 2024. Incredible racing. We can calm down a bit now because the Junior Rotax class is out next. And that has already been decided. And it will be Mason Perrin, who at the chequered flag will be not just champion elect but actually actual junior Rotax champion he's already got it in the bag so we can pretty much sit back and enjoy this uh, the, the other places of course in the championship are still up for grabs so still all to play for down the order so with junior Rotax A final out next let's have a look at the great Joshua, Joshua Withcombe on the pole position from Benjamin Bartlett will seen earlier how these two can uh, battle it out Archie Butler in third with uh, champion elect Mason Perrin alongside him on the second row Jasmine Taylor who's had a great day's racing with Mitchell Mulvey alongside and then we've got Freddie Whirlock and Billy Edgecombe on row four row five is five is Vlad Tominchuk with Maxim Smith alongside Reese Green and Jaden Hewitt Finley Underwood and Louis Reese are on row seven row eight is Will Swales and Presley Walker Taylor Dixon and Billy Vogt Jack Dimbleby and Archie Hardiman are next up. Freddie Theobald and Alex Dool are the drivers on row tw 11. Row 12, Frank Ward and Daniel Haynes, Joshua Delacarte and Curtis Latimer. Then we've got Alex Fraser and Alfie Bushel with Callum Scrivens and Alex Timmons rounding off row 15. But we've got row 16 and 17 as well. And I haven't got the result sheet in front of me from the B final. So we'll... Uh, We'll wait for them to pop out and we'll confirm who the four drivers were that qualified through to the year. <sighs> right, so Junior Rotex A final next up. Ben Bartlett in one. We've already done that, apparently. <laughs> yeah, we've done that. We're ahead of the game. I just wanted to, uh, I just wanted to clarify who are the four qualifiers from the B final. Um, and Alex it was, Tim, it, was it, well, it was G. Leverton, Lucy Lovell, and Jamie Salter, wasn't it? One not bothered coming on. Yeah, yeah. So we've only got what? How many have we got? Thirty-three. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm not sure. Oh, that's tragic news. That's broken. Uh, broken so. steering. Yeah, yeah, for the number one thirty-three. Um, who was the? It was. It's Callum Strivens. Yeah. Yes, he was one of our final air final qualifiers. We've got a very nicely ordered grid there, Nick. Coming out of the final turn, we should get things underway. Here we go. Oh, and it gets very, very argy bargy. And we've got somebody off into the tyres in a big way. I hope he's all right. Yes, he is all right because he's continuing. He's just pulled out of the tyres, having backed the cart into the tyres. Out of the S's for the first time. 
and on towards the hand hairpin rest of the field coming through now and then on towards the horseshoe for the first time it is the rest of the field coming through then we'll get a cl we'll clarify certainly our top 10 as they flash by underneath us straight in the lead it's the 22 which is Archie Battle and then we're followed by Josh Withercombe, Ben Bartlett, the 444, Mason Perrin, your champion elect, or just champion, I don't know which one is it, champion elect or champion? Well, he's pretty much the champion, but until the checkered flag, let's call him champion elect. Oh, OK. So, leading. As they sweep round the top bend, and coming down... And they've done a little bit of breakaway, a little, little, little bit of kind of equidistancy. This is a problem, you see. Once you put everyone in grid order, where's the action go, yeah, Joe? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the finals tend to be a lot different to the uh, to the um, to the to the mixed grids. It's broken, is it? Yes. <laughs> All right, great. I'll just have to deal with the sun in my eyes. And, and uh, yeah, we we're used to that. All all of the quick guys. Well done, Nick. Can't see the. Uh, <laughs> well I'm, I'm, being a, I'm being a right demon you are a prima yeah, donna yeah, oh, right Archie <laughs> Butler has pulled out a little bit of a cushion hasn't he but I, I tell you what Nick what you find are high speed games of chess oh, taking place right, in okay. the final you know what we're, we're talking about managing the tyres over 12 minutes and one lap of course so the races are slightly longer Joshua Withcombe who started on the pole threw in second Benjamin Bartlett third Mason Perrin fourth Mitchell Mulvey fifth Jasmine Taylor sixth and then we've got Billy Edgecombe Freddie Whirl at Reese Green and Vlad Tomanchuk is the driver that rounds off the top ten into the horseshoe and already we're seeing Joshua Withcombe just gaining a little bit little bit just reducing that comfortable cushion Archie Buttle had and just moving back towards that rear bumper back towards being in a position to perhaps challenge hmm. So running round now at the bottom of the circuit and going through the S's. 22 from 77. So Butler now under a little bit of pressure from Withercombe as they come up and into the horseshoe. So Butler who's coming from the lead. Got the yellow flags waving uh, underneath us. Really? Yeah, run into the but yellow flags into turn into the turn one effectively. So Whatever, however good a run Joss Witherton gets down into turn one they've got yellow flag waving here I'm not quite sure why there's yellow flag I can't see anything and in fact it's been withdrawn just as they went past it first and second in this Junior Rotax A final the final round the NKC nailed it don't forget the man in fourth Mason Perrin is pretty much guaranteed to be the champion they sweep round the hairpin And there is the 30 car of Mason Perrin running in, four, in fourth in the orange cart. He is your champion elect. But let's get back to the first two because they're the ones doing all the battling and all the uh, fighting. 77 and 22. Battle now. Oh, you can see him sliding as he looks to turn that right hand side, right hand's hairpin. And now. The multi-apex left hand of the horseshoe for the right of buttons. And they are absolutely nailed together. The gap last time around was 0.105. It's probably 0.105 now because you're about to close your mirror without helping. Now the flag has gone this time. So he wants to land an attack. Wickham thinks about it. But Battle takes the correct line. It was, always, it was 200 per second more that time. I think just because that's as close as you can get without occupying the same piece of track. In they go. The colours beautifully lit now of the cars as they go into the hands here. this morning they're just kind of some of the different direction they're just kind of like it's a silhouette that's all we could see but now you can see them as the cars are struggling with the hard rear wheel only brakes and coming coming at an angle to stop hard now there has been a little bit of a gapage there tiny bit of a gap caused by Whitaker you got managed to get up to 700 but immediately that's gone and appears to be picked up by Bartlett in third and Perrin. Now the gap between Bartlett and Perrin is that they're about one and a half seconds behind. These two, you can see how far behind they are because they're that far behind, which is like four cart lengths. 
And then behind them, it's one and a half seconds to Bartlett and uh, a bit further to Mason Perrin. Apologies, our normal timing system is uh, currently having a bit of... It's got very upset by the lack of uh, feed here from Clay Pigeon today. So we're using our backup system, which obviously gives you positions. But we'll make sure we keep you up to date with the time and how much long is remaining. And the answer how long is remaining is there is six minutes and 30 seconds. Thank you, Nick. Spot on. We've got that battle that's beginning to come to... Well, beginning to heat up, isn't it? We're undoubtedly seeing these drivers just watching that clock tick on the starting gantry. And they know how long they've got to perhaps challenge. Joshua Withcombe wants that first step of the podium. And he does indeed make the move down the inside of Archie Buttle. And takes the lead. Can Buttle come back at him? Out of the S's and towards the hand hairpin. Both on the very limit of breaking there. Into the right hand hairpin. And then popping up out of the hill towards the horseshoe and a change of lead for the first time in this final for Junior Rotax will register as they cross the line they're going to very quickly be in the realms of back markers Nick yeah and this is the, the interesting thing in a 12 minute final isn't it yes on a short track like Clay Pigeon you can make up that 35 seconds or so and get through to them but there is first and second nailed together yeah, is, so the question is, can, can Bartlett, that, that Archie Buttle nose looks very low, doesn't it? Do you think he had the I'm twiddle? Not sure, just, I'm not sure, there was, there was all sorts of uh, shenanigans went on in the, into the first corner, and that can only be, you know, it's unfortunate if you get a knock on your, uh, on your nose. I think, I think Buttle's down, I think you're right, I think that nose is down. Into the back markers territory now. And a five second drop would drop him at the moment to eighth. Yeah, it would. Oh, kind of a wave. Go, off you go. We've got to Down obviously you go. Ha have that confirmed. Yeah, I mean, it, just because yeah. we visually think it's going to happen doesn't mean it has, but he does seem to be very low. I mean, obviously all the noses are, are close to the ground for yeah, air yeah, effect, yeah, but just, that looks a bit too low. And I'm just looking at Withcombe's as well, and I think that I think it's the same as Buttles. So, no, Buttles yeah. looks lower to me. But could be, then again, it's the dynamics, that kind of V at the front of the That's design. Right, it's making it more... Um, down, yeah. We've yeah, got yeah. a pointy down design. All right, it's pointy down. Luckily, the design pays no attempt in, in, in Park Fermo. People just have a look at it, don't they? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You can see, well, obviously, we're trying to look at it at 80 miles an hour. Yeah, that time around, they were within one hundredth of a second of each other. The lead is one point, it's point one five two, And then back another second and a half to Benjamin Button four four four. So putting on a great show with the and Buttle. With him got through, and Buttle's not letting him go. I was just wondering if Bartlett was going to come back into it. You know, the gap is 1.3 seconds to Buttle. And whether Benjamin Bartlett was maybe finding a bit of pace. That's the uh, the cart with the, the yellow helmet. The yellow helmet just in the background there. Oh, and down the inside has gone Buttle. It's not over yet. Look at that. Wish uh, Withcombe comes back at him, but not quite enough space to get alongside into the S's. So it looks over his shoulder. Sees where Withcombe is before they turn into the hand hairpin. No no reason to defend or take a defensive line in there they're inside the th they, they are inside the final three and a half minutes of the junior road tax season and right now Archie Buttle back at the front of this field using all of the track and more on the outside of uh, top bend quite a common line to take through there <laughs> keeping the momentum up now then Joshua Withcombe thinks okay they, they've got a lot of back markers, haven't they? Now it's amazing how they've managed to get right within the uh, the core, actually, oh. of the rest. Of, oh, we've got off there. Just, just, just a, I think yeah, just a back marker getting out of the way. Yeah, yeah, that was um, that was the 55 just leaping out the leaping out of the way. Uh, the current place, the 30, that's like Fraser, who's running towards yeah. the back. So yeah, yeah, I mean, that's, you, yeah that's good. That's good driving. Just looks spectacular. He just literally up. But this is now lining right up here. With the Kim went wide. He had a chance to nip up the inside. Buttle said, "No, we're going to cover that area through the S's." Back down to the hairpin. And they come. Oh, how crossed up can one cart be? Well, the answer is we're Archie Buttle, uh, Josh Pithicum. And he's on the inside. And he's got a change of lead again. So through he goes again. Witherkin takes the lead now with uh, two minutes remaining. They can see the clock ticking down. And he knew he had to make the move this time into the horseshoe. And again... Bottle just sets that cart in behind the rear bumper. 
and we have certainly got a race to the flag the final round of the Junction 6 NKC is we've got two lads there who are both wanting to win it and take home the accolade of winning the final round yeah where are they by all of them yeah they are these two drivers Joshua Withcombe and Archie Buttle uh, are not in contention at the front of the championship but they'll be down in the uh, so for instance Alfie Bushel 16th um, I'm trying to find Joshua Withcombe um, he's way down the order is Joshua Withcombe so it's all about the win it's all about the race win Mason Perrin is our champion elect and we are a minute away from crowning him proper I think he was pretty much crowned coming into this round he he didn't need to compete we worked out that with a drop round he didn't need to compete there's the move Archie Buttle down the inside of Withcombe that's what they've been doing we've seen that so many times so into the final minute and Joshua Withcombe can see that the clock has ticked Archie Buttle has timed that to perfection it's been a bit See it again, mate. A bit of a high is speed it a high speed game, game of chess, but oh, it really is. Yeah, game of wits. Fantastic. Yeah, we're into uh, we're into bat markers as well, and the bat markers have got their own battles, of course. Mm. And they'll probably not realise that the leaders are with them. There'll be blue flags flying out there from the marshal's post, and there Withcom comes through. And with oh, there's enough time on the clock for two more laps. Oh, so it's not over and yet. Two more laps and two more laps of traffic. Yeah got themselves split slightly there the, didn't they and the bat mark is coming back the triple no, four no, 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 oh it's Benjamin the Bartlett place. that's your third place man yes of course so the bat markers have stifled them to a point where Benjamin Bartlett for third place is now on the rear bumper so it's a three card battle for the overall lead oh and up the inside of another bat marker that's the 21 who's letting through this time and now they're back running together Archie Buttle over the line over the line around the top Ben one lap one, to go. One, two, board. three. We've got yep. the last lap board. Last lap board out. I think, I think that all that mucking about, unless it's an absolute send from Joss Widdicombe, I think he's going to have enough in his hand. And Benjamin Bartlett's oh. going to think, why couldn't there be more traffic? Why couldn't there be more traffic? Very, very defensive by Buttle oh. on that last run around the hairpin. Will yep. he get the exit he wants? Yes, he has. So right behind him now with Braylon. Oh, and nibbling, nibbling, nibbling at the rear end. He needs to be careful. Well, his nose is already down, so... <laughs> hey. uh, we'll have to wait and see what well, the official result is. But yeah. no, look, at, look, at, look at the third place man. His, no, his nose looks yes, nothing look, like the yeah, other two. Absolutely, yeah. I think Benjamin Bartlett might win this. Yeah, we'll have to wait it's and see. Not, it's our idea. It's not the stewards. They cross the line in the order. Archie Battle, Joss Withercombe and Benjamin Bartlett. But I think... The top two could both be for drop-down penalties. Might have dropped down. The noses did. The, the front nose cone on both of those leading carts did look quite low. I'm not sure where they picked them up. But uh, like we say, on the road and provisional result, Archie Buttle, Joshua Withcombe, Benjamin Bartlett. Champion elect, though, is now the champion. The Junction 6 NKC 2023 Junior Road Axe champion, Mason Perrin, takes the championship victory with a fourth place in this final so congratulations to Mason Perrin and all of the team around him his parents etc Mitchell Mulvey was fifth Billy Edgecombe sixth seventh was Jasmine Taylor Freddie Willock eighth ninth was Bill Will Swills and it was Billy Vogt who rounded off the top ten there for the very last time in 2023 and now for the very last time in 2023 we have our senior Rotax 162s. They are going to be led out by a man that my money would be very much on, but I wouldn't win much money because the odds would probably be... 100 to 1 on. 100 to 1 on, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not even I'm that. I'm not giving you even. I'll give you 100 <laughs> yeah. to 1. Do yeah. you want 100 to 1 on? Do you want to bet 100 to Oh, Gaz Burry's turned up. Has he got anything for us? Like cakes? Yes, here. Well, it's good to know the man doesn't know what's happening because we well, don't know what's happening either. Junior, <laughs> Mason, Mason Perrin's won the championship, yeah. Yes, Mitchell Ball has won the TKM championship. Yes. Seb Corking has won the Minimax now, championship. Now, talking about Mitchell Ball winning the TKM championship, I have a message um, from Facebook from uh, Louis's mum. Louis's mum, Louis's mum says, Caroline, so congratulations to Mitch from Louis's mum. Louis took number one from Mitch three years ago, I believe, so they've swapped it back again. Oh, after did all they this really? Time, yeah. yeah. That's very sporty, Caroline. Thank you for that. What a, what a great... Uh, what a great contest this is between Absolutely. those two drivers 
And next year, Mitchell Ball will carry the number one and Louis Ben will call the, carry the number two. Now then. Why? I was just about to read that out. Is that not right? All right. Okay. Championship going into this senior Rotax. On 1,066 is Kyle Dunford. Ollie Varney's on 1,059. So what's that? Seven points in it? There's a difference of four points for first and second. Yeah. Um, Finley Watson's on a 1,026. So he could win it if if Dunford and Varney finish way down, potentially. Uh, Bobby Rosie is fourth on 1,024. He's still in with a chance. And on 1,014 is Charlie Walsh, down from the northeast. Um, I, I haven't got the brain capacity to work out the rest. 984, 968 for Adam Rogers and Kieran Gifford. Paul Lazan is certainly battling Adam Rogers for the Masters. Being that, yes, Adam Rogers could win the Masters. Can, can Paul Lazan take it from him? I'm not sure. 953. Yeah, he can. Um, well, I don't know because they're going to be picking up points down the order. But right now, the, the battle for the championship is between Cal Dunford, Ollie Varney, Finley Watson and Bobby Rosier with Charlie Walsh with a very slim chance. You can get them in front Yeah. So, say again. I did, did I mention that? Say again. Did I mention the, uh, the, the, the chap who would be odds on favourite for this one? The final, that is. Um, it's Jensen Watts. Yeah, well, he's, he's, win this he's year. been here three times in the NKC this year. And he's won them all. And he's won them all. He's won every round, every final in the rounds that he's done. He's had a cracking day. He starts from pole position. So he's very much the favourite to take the victory. Uh, Kieran Gifford's alongside. And Kieran Gifford, our all plate holder, seventh in the championship. Very, very remote chance of this. Matthew Lambert is third. Bobby Rosier who's in ma- with a mathematical chance of being champion. Braden Hill is fifth with Oli Varney, who's currently second, only seven points behind Kyle Dunford. He starts in sixth. Adam Rogers is seventh. Going, he's, he's in line to take the Masters title and be our Masters champion. Jake Davis is alongside on row four. Then we've got Lewis Ball and Sam Wyatt on row five. Alex Warnerby and Ben Harper are on row six. Row seven, Finley Watson. Finley Watson is third. And alongside him is current championship leader, Kyle Dunford. Now that is where the championship battle is right at, Raw raw 7. How many finals are left? Two. How many finals? Two left, yeah, overall, yeah. Paul Ozan and Lewis Berry are on row 8. Row 9 is Charlie Walsh and Ryan Mills. Harry Barker and John Hobbs are on row 10. Sam Elliott and Marcus King are on row 11. Aidan Pomeroy and Reese Port are on row 12. Tommy Lee Davis and Philip Howarth are on rule 13 with Levi Goodyear, Scott Russell on rule 14, James Becker and Alex Jackson. And then the four drivers who uh, qualified at the in, from the B final are on the back of that lot. Super stuff. Once again, sorry we're using our backup timing system. We will keep you informed of how long is to go and what the gaps are, but you can't remember, hopefully. And the last race, it didn't matter because you can see the gap the entire time. So it wasn't a problem, but uh, um, it's been a bit weird here today, to be honest with you. But it has been lovely weather, so that's key. Been fabulous. Apart from weather. nine seconds of rain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did, did we? Yeah. Here we go then. For the final time, it's what the Rotax. colourful day seat, we have seat. in this autumn sun. Beautiful colours. Yeah. Nice and green, the grass. Here we go then. We are racing. <laughs> and we Jensen are Watts. Is leading. Yeah. And Jens- he's won. Jensen <laughs> Watts leads, but it's side by side goes Kieran Gifford on the ore plate. But it's Jensen Watts that will lead out of the no. turn, sequence of turn one and into the S's. And behind him, Matthew Lambert, Lambert has slotted second, into yeah. second. Yeah. yeah, as he comes into the in the first time, pretty much well behaved. Not many people making a move, actually, the first time around the hairpin. They're kind of, they've had to go in too wide a couple of times just because that's where the number of carts were there. But everyone's taking it easy on this. They've got 12 minutes. So they've got time to take it easy. Yeah, 12 minutes in one lap feels like a lifetime when you're in one of these races, especially holding off the field. Matthew Lambert looks very racy, doesn't he, into turn one. Will he have a look down the inside? He does indeed. And Jensen Watts finds himself on the outside. And behind Matthew Lambert, going into lap two. Behind Jensen Watts, Kieran Gifford. Behind him. Oh, and and down the inside, into the hand hairpin has gone Jensen Watts. Not taking any fuss or bother here, is he? Not taking any prisoners. Hangs on to that lead and will show in the lead again so Matthew Lambert even though he did lead a section of this lap will not show as 
leading any lap so far. No, what there was having none of this. He's, he, I think he was probably a bit surprised he was overtaken, and now he's going to try and break free. Second and third, though. The zero plate of Matt Kieran Gifford in the red and white machine, trying to track down the 95 of Matthew Lambert, who had, always had that marvellous, what, four corners in the lead. But uh, whilst a little bit of a gap now by Jensen, it's not a huge break. He's not, well, given the fact how much he was gaining on everyone during the heat, I'd have thought he'd just been gone. Be well you've, got wait, you've got to wait for the tyres to switch on, Nick. So the tyres are going to be beginning to switch on now. It's not, I wouldn't say it's a cool, cool, well, cool day. <laughs> It's not cold. It's not hot either. Um, so it's going to be about lap three. But you've got the sun on the track. So the top have, temperature yeah, is going to yeah, be reasonably yeah. high. So, so I, think, I think the tyre pressures are going to be where, if you, you, know, you can set your tyre pressures to come on at a particular point. And I think Jensen Watts tyres have now switched yeah, on. Yeah, he's, he's pulling away slightly. Um, the battle really is second and third, isn't it? It's what Lambert and Gifford can do. And perhaps Gifford can get through and have a bit of a go at Watts. But they say the, the speed of progression that Watts is making away from the field is less than we expected after his dominant performances Rosier in fourth Braden Hill in fifth uh, sixth place last time round was Olivine not sure they quite know so Braden Hill stayed in fifth because he's a very distinctive cart and they string out a little bit more but the action happening down the 101 cart of uh, Phil Howarth oh I forgot about Phil haven't we Phil yeah, made, he, made another place he, up he started so far down because of his two DNFs started 26 he's up and he's ahead of Paul Ozan there yeah he, he got Finley Watson yeah. into the last corner as well Demont so Charlie Walsh in to fairness Portland we don't as well. know if Howarth is equally as quick as, but, as um, Button as Watts <laughs> because of course the, Howarth won his heat so easily it was a heat that Watts wasn't in that's a good point yeah and we can all, all we can do is check the lap times. Well, you know. uh, fastest lap of the race for Jensen Watts, our leader, though. As behind him, Matthew Lambert. Second fastest lap for? Phil Howarth. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, there you go. 35.194 for Philip Howarth. 35.093. That's in clear air, though. So, yeah, 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 of course. And Philip Howarth is uh, trying to find his way through. So, yeah. He's doing all right, though. Because Howarth now is, I think, better than 10th. One, two, three. I think he's an eighth. Might be nice. Well, down in 11th is Adam Rogers on the number seven. And Adam is on his way to a Masters title. He's ahead of Paul Ozan. There's a, there's a challenge for second as the all plate holder, Kieran Gifford, goes down the inside of Matthew Lambert. Now then. The, the classic overtake we've seen today. But yeah, I think in a way, you know, either Lambert may, has to make a mistake, or he has to be acquiesced, doesn't it? Because you're not going to kind of just come back in again, close that small area down into the bottom bend. Yeah, you can't really do anything about it, really, once the, once the cart is there. You can uh, just try and maximise your, your momentum, really. So how, by the way, is in seventh now. Wow. That Let's pick a... up that gold-helmeted car. The car that's in seventh. The 101 is going to start-finish now. So drop back, Frank. Drop back. Drop back. It's the gold helmet we want. There we go. Can't miss it. Full house of the gold helmet. Working his magic. Working his way through. So he started 26, Nick. And now there's another scalp. There we are. He's through on the 21. So Philip Howarth ahead of Sam Wyatt. Uh, he was our reigning Rotax Junior Champion from 2022. So with uh, 4 minutes 52 seconds gone, 7, seven minutes to go, I think Howarth can make second there. That would be, that would be a, a, an amazing achievement because as he gets through the field, as you get to the front of the field, the drivers are quicker. The carts are quick, quicker. So your progress is stifled. Here he is. Braden Hill ahead of him. Braden Hill. I mean, they're not, they're, they're, these sculpts he's taken, they're no slouches, are they? No. Nope. You know, Sam, Sam Wyatt, Braden Hill. He's probably quite fired up after the unpleasant this, day he's had. And look at that. This, Bang. This is his home track, is Philip Howarth. So Philip Howarth knows this place like the back of his hand. He's been driving yeah. around here since he was eight years old. Just give Phil Howarth's story so far today. Um, he uh, broke down with a fuel pump problem in the first race. That's right. He just, for some reason, was nowhere in the second race and then won by seven seconds of third heat. Yeah, yeah, he did. So he's got the pace. Yeah, and he's scything through the field up to fifth now. Next on his list is Bobby Rosier. And Bobby, who is currently in fourth place, got 1.5 seconds last time by. Let's see what the gap is now. It's not 1.5 seconds. No, it's not 1.5 <laughs> seconds. I'm just looking at the window. It's not 1.5 seconds. Howard's put, putting his head down and stretching his legs. Got four tenths on him last time round. That uh, included a... No, he'd done the overtake then. 
Still yeah. plenty of time. Just over halfway. Just literally two, two more laps before he can challenge. A few seconds ago, he'll comfy left behind. First driver into the 34s. 34.828 for Jensen Watts. Extends the lead to 2.1, and he's on course to take what what rounds he has been and competed at. He is maximised and will keep a 100% record if he can hang on to this lead. So how is all this affecting the overall championship, though? Uh, I, I can't work that out because Kyle Dunford and Ollie Varney. So where's Kyle Dunford? Kyle Dunford is 17th. Ollie Varney is in 9th. So I need Gazbury to, uh, to get his abacus out and uh, his slide rule and be working out who is where because there is only seven points in this. So I want to know the difference between, well, Olivani, as Olivani, is Olivani scoring more than seven points on Kyle Dunford in 17th? Uh, where's Olivani? 9th and 17th? 11th yeah. and 17th. No, 9th and 17th. Oh, he's up to 9th now, yeah, is he? Yeah, 9th and yeah. 17th is 8th. <laughs> right, so now it's a real battle now. Howarth has already got past Rose yet. Went up the inside of him going into the hairpin. Now into a bit of a gap, and there's, there's some gapage going on. Still four and a half minutes or so to go. Across the line goes Jensen Watts. That time was a 34.964, second fastest lap of anybody. And there uh, goes Howarth with a 35.4 because he had to go past someone. Bobby Rosier. I mean, the progress that Howarth is making with time ticking perhaps by he, perhaps he broken down once it'd be fine wouldn't it but broken down twice that was it yeah final third of the lap now so, sorry final third of the race I should say here he comes so I'm not sure he's going to gain this time on third place man Matthew Lambert Lambert's and across the line in a second Lambert's a 35-2 how the 35 flat 35 flat also the gift but 34-8 Again for Watts. Watts, despite this, these heroics by Howarth, on pure pace terms, even if he started second, he hasn't got the pace of Watts. Right, yeah. I'm not sure anybody has. No, um, I think that's it. No, no. I mean, Watts has dominated the actually not yet officially I, happening Southern Championship. I tell you what, though, with uh, just coming up to three minutes remaining for Philip Howarth to get ahead, he's got two seconds almost to make up to Matthew Lambert, but for, for him to get a podium, mm -hmm. that's phenomenal. You and Gaz having an ongoing conversation about who's actually winning. Yes, yeah, we're trying to work it out. <coughs> you're, what you're hearing is, is, is people doing maths live on the, uh, on, the, on the YouTube. But Howarth... That time previously he gained uh, three tenths again. It's, not, it's, it's a slow progress. Luckily he got 12 minutes. And that progress may continue. Down to two and a half minutes. Can Howarth get that third place? You can see him. You can smell him, probably. That time around, Lambert 35-4, 34-9. Third first time in the 34s for Howarth, just so you know. 34-9 for Watts, still leading. 35 flat for Gifford. So he's, he's not going to get Gifford. So the best he can do is get into third. And that's what, 20 seconds he started? Philip Howarth started 26. 26. So this is a phenomenal comeback. So we, we, we are trying to work out Oli Varney, who is in 10th, and Carl Dunford, who is in 17th. What's the difference seven in points. points? That's seven points. That's seven points. So the gap coming into this one was seven points. But is, it, is either of them going to drop this one? I don't know. <laughs> and that's the difficulty of working out scores on that's the fly already, with drop that, scores. Well, that's all ready to count. So right. if they count this one on right. top of those to count. Okay. That's what we're trying to fathom, yeah. And uh, whilst we're fathoming that on the track, that's Matthew Lambert's about to get a very unwelcome visitor, which is Phil Howarth. So that's basically going to equalise them on the same points as far as our simple head mathematics. Simple could. arithmetic, yeah. yes. And we are simple when it comes yes, to arithmetic. We um, we're just outside of the final minute here, and this is the third place podium position that's come down to the final few minutes of the season. And Philip Howarth, who's had a stinker of a day by his, st his standards, here in uh, his home oh, track. Oh, everyone's sideways. Around the outside of the Han hairpin. And now, is he going to go? No, he doesn't. He sits on the rear bumper of Matthew, of, uh, Lambert. Math Matthew Lambert. He's yeah, through buttons. 
into the final turn. He stays on the rear pump. Oh no, he doesn't. No, he just edged oh, him out. I'm not. I'm not sure whether. I'm not there sure was. Lambert's yeah. chuffed about that one. But I'm he not kind sure of what happened there. That was um, experience. Yes. Let's go. Oh, there. oh no, Lambert's like, no, him. thank you. Not having that. Oh, but sliding wide there, carrying too much speed, trying to gather it up. Yeah. And he came see him through this round. Yeah, there we go. Came back at Howarth. There we go down the inside. Last of the late breakers, but just too much <laughs> momentum to stifle to get it turned into the corner. And Howarth just let him by, and then. Went up the inside into the S's. So 20 seconds to go. And I think Jensen... Yep, we've got two more. Jensen's got over the line. So two more to go. Howarth now... So, so, so who is the champ? So our championship is either Olivani Or Kyle Dunford. Or Kyle Dunford. And if they stay at 10... And Olivani in 10th and Kyle Dunford in 17th... What, what makes you think it's seven points? Because there's 10 points between 7 and 10. No, not in the final. Oh, is it two? Is it 14 points? I think so. Ah, there we are. That's your answer then. 14 points what's point? the difference point score between 10th and 17th is basically it's two points the, to go you're right what, what I'm asking um, mm. Gasbury yeah, it's two points to go isn't it who's having a go at working it out there so we, we go we, so we it, now think it's like, it, we well, now it think Varney's got it yeah Oli uh, is car number 30 let's see if we can find 30 then let's see if we can take him uh, well we're not we're not well let's give let's it a go Jensen Watts nah is let's give it Watts is just, he, 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 he hasn't turned up for the events there we are. So it's the cart coming now. It's the yellow and blue. And the, the overalls are green hat. Uh, back of the behind the white cart number seventy four. It's the thirty cart. He's got a green and blue helmet. He's got some blue overalls on. And that we think is the thirty. Right, ten. So it's of points, this right. list, yeah, can yep. you pick, pick these ones up, Ash. It's the fourth cart there. It's the back cart there. That's the man we think is going to be the champion, Olivani in the thirty cart. He very much is. He's scoring 80 points in comparison to 66 points. It's so only a seven-point difference. There we go. So, race comes to an end with the chequered flag. Jensen Watts takes his third heat win. Th sorry, third final win of the season. Kieran Gifford second. Philip Howarth, incredible drive from 26 to the third and final podium step here at Clear Pigeon. Matthew Lambert was fourth, Bobby Rosier fifth, Samuel Wyatt was sixth, seventh was Braden Hill, Finley Watson eighth, ninth is Jake Davies, and there he is, finishing in tenth by our estimation and our calculations. We believe that Ollie Varney has just clinched the 2023 Junction 6 NKC Senior Road Tax Championship. It all has to be confirmed, of yeah. course, because we all have to go through not just tech, and stewards inquiries and all of that so we think we will say it now that we th believe olivani is the champion we think <laughs> we think right quickly moving on because we are quickly moving on as the final race of the 2023 season is about to take place i um, don't want to throw water on this all right, I knew you would. Last year we, we tried I to work it out. It was Simon. Dunford, I think Dunford's going to drop this round. Do you? Yeah. He's got a 35, a 47, and a 33. And in the previous round, he's had better from that. So I'm trying to find his worst round. Remember last year when we oh, were I doing this? I think Ollie Vine's a champion. Last year when we <laughs> did this, we were, talking, we were talking about three drivers potentially winning it. Yeah. And then when it was announced who the actual winner Someone was, was Simon entire. Cable. Yeah, without actual live kind of scripting, it's impossible to tell. Yeah, because it's the, it's the drop round thing that confuses us. We've However, only got the information The good in front news is we have Gasbury. If you go the, to the uh, NKC uh, Facebook page, um, very soon the answers will be there. And we'll post the pictures as well, won't we, the people who won. Yeah. Rosax, right, right. 177. No, it's right. not. Is it the yes, it is. Hey, oh, it's yes, it is. Harrison Crook is on the pole position. Ryan Taylor Truman. We've got a different championship <laughs> to work out. Completely different championship. Um, we've got Harry Wainwright, who came into this uh, this round leading. He's not leading now. The championship championship's been led by Scott Smith, who's on 1,076. Scott Clee is on 1,052. Uh, Ryan Taylor Truman's on 1,028. And Harry Wainwright is on 1,012. Harrison Crook's in sixth on 957. So it's Harrison Crook, who's in with a mathematical chance, but it all depends on how the other drivers finish. Now why is part six not moving? Scott Clee starts on ninth. Charlie Jow was tenth. Uh, Scott Smith 
starts on on 11th. There we go. So we is are. Is that a go, is it? No, I think no. we're sending them around again. Are they? So Scott Smith, Championship leader, starting 11th. Uh, alongside him is Dan Milner. Then we've Wave got Ben round. Johnson, Tim Darlow, Joshua Pickford, Lawrence Hilton, Carl Bryant, Alex Jones, Richard Evans and Steve Gilly, Cole Edwards and Jason Bear, Reese Lowell and Neil Hemming, Keith Mason, Alex Thomas, Tyler Kelsey, Steve Stewart, Ben Hitch and Mike Edwards and the four qualifiers from the B final. So... So, championship protagonist Scott Smith starting 11th, Scott Clee starting 9th, Ryan Taylor Truman starting in, where is he? Starting 2nd, mm-hmm. Harry Wayne Wainwright right. starting 5th, mm-hmm. Cole Edwards, who's 5th in the championship, Cole Edwards is starting, can't find him now, where's he gone? I don't know. Oh, there he is, 21st. So, still all to play for, and a championship that's going to sort of dissolve our brains, trying to work out. <laughs> Let's just race, shall we? Oh, Here we go. Uh, that that's can't a, be a that, start. That can't be a start, can it? They let that one go. Okay, we're off. And immediately into the... No, there's no, there's no full start flag, so into no, the no, lead no. has gone we're, the 72 no, from the 277. Yeah. So, one and two, Harrison Cook from, from Matt. Any further down, I'm sure some people have lost some, a number of places. Yeah, that was, I think, a start. A cart bogged down right there in the, oh, in the right, first couple of rows. And, go. and yeah, as we went go, it didn't pick up, and he was basically just mauled by everyone else. Yeah, this, uh, they come across the line. You'll be able to see the uh, names shuffle themselves around. Let's see where they are. Here they come. Then Harrison Crook, our pole man, starts. Taylor Truman leads across the line. Mazzanetti, right? Taylor Truman is in third. Stuart Baker, Harry Wainwright, Ian Branfield, Oliver Smith. Scott Clee, James Frost, Charlie Yao is rounding off the top ten. So Clee's now in eighth, Smith is in twelfth, Harry Rainwright remains in fifth. That's our one, two, three, isn't it? Well, Brian Taylor Trim, he's in third. So that's our championship protagonists. First and second, though, having a bit of a battle. Now they've settled down that first lap and that poor start in this glorious October autumn sunshine. And what a way to finish the season. Last race of the 2023 NKC, bathed in sunshine. A season that's often been... Um, what can only be said variable in the weather let's be honest but now we're going to finish on a high in so many ways as Harrison Cook leads Matt Zanetti round the hands hairpin for the third time looks like uh, Matt Zanetti's feeling very racy looking down the inside there not quite having enough to get him alongside though Harrison Cook being very cool and calm not really succumbing to any pressure he knows Zanetti's there here they come then It'll be three laps completed. Stuart Baker, fastest man on the track, previous lap there. But these two at the front, they promise, they're promising so much here. They're mm. promising us a bit of a battle for the lead as the rest of the field come through. That's a battle for third and fourth as well. Ryan Taylor Truman, Lee a third. Stuart Baker, fourth. And another fastest lap of the race from Stuart Baker. As a move down the inside, and oh my goodness, he had to really make it happened there but coming back around the outside is Harrison Crook yeah that was Matt Zanetti who squeezed on the inside of the horseshoe but that's a very fast left-hander and you can keep the speed up can't you yeah and it's also the main effect of that is to bring third and four Taylor Truman and Stuart yeah. Baker and Baker got the inside of Taylor Truman so we're not, we're, we're Baker's been hiding this speed all day but then we look oh there's another over and under there as uh, they're not taking the Sonny Morgan line over that that corner which <laughs> of course is just not the track and well, there's that, a change the lead again the Moves the lead into the hand hairpin. Zanetti, this time he makes it happen. And hangs onto it by the time they get to the horseshoe. Harrison Crook has to settle for second. But behind Harrison Crook, Ryan Taylor Truman and Stuart Baker are coming. These coming two fast. Are, yeah, they are. It's almost going to be a four-card battle for the lead. Certainly second, third well, nail together now. Uh, I think second, third might even change going into the corner. Yep. Good move. Good move. Is he going to overshoot it? He did slightly. So Stuart Baker went in a little bit hot and got over and under by Harrison Cook. Uh, Crook, sorry, great move for Matt Zanetti. He's managed to break away. Fourth place, the 65 of Ryan Taylor Truman, who is, of course, one of our championship contenders. Stuart Baker coming down the inside of Harrison Crook again at the hand hairpin. And he makes it happen again and then this time stays in second place. Harrison Crook now under pressure from Ryan Taylor Truman. He's uh, just ticking off the list, isn't he, from being pressured by Zanetti, who now leads, pressured by... Baker, who's now second, and now he's got Ryan Taylor Truman to contend with. Truman looks to hop out through the bottom bend, doesn't do it. Good line there by Harrison Crook. So at the moment, of our uh, championship contenders, Ryan Taylor Thompson, he's in fourth. 
Uh, Scott Clee in seventh. Wainwright's gone down to 11th. So that's not a great run for Harry. He's not been a good, a good meeting. So we'll probably drop score and up the inside looking for an over and under switch back. No, nope, wasn't quite there for the 65 of Ryan Ter Thompson with a yellow and white smiley nose. Mustachio. Truman. Truman. Ter Thompson, is he then? <laughs> don't know. Probably a Liverpool footballer. Who knows? I don't believe in hyphenated names anyway. It's very irritating. So first and second nailed together and third and fourth as well. So you've got two pairs and a little bit of a gap now after that action with Taylor Truman trying to get through. Oh, and it's back battling oh, at the there's front. There's the lead. Mizanetti overtaken again. The front Baker. two are right back at it. Baker, as you say, back in the lead as they go round buttons and the top end. Baker, fastest master as well. He's uh, leading the masters, but he's leading the race overall. So the old boy, I say old boy, you've got to be 35 to be qualify master, for a yeah. master. I so mean, that's you'd have been a master for 26 I'd be, years. I've been a double master. <laughs> Almost, yeah. Almost a double master. But he's leading, Stuart Baker it is, on the Cosmic, leading this race and pulling away slightly from Matt Zanetti. And we're getting, we're about 50 seconds away from half distance, so still plenty of time. Plenty of time. And it looks to me though, Nick, that Baker is sort of checking out. Yeah, I mean, and suddenly there's a chance to find a bit of a gap. Baker's obviously sat behind me. We've talked, of course, about pressures and tyres coming in. And Baker has a small gap on Zanetti. Both of them have managed to get Crook and uh, Taylor Truman away, that, who are very close together, two tenths of a second between third and fourth. But drop back to third and fourth, um, because that's a little bit closer. Yeah, that, that battle for the lead is kind of uh, sort of looking like it's the uh, domain of of Baker this is where the battle's at though this is Harrison Crook who started on the pole Ryan Taylor Truman is currently third in the championship and highest championship contender at the moment yeah, Scott Cleans in seventh Harry Wainwright in 13th who else is in it Scott Smith Scott came Smith in Smith yep he's in 12th 12th yeah so it's a bit of a nice pet points gain if uh, Taylor Truman can get third will there be enough to take him for the win who knows? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not. Gus Burry's working yeah. away behind us. I think feverishly. you're going to have to check the uh, NKC Facebook for yeah, who's won some of these yeah. because it's not just the most points. It's then they've got to drop around, and, and if they drop around, yeah. You know, anyway. Yes, and we've got to get through tech. Yeah, and we are just now coming up to halfway in the final final of the 2023 NKC here from Clay Pigeon. We're casting live TV on the backup timing system. My name is Dick Damon. Next to me is Joe Bradley. To my left has been Paul Bateman. We've been here every single round. Apart from Paul, who left us for, uh, for Mansa Race. We're on the cameras. It's Frank. It's Ash. And, of course, we've also had Scott, Harry, and Matt's son, whose name's escaping me. <laughs> All right. And you've also forgot one of the biggest uh, members I of I was staff. coming back to that. Okay. Um, what's Matt's son's name again? What's Matt's son's name? Jude. It was Jude on the cameras. Uh, and, of course, Johnny Palmer. Oh, that, that was it? Yeah. No, no, no bigging him up. <laughs> well, he is big. He's our, our, our ace in the hole as far as commentary is concerned. Anyway, thank you anyway. That all went horribly wrong because I forgot Jude's name. But uh, it's one of those days, really, isn't <laughs> yeah, it? You, you didn't practice that you at all, nine, did you? you? get 90% through and the last 10% fails miserably. But there we are. What can you do? No change in your running order at the front. But we're looking at the run. For, so what we are looking at, actually, is the uh, three, four, five, six battle. Crook, Taylor Truman. Now they've been joined by... Um, Ian Bramford and Oliver Smith in the 148 and the 9. 146 are in the 9. Yeah, this is great stuff because this uh, two card battle for third and fourth is now a four card battle. Third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Ian Bramfield and Oliver Smith, of course, coming into the four. And there's a move. That's yeah. Ryan Taylor Truman into third place. Final step of the podium this afternoon. Inside of four minutes. Final third of this final for the Rotax 177 class and movers and shakers behind as well as Ian Branfield is overtaken by Oliver Smith it's now Oliver Smith's turn to see if he can get past Harrison Crook down across the line Stuart Baker has pulled out half a second now on Matt Zanetti just ahead of these four just going off through the S's and towards the hand hairpin just ahead of them. Ryan Taylor Truman it is in third place now in that orange and black Zenon chassis. I think that's a Zenon. I might be wrong. I'm not going to argue with you. No. 
and he's pulling away he's pulling away Harrison Crook is being left to deal with Oliver Smith and Ian Branfield and Ryan Taylor Truman currently third in the championship thank you for two points for third place from yeah. fourth he's not going to get up to, I don't think he's anywhere near no, Zanetti he's got, or, he's um, got three, no, almost four Baker. seconds to make up to Zanetti and he's only got uh, coming up to two and a half minutes well, Baker and Zanetti that. are now getting a little bit closer. Let's go back to our lead or move forward to our leaders. That's possible, Ash. You're just going around the, the exit of the horseshoe. Do one of your marvellous swooper crosses. Oh, no, there's a movement there. Good to not to do that. Oh, very edged out the 72 there. They completely push Ash and Crook out. He's gone back two places there. Very much bullied. <laughs> yeah, he was ganged up on there, wasn't he? Ryan Taylor Truman said, thanks very much, lads. We'll have more of that as Ian Bradfield and Oliver Smith moves up to 4th and 5th ahead of Harrison Crook in 6th Scott Clay still 7th Dan Milner 8th ninth is James Frost and it's Josh Pickford who rounds off the top 10 Scott Smith Ten. who came into the final leading the championship I'm not sure where the championship is no. at the moment there's too many dropped rounds and anomalies and variables yeah. Yeah. too many variables to work it out with our small brains let's see if we can pick up our leaders perhaps when we go to Frank's camera they're coming through start finish now and so we, we, you, you think Zanetti has a chance then, do you? With he's right behind him at this point. Yeah. He's, he, the gap which was a bit uh, three or four tenths. I'm not sure if Zanetti's fast in the right parts of the track. That's the only point about well, this. Well, he's coming back at him, didn't he? Because yeah. Baker, Stuart Baker, was pulling away on the Cosmic. Mm. And now we've got Zanetti who's coming right back at him. And with clock ticking, we're inside the final 90 seconds of the season here. And Zanetti was coming back towards Stuart Baker but Stuart Baker's got a bit of a cushion now that was the sounds of Paul our producer dying, dying. in the corner yeah, we, yeah. we, have a, we have a large amount of, uh, of potential unwellness in this area lucky not, lucky not working next weekend because everyone's going to be down with the lurgy but the road tax A far now enters its last minute so we might might manage to keep producer Paul with us for that entire minute <laughs> hopefully uh, he's in his own car so that's fine <laughs> Yeah, if we go quiet, we're doing CPR on him. <laughs> <laughs> so, Baker, great performance by, by Stuart Baker. He's yeah, this brilliant. one and two more, I think. They're going across the line now um, with 41 oh, seconds yeah, to go. Oh, yeah, two more. So, Absolutely. two more. Yes. He seems to be pacing Zanetti. Zanetti's allowed to get quite close, but hasn't at any point in the last, what, four or five minutes got close enough to really make a go for it? I, I know, I know, and that's what I thought. He, he, he kind of paced himself, and Zanetti came back at him. And I wasn't sure whether that was because, the net, you know, maybe Zanetti has found, you know, the pace has increased and Baker's pace. Having had Zanetti reappear mm. on it over his shoulder, he's kind of pulled it back out. And now he's back to the gap that it was well, when look, he was, we were considering how comfortable he was. Last time around, it was a hundredth of a second between the two of them. Right, here we go. Time. Penultimate lap, because there's about five seconds on the clock there. Yeah. So, last two laps of the season coming up, everybody. And this is Stuart Baker in the lead of the Rotax 177 class for the final time in 2023 and the lucky thing for them is the rest of the field is fast enough not to be lapped yes yeah Which yeah we didn't see a couple of times already today but they are going to stay away from the they've got they've, they're, they're, they're about five or six seconds behind the back of the field they're not going to make that in two laps they're not going to get involved thankfully gets a bit messy doesn't it on these shorter tracks yeah getting involved in back markers um, so here we go it's the one lap to go board for Stuart baker and he's he has up the pace as he Heads towards the chequered flag, the final chequered flag of the 2023 season. Less than a lap to go for the NKC 2023 Championship. And now they come into the last time round hands here. But don't forget that the 2024 season starts here in about six months' time. April, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Long time to wait. We'll talk about that after we've uh, had our final chequered flag. Here comes Stuart Baker then out of top end for the final time to take the chequered flag and a very fine win here at Clear Pigeon round 6 of the Junction 6 NKC and it's Stuart Baker from Max Zanetti gap of the line was half a second Ryan Taylor Truman will take the final step of the podium Ian Branfield 4th Oliver Smith 5th Harrison Crook 6th 7th is Dan Milner then we've got Scott Clay Joshua Pickford championship leader going into the final with Scott Smith let's see how that pans out as the rest of the field come through We've just got enough time to maybe just thank everybody, yep. everybody in the NKC. Thank you to Ollie Nick Smith. Uh, Ollie Nick Smith, Chris Cox, Gaz Bury, uh, Gaz Bury, <laughs> uh, Gezo and Matt Hildred, 
Um, those are the lads who take the, uh, the, the take it on the chin, really, and have to make these oh, horrible yeah. decisions yeah. with regards to how to run these races. I know they get a lot of flack, but you know what? Uh, just try spending a few hours in their shoes at some of these race meetings. It gets very intense. And you know what? The reason for that is because the NKC is very much worth winning. It's a championship that has certainly emerged on the national karting scene. It's a one that pretty much everybody has got their eyes on. And I think, when I say everybody, I mean all the big lads. They're looking at the NKC. They've all got customers asking, can we race in the NKC? Yes. Well, you know what? <laughs> the answer is going to be yes. It's a fantastic championship. It goes to all the top uh, championship circuits. We've got a calendar that's going to be absolutely fantastic. A little bit of a variation on a the theme. Going into 2024, we've got a different tyre regulation. We've got a Southern Championship for the first three rounds. We then have a little bit of a break with an all-plate meeting at Rowra in July. And then we've got the final three rounds uh, forming our Northern Series, which is off the top of my head, Wilton Mill, Three Sisters, and my, uh, my own track, track uh, Warden Law, Law uh, that's to round the off the season. Circuit, which is Clay Pigeon, Forest, Forest Edge, Edge, and Mansell Raceway. And Mansell Raceway, yeah, very much in the south. Uh, very, very much in the south. Uh, we look forward to 2024, Nick. You're going to be at my house the whole time, aren't you? I'm pretty much <laughs> going to have to live there, yes. Um, um, perhaps, um, I don't know how you want to round this season off, Nick, but um, certainly a reflection back. I mean, we've had talk about a drama and intensity, and that's what I was going to say. Once something becomes worth winning, it's not. it ceases to be a, just a bit of fun. Yes, we can talk about it, and, and you know, but that paddock has, in, has, it, has had intensity and drama all season long. And fibbing. Well, there's a bit of fibbing <laughs> going on. It's just that's, you know, the, the soap all opera. All of human nature was there. There's, there's a soap opera behind every garage door. There's a soap opera behind every, every awning zip. Every awning zip, yeah. In karting. Um, no, yes. I think it's been a, a great season. It's been, uh, you know, a, a, in, I think it's been a step up from last year comp- competition-wise. Mm. I think we've had some some fantastic racing. I think um, you know the track. Everyone's really got used to how the system runs and walks. And overall, um, it's great to have you all with us over the course of the year. Gasburi's turned up and like, almost like has something to say, like a championship winner or something. Have you any idea? No, he's no idea. Seven, seven, no, he's turned up. We've looked at maps and we think it's gone to Scott Smith. Scott Smith is possibly. We think. I possibly. Say we, say we, possibly. Say we, say uh, the Red Run Seven Seven champion. Um, Pretty confident, right? Yeah. I think it only remains time for us to say uh, thank I, I tried to, I, I wrongly said thank you to everybody before. And it was a complete disaster. But I'm actually going to say thank you to Joe, because Joe's been the absolute rock on this. He said, it, 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 you, you, there's been a real swan act sometimes. Oh, I'm going to cry. There's I? been a real swan act sometimes where um, all sorts of hell was breaking loose. And Joe was going, and now in the lead, it's number 17. And there's all sorts of things going on. Today Nor- was quite challenging. Sometimes I didn't have any time on screens. Other times I didn't have any time on screens or pictures. <laughs> You know, I'd you know actually what look say? out the window. That's the point. At the end of the day, you can always look out the window. <laughs> Not at every track, but at this track you can. Um, thanks to everyone who's worked for the team. Thank you very much to the guys behind the NKC. We will be back with you in a couple of weeks' time. Carter Live TV will be back with you a couple of weeks' time at the Autumn Cup from Warden Law. Well, Get your entry 11th in. 11th and 12th of November. That's three weeks, is it? And everybody's welcome from the NKC, especially yeah. the 177s, because we're running on the Maxis tyre, same tyre as you run on in this series. But everybody else is welcome to uh, come along yep. and enjoy and, and get some get some preparation in and have a look at Warden Law before we come here to race proper next year absolutely. in the series. So we're looking forward to that on Karting Live TV. Um, Joe and I may do some, some full scale, some real size stuff since then. Who knows? I can't believe you're fans of Joe and I. You're just fans of good racing. Um, that's all for us from Karting Live TV. This uh, season for the NKC, other bits and bobs will be available, other bits will happen, but more importantly, hopefully you will have a fantastic off-season and you rejoin us next year in whatever class you decide to be for the 2024 NKC. See you in six months right here. Clay Pigeon.